Block 2 With a quiet voice as I remember something I say, I think it's the skills I got from my class. Skills? Class skills? What's wrong with that? When I appraised them they said it may change your effect personality in some way unknown to me. Yet you got them? She shouted at me worriedly and in a slight panic while also staring seriously at me. Yes, they looked the best of the class. I reply innocently as I didn't expect something like this to happen to make Aurora's expression relax slightly. Well, I'd probably have gotten them as well if they were the best. Good things always come with risks. After all, sometimes even high prices like. After waiting a bit for her to finish her words I question. What do I do now about this brainwashing thing? I tilt my head hoping that my sister has a solution. Well if you got a resistance to it, it'll be a matter of time till you can control yourself fully again. At some point you'll probably assimilate with the changes so just be yourself. What if I change into someone I don't wanna be? I ask worriedly making Aurora smile gently. She pokes my forehead. Don't worry I'll always be there to look after you. I'm the older sister after all. I smile and then I hug her. Thank you Aurora. You're the best. She hugs me back with an evil expression unnoticed by me. With this killing monsters, beasts, and even humans will slowly become easier for Iris. Truly a great class she picked. I collect the soul stones from the corpses while Aurora collects the weapons then I rest close to a tree. Two hours pass and then I drink some water and eat some bread, recovering some of the fatigue. How are you feeling Iris? Do you want to continue or head home? I'm alright just need to recover more of my mana how about you? The slimes did most of the work so I still have enough plus I recovered an extra bit meanwhile, with a low tone noticing a noise I speak. What's that noise? It kind of sounds like bangs on the ground? Loud steps perhaps? more of those fat talks perhaps. I gulp down the rest of the bread and push it down with water. Then I get up and hide behind a tree together surrounded by some bushes, and then Aurora transforms into Grimo Eye form going into my arms. After a few minutes, the steps get closer slowly and I start hearing different voices. What happened to these guys? Goblin warrior there are more corpses up here along with an orc. I'm more worried about these three orcs it looks like they were pierced by something dying at the same time, not even I can slice through three of them with my axe and I'm a level 20 class warrior, he shouted proudly with a slightly anxious tone. I don't know leader, but whatever it was must be around here still, so maybe we should camp elsewhere, the goblin in rage shouts, are you saying we should flee from whoever did that? What do you think our king would do to your body if he heard you spouting such nonsense? You ten look around see if you find any clues, I'll go up there check the rest of the corpses. Aurora transforms back into human form and whispers to me, a level 20 beast must be extremely powerful I believe the things we fought so far were at most level 3. I whisper back to her, the orc I saw was level 5, I checked with an appraisal and he already packed quite the strength. Even then it took everything we had to defeat them, and they were injured from fighting each other. What do you suggest then? I know you're a battle maniac but, I believe we should retreat here. Let's try something first before, go back into book form and climb the tree, and then transform back and warn me when a goblin is close to us, by waving your arm. All right. If it goes wrong you'll go back home. You run without looking back. I will, I promise, I say while looking seriously making her feel somewhat assured. After a moment she signals as a goblin scout is coming closer. I hear his steps very close and the moment I see it, I ice coat my hand and place it on his mouth freezing his face pulling him to me. Then I knee his stomach making him feel enough pain and the need to breathe and hold him long enough so that his air runs out while he does the best he can to struggle to no avail dying. System. The title assassination has been received, notice, 50 mana has been deducted, notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a goblin, getting the idea she transforms into a book and floats without hitting any branches or leaves onto the next tree, she transforms into a human and falls behind a goblin covering his mouth and neck with darkness, if somehow voice would come out it would be sucked into the nothingness that is her element thus dying shortly after out of breath. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Another goblin approaches my position, 
possibly to see where his friend went and I repeated the procedure making him feel surprised and then suffocating to death. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted, notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin, I lose sight of Aurora and I peek carefully towards the rest of the goblins while holding my hair. I see four other goblins. I guess the rest is up there with the big one. I create an icicle above one of the goblins without any of them noticing and imagine it piercing the head. As it does it enters through the nape then piercing his brain coming out of his mouth. As it attempted to scream but it froze, making it look like he was about to like ice. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, the class skill magic control has been acquired. I can get skills from class without using points. Seeing as I got some from the normal trees. Perhaps it makes sense, though it is fantastic. And perhaps I'm able to learn more things that way while saving points for things I truly want or need. I imagine two icicles in different spots piercing the goblins, and then the first goblin falls on the floor flatly, followed shortly by the other two who get murdered by the skill. Notice, 40 mana and 160 health have been deducted. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Notice, 30 experience has been rewarded from a goblin. Seems like Aurora got the last one. I see her collecting the soul stones as fast as she can. Two minutes later she runs at me, and we run out of the forest. As we leave the forest I tell her, it seems we can learn skills from class without spending points, we just need to do something that's worth the skill I guess. That's really good to know. I'll save my skill points from here on. Also really good job on those icicles, hadn't seen you using those before. Thank you. I'm slowly being able to find new ways of creating offensive ice skills and using them effectively. Ice magic is all about creativity. One day you might even invoke 100 of those icicles into 100 different enemies. You truly do have gigantic expectations from me don't you sister? Imagine the amount of wisdom I would need as well as the magic control to pull that stunt off. Maybe. She smiles kindly at me as we keep moving as fast as we can while laughing at each other. I wonder how much experience would we have gotten if we could defeat that big goblin. He looked like he'd kill either of us with one punch, not to refer the big axe. Her words make me gulp down going into silence afterward as the reality kills my excitement. After I get home I wash my clothes that smell of sweat, blood, and goblin odor. Then I prepare a relaxing bath and hop inside the warm water. Ah. I. Let out a satisfied moan filled with pleasure from the relaxing mood it brings me. That sure was an interesting adventure. If I had the whole mana I would have wanted to try fighting that level 20, goblin warrior. I guess I really am becoming a battle maniac, I laugh while taking the feet out and in at the bathtub playfully. I asked Aurora to take the soul stones and our cards to the guild, I'd love to see Leonore's expression when she gets the 35 of them. The good thing about being a Grimo Iyer is that she is infinite energy and never gets tired allowing her to walk endlessly if she wishes to do so. Meanwhile, I overexert myself often to collect all the titles I can. In the end, the more I get the stronger I get like my sister said, good things come with a cost, and for me, that is energy and time. I finish the bath after a while and head to the bed of my room to get some rest as my muscles are sore and currently a bit relaxed. Goblin warrior perspective minutes after the girls left the forest after assassinating the goblins. Filled with sadness, my son. My son is dead, the warrior shouted while lamenting and crying as the rest of the goblins that were with him lowered their heads in respect. I spent a long time training you to become stronger than me to lead your own group in the king's army. All for naught, all because you were killed mercilessly for no reason. Filled with rage, I don't know who did this but I'll find them. I'll catch them. I'll torture them. I'll kill them. The nearby goblin patted the big warrior's shoulder sympathizing with him as his brother too was killed. Ah, he pushed the goblin away with a backhand on an arm swing making him fly ten meters backward. I cannot control this rage. I must exact revenge otherwise I'll fall apart. I'll go mad, he shouted fiercely as he gripped his hands tightly while his body shook. 
and the veins slightly popped out from the fast circulation of the blood caused by his emotions that sped the heart rate up. Filled with despair, this bottomless emptiness must be filled with the blood of the one who murdered my son. May fate allow us to cross paths, may the God of chaos hear my one and only prayers. May the Almighty God bless me or curse me with his gift as he did to our ancestors in times of war. May he take my soul but in exchange allow me to exact my revenge, on the one who killed my son please I beg you O Lord, despair, rage, sadness, chaos, in his mind, a message resounded, system, the god of chaos has taken notice of your pleas goblin warrior, and feeling amused the class berserk has been unlocked for you, he wiped his tears off and changed classes, then he knelt further while raising his son in the air. I'll forever be in your debt O oh great god of chaos for allowing me to become a goblin berserker, the ones round could feel the pressure he emanated from changing classes. He stood up and picked the goblin he pushed out of anger, carrying him unconsciously back to the goblin kingdom while being followed by the rest who remained quiet. For a moment he looks back and memorizes the rest of the icicles laying on the floor melting slowly, then he leaves knowing that his lifelong enemy will possess such an element. Day 26th of the sun season. After the usual morning routine, I wake up Aurora whom I didn't get the chance to talk with as I fell asleep on the bed after the shower. The three kids running laps around the house today Joan, Miles, and Elise, apparently their friends for a while now, and were interested in learning swordsmanship. They're going to suffer what I did since they're a bit older than me, even more, pain awaits them surely. The boys kept looking at me when I was outside as they ran laps, I guess it must be the blonde hair, kids are always surprised seeing it. Maybe the eyes? They're supposed to be rare too. I wonder if it is to do with my old physic from my past life, even though I didn't have blonde hair, well no matter. I wonder if Elise is enjoying learning swordsmanship since as a healer she'll probably feel the need to be constantly protected. It would be fun to have Alicia around too. I wonder what she's been up to. Probably whatever nobles do I guess. Tea parties maybe? Dancing in ballrooms? I'm sure she's wearing a beautiful and expensive dress. Well, I don't really envy her for that. I've had my share at being a noble though I'd like to see her again. If mother lessons get extra popular I wonder if at some point she won't make a little army. I laugh at my own idiotic thoughts. I stop looking at the window from my room and turn around. She's looking at the mirror for quite some time now ever since I woke her up. I approach her and poke my sister's cheek. Hum? Her cold eyes meet mine's. Don't tell me you're appreciating the mirror. It's not that. My skill leveled up and I don't know why. Which one? I ask curiously despite knowing that it's normal for skills to gradually increase as they are used and abused. The cursed. Mirror. 1. What really? How? I shout loudly out of excitement making my head beat fast for expecting something interesting from it. She looks at me with an upset face. That's what I've been trying to figure out silly Iris. Ah, right. Well I could try to appraise it but since it's a cursed skill I don't know what kind of price it'd be. Or the consequences. It was cursed, after all, so don't attempt it. Let's get stronger first just in case. All right, I'm not in a rush. Speaking on which, how did it go with Leonor what kind of face did she make? She was extremely surprised at the number of soul stones we made, we're currently ranked F with 158 points and 665 copper. We scored a lot of points and it seems like our funds are slightly raising. Did the quest finish? Or what happened? She gave us a new quest, one that you'll enjoy doing on your own I'm sure. She makes a bored expression as she shows it to me by taking a carefully folded paper out of one of her side pockets from a dress on top of the bed. Quest rank, F collect Sefi herbs from the West Forest. You'll be rewarded 5 points and 40 copper per herb. That place. Did you know there are unexplored ruins deep inside of it? Ruins? Her expression changed instantly as she heard me looking excited with a strange glimmer to it. Didn't know she was interested in such things but I could use this information in the future whenever she acts lazy. I smile happily hiding my true intentions from her resuming the conversation right after. Yes, the guards told me about it. It seems like it's very dangerous with powerful enemies, so it hasn't been used by anyone in a long time. 
the adventurers who went in wouldn't come out alive. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go. Aurora quickly ignores the existence of the mirror that had been bothering her the entire morning and ran to the room door opening it and pointing at the exit for me to go through. Sometimes I truly enjoy watching her childish side, even though she barely shows it. Yes, after you. She leaves the door open and proceeds to leave the room and I make her trip on the floor. Ouch, why did you do that? Where do you think you're going with my naked body you fool? I step on her ass with my bare feet which is cold making her bristle. Ah, I may have forgotten with the excitement. We laugh at each other and how dumb and childish we can be. I'll wait for you outside. I grab the pouch I enjoy using to store the herbs on my way out. Once I'm outside I look at the three of them lying down on the grass sweating hard. I approach them and say, seems like you guys received a beating. You should join us. Joan said word by word while breathing hard staring at me with red cheeks. I've been doing this for a year, lately I've been spending a few hours handling that whole farming field by myself while cutting trees and turning them into logs. Then in the afternoon I do quests for the Adventurers Guild. They all look surprised at me. What kind of monster are you? Miles asks surprised without a mean to offend me. You geese should start collecting all types of titles. It'll help to make yourselves stronger. What? They barely give anything though. You need to complete the series which are unlocked once one of the titles is maxed, and then proceed to max every little thing. That's when the fun starts. How do you know when a title is maxed? Joan asked curiously as with his skill he cannot access such information. I have a skill that allows me to see, but I believe the Adventurer Guild has a book that provides such information. Yes it does. You'll be able to check it when you pass the guild exam, mother adds, clarifying it for us. Talking about that, what kind of exam is it? Neither me nor sister or Elise needed to do it. Back in my time, they'd make you fight one of the strongest adventurers. Hum, too bad I didn't get the chance, would have been fun to see the gap. I say smiling excitedly. A familiar voice comes from behind me saying, as battle maniac as ever. She then lets out a sigh. This one is even prettier. Miles thought as he appreciated my sister's face. Aurora's eyes are very clear, but I still prefer the kind eyes of Iris. Joan thought to himself as his father had told him how marrying a girl like Iris would make him happy in the future though he didn't specify the reason why. Here comes the cold lady. Elise thinks and then says, How are you Aurora? Apparently a lot better than you Elias. You look kind of dead, laying down on the filthy grass like you're some insect. Perhaps you'll start crawling like they do and mimicking their sounds as you do. When did these two develop this kind of friendship? I thought confused. Surprised to see someone other than Iris befriending Aurora, Rosalind thought amazed as Elise rose a level on her consideration. How dare you call me that horrible nickname and even go as far as to compare me to an insect. I'd get up and beat you up and make that pretty face of yours hit the ground, as she tries to get up from the ground her body gives up, ah, I'm exhausted, you're lucky today Arara, but next time you'll see, just you wait, pfft, what a weakling, Aurora walks by her while waving her hair with her hand showing her superiority and laughing lightly, we have a quest to do, I'll see you guys later, I give a kiss to mother then leave, see you soon, be careful, Elise said with a big smile while the rest of the body didn't care, take care of each other daughters, we will, we shout in unison as the boys stare at us silently while we go, on our way there I carry Aurora as a book when passing through the south gate, we do this every time to avoid the annoying guard Tyson making questions, then we head to the west gate into the forest, once we get there, I look around and hide behind a tree to make sure no one sees us, you can transform back now, she transforms into a human and says, finally free from the shackles of the system, do you dislike being in a grimoire form, is it that bad, it's actually pretty comfortable but I enjoy walking more, I've been doing it for a while after all, fair enough, this spot here is different from the last time I was here, that way is the direction of the ruins supposedly, I point towards it with my index finger, and if you could clear the monsters around here, it'd be a great help so I can gather herbs in peace for a change. For the greatest twitch anything, 
She smiles coldly while teasing me and I roll my eyes ignoring her comment, and then proceed to gather the herbs. Aurora starts exploring the forest, and after ten minutes she returns, didn't see any particular monster I feel like you were just unlucky the last time. I had ten of those crazy rabbits chasing me. I shouted slightly annoyed cursing my own luck, since now that sister is here none decided to come out. She laughed lightly at it and then spoke, well I'll go explore the ruins now. All right, but be careful apparently many adventurers have died in them, to be fair, barely any comes back alive. If it's that bad then it must have something very good inside. In a system that rewards people depending on its difficulty, it better have a legendary sword that can cut dragons in half sealed in there. Did you make it up or did you read it in one of your books? Just a joke. Understood. She walks away from Iris towards the ruins. After a long walk she finds an entrance with stones round her. It's dark inside. Let me get night vision skill. I might trip as a human with only one meter of range. She transforms into a grimoire and floats. Some stairs down and now a long hall that lasts for ten minutes. It's a good thing the hall is so long it gave me time to level up the skill a bit. Those are skeletons and slimes? I guess they coexist with one another as they don't have meat in them. I float around them. The skeleton noticing me starts chasing me. It'll even go after a little book. She transforms back into a human and coats her hands in darkness blocking the sword attack. Attacks faster than what I can dodge as I have no agility whatsoever, but its strength is lacking, she lets the sword go through making him bend, striking his head with her left hand damaging it. My dark element doesn't seem very effective, I'll mana coat instead and try again, she punches the skull before it has time to fight back crushing it. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Interesting amount of experience, she grabs the sword mana coating it and slicing the two slimes nearby a few times. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, Aurora has leveled up to 6. All points on wisdom. Notice, points successfully spent, status updated. These slimes are a lot more resistant, I thought that all I needed was using my unique dark element, but it seems like I'll have to train my normal mana coating too, but it's tough changing between the dark element to fight one thing then mana coat to fight the other. Now then which way do I go? There are four doors, one per direction including the one I came from. Guess I'll keep going through the middle that way I won't get lost. This hall is also pretty long. This place looks like it was made to tire humans as every hall seems to take at least 10 minutes to cross. More skeletons and another dark large room, two of them might be trickier, I'll dark bind the one at the back and kill them one at a time. She then approaches the one in the front baiting his attack, dodging it slightly as it went through close to her nose. Aurora proceeds to mana coat the sword from the last skeleton using it to cut the enemy wrist making the sword and the hand holding it falls on the stone paved floor and then the neck which ends up on the skull head drop on the ground. That didn't give experience, she looks at the floor and realizes the teeth are still moving, she mana coats her feet and smashes the skull with all her strength causing a bang. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. That's better. She runs at the next one stepping to the side making the skeleton miss his swing, proceeding to pierce the skull with the mana sword destroying it. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Like this is easier, and the experience it gives is really good. Is it because it is a skeleton plus a body of some old adventurer perhaps, or did it kill many things before? She takes the middle path again. Perhaps monsters and beasts roam inside of this place giving these things experience. I have around 800 mana left, trying to make it as clean as possible so I have enough to escape if necessary. This room has light. She looks above finding a crack big enough for a human to pass through except every room is around 10 meters tall so that it'd be impossible to go through. More skeletons? Annoying pests. She runs at the one in the middle binding the other two destroying it. The sword breaks after piercing the skull. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. I'll grab this new sword that looks as old as all the weapons in here, 
lets Mana coat it and deal with the other two, she dodges the right skeleton attack crushing his wrist then head. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. These are things are consuming a lot of my mana, huh? My monster detector is going crazy. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 monsters? What the hell is going on? Monsters started pouring from all the four entries, I see, so that's how the adventurers died. The noise it takes to kill these things attracts even more of them. A skeleton archer shoots an arrow at her, which she manages to block with the sword cracking it. I'll at least take you with me, she charges at him while he slowly prepares another arrow, ramming him against one of the walls and then crushing the head with all her strength. Notice, 150 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, Aurora has leveled up to 7. All points on wisdom first. Notice, points successfully spent. Status updated. I'll be surrounded in no time like this. What do I do? She looks around as she goes closer to the center, which is the safest place to be, since everywhere else is being flooded with enemies. 70 monsters detected and increasing. Now then, I guess this is where I die. Sorry, Iris. It seems I underestimated this world. She opens her arms, dropping the sword, and looks above, being bathed by the light that transpires her, contrasting with the surrounding darkness of the halls as the enemies approach slowly. Having her mind going at the speed of light, thinking on all possibilities, she figures that she could attempt one last thing. Aurora transforms into a grimoire and floats through the crack above from where the light is coming, escaping transforming back into human form as she gets on top of the roof looking at its surroundings. Phew, that was close. If it was a closed room I would have died there or if it had some barrier of sorts blocking it. She looks around doing a full turn of 360 degrees. Just how big is this thing? 10, 20, 30, 40, estimating at least 50 rooms. This is a genuine maze, but seeing from above there's a peculiar tunnel far, far away. I wonder what lays inside at the end of it, it seems to go underneath the ground unlike the rest of the ruins, it could easily go deeper to who knows how many more rooms. She looks down through the hole and makes a surprised expression as she sees something quite unique. They are eating the soul stones from the ones I defeated. Does that make them stronger by any chance? Would that perhaps, as the skeleton eats one of the soul stones, the aura around him gets shinier and more intense. What would happen if I ate a soul stone? Can humans possibly eat them too? She turns back towards the direction of the entrance of the ruins and walks towards it from above. Fifty minutes later, she arrives near Iris. Welcome back Aurora. I don't know what you were doing but I leveled up twice and my class ranked up, along with a title too. Fantastic, to be honest. I almost died. I went three rooms deep inside the ruins, and then I got surrounded by seventy monsters maybe more. How is it possible for a place this close to the village to have so many monsters? More importantly, how did you survive? I shout loudly surprised by the information she gave me feeling uneased as they could pour and destroy the village. I think that place is special so the monsters don't quite leave it otherwise they would already have done so. Special how? My eyes glitter with curiosity relaxing my mind who was chaotic for a moment there. I'm not sure but it feels like it's all surrounded by the same magic, I sensed something, but it's complex and very difficult to explain, I've gathered 40 herbs while you were away, and I've come up with an idea perhaps it'll be easier to get an explanation, huh? What do you mean by that? Aurora sits on the floor against a tree resting, you'll see soon enough, status please, notice, 10 mana has been deducted, status, level, 7. Experience 0 700 fame, 220, disgrace, 5510 class, witch, rank 2, experience 100 4 thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 660 660, mana, 1717 10 status points colon 0 strength, 162, stamina, 66. Agility, 85, Dexterity, 107, Intelligence, 95, Wisdom, 165 plus 6 Attack, 
zero, magic attack colon zero, defense colon zero, magic defense, zero soul, 3690 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom c, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sale e, advanced readers, soul bounds, element f, contracteds, peasant, f, class b, monster slayer e, slime slayer c, skill mastery d, tree chopper c, tree types, tree series d, log maker c, tree planters, book thief d, criminal d, expert read ref, herbs gathered, herbs types is, potion brewer ref, potion type c, status mastery d, beast slayer d, horned rabbit slayer e, potion administer def, goblin slayer e, orc slayer f, assassinations, herbalist series d, skeleton slayer f, completed series, fishings, farmings, skill points, 4 actives, status level 50 d, system library level 50 d, mana coat level 7 f, mana wave level 1 f, ice bind level 5 f, ice sword level 1 f, icicle level 3 f, passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 21 E, Sword Mastery Level 12 F, Mana Control Level 22 E, Ice Control Level 14 F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 6 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 7 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 6 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 6, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 3, Witchcraft Level 3, Curses Mastery Level 1, Rituals Mastery Level 1, Magic Control Level 1, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F, 72 100, well then. I finished the herbs types and herb gathering titles, but seems like I have a long way to complete the herbalist series, meaning I'll have to keep gathering as many herbs as I can in the future. Sister said something about a special magic, and I think I had something related to it that could prove rather promising perhaps. Show me the skill list of my class please, all of them. Notice, loading witchcraft skill tree list. Witchcraft skill tree. Actives. Dark Alchemy, crafting potions with limited effects and that only last for so long, starts at 10%, 0, 5% per level. Mana Shield, 0.25% damage is absorbed to MP instead of HP, 0.25% per level. Drain HP, absorbs 1 horsepower per minute from enemies around healing itself, plus 1 per level. Decay, it'll rot slowly something it touches. 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Magic analysis, can analyze the properties of the magic, of a magic circle, or the area itself, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Curses, it requires casting time, the higher the proficiency the faster it'll be. Frog, may transform the target into a frog for a period of time. 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Delirium, makes the target have a random illusion for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Mute, makes it so that they can't speak for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Blind, makes it so that the vision for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, Half a percent per level. Deafen, makes it so that the hearing for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Taste, makes it so that they lose palate for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Smell, makes it so that they lose the sense of smell for a period of time, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Paralysis, paralyzes a random part of the body. Half a percent chance of success. 
half a percent per level. Fear induces fear towards the target. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Confusion causes confusion towards the target. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Rituals require spending mana to create a magical circle. Needs tremendous amounts of mana can accumulate every day. Memory loss makes targets inside the magical circle lose some memories. 0.25% chance of success. 0.25% per level. X ritual sleep makes targets inside the magical circle fall asleep. 0.25% chance of success. 0.25% per level. Snow falling. Due to ice element snow will fall. Everywhere that snows will be RS mana territory. 0.25% chance of success. 0.25% per level. Cursing objects. A random curse will be applied in an object. 0.25% chance of success. 0.25% per level. Taint. It'll taint users inside the magical circle in some way. 0.25% chance of success. 0.25% per level. Magical barrier. Defends a place inside a magical circle from magic damage. Physical barrier. Defends a place inside a magical circle from physical damage. Detection barrier. Detects anything that enters inside a magical circle. Passives. Witchcraft. Increases the whole skill tree proficiency by 0.1% per level. May affect personality. Curses mastery. Increases curse chance to activate by 0.25% per level. May affect personality. Rituals mastery. Increases ritual chance to activate by 0.25% per level. May affect personality. Dark alchemy mastery. Increases alchemy chance by 0.2% per level. May affect personality. Magic control. Increases specified proficiency by 0.25% per level. Magic attack slight boost. Increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic defense slight boost. Increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic knowledge slight boost. Increases intelligence by 1 per level. Charm. Increases charm by 1. Attracts generally the opposite gender. 1 per level. MP absorption. If damaged by an enemy magical skill heal MP by 0.25% of its total mana cost, 0.25% per level. Fire mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Water mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Earth mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Air mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Nature mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Poison mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Acid mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Ice mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Explosion mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Lightning mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Spirit mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Summoning mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Light mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Dark mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Time mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. Space mastery. Increases specified proficiency by 1% per level. That's the one I want to get magic analysis, magic knowledge so I can contribute more to the analysis. Snow falling because I've been looking to get it, to understand the territory thing better. And ice mastery for sure. Notice, skills have influenced each other, magic knowledge due to appraisal in combination with magic analysis change the way it affects intelligence. Notice, skills successfully learned, status updated. Skills have influenced each other, that's amazing it seems like getting different knowledge skills was the right choice. Alright sister I'm done here, take me to the ruins since you know where they're exactly. Sure, but in a bit, 
let me recover my mana, you can keep gathering herbs. Then let's go to a different place in the forest. I've left the immature herbs to grow and took the good ones only. Let's head closer to the ruins, you can gather near the entrance, but if monsters come out we're running. I'll keep on the lookout, after a while, we arrive near the entrance, by the way Iris after I killed a few monsters I saw one of them, a skeleton eating one of the soul stones, monsters eat soul stones, why would they do that, are they tasty, yes, they ate them, and then it looked like mana started getting stronger around the monster, at least more brilliant, I understand what's going through your mind right now, you want us both to try eating a soul stone don't you? Pretty much, there's bound to be things that other people haven't tried or that they deemed crazy to try. Maybe those who tried died due to it, I reply suspicious of such effects. Without trying we won't know. Personally I don't get titles so as an item I need to find a way to become stronger. I almost died, she punched the ground angry at her powerlessness. I know how you feel, I too felt like an ant when I saw the goblin warrior guy, even if I had full mana the chances that he'd kill us would be certain, even if goblins are smart or not, with enough statuses they can do whatever they want, we have been fighting very low level enemies, so yeah, we're level 7 if there's a max level at some point it'll limit our capability to grow, that's true, though as far as I know, we have something that others don't have. Our contract which isn't far from being complete, just 28 more. Perhaps that will allow us to grow a bit more compared to other races. Yes, but it could give something useless. I'm a fucking rank F Grimmer. Uh, she punches the ground again angrily this time with both hands lifting some dust in the process. An evolutionary type said appraisal, so you're bound to reach a little higher, not sure how high or if you only rank one time. Aurora sighs hearing me as she feels insecure with the low amount of information we possess. Appraise information regarding humans eating soul stones consequences. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Humans are a weak species usually with very low soul power thus they're not able to absorb soul stones thus dying or becoming a different creature like a skeleton or a zombie. Is that so? Then how about me I have a lot of soul power I think? Appraise me eating soul stones consequences, notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Soul stones are a piece of everything the being consisted of, even if absorption goes well you may keep your personality but lose your human race slowly in the process. Aurora, I tried to appraise the information and it seems that I may be able to absorb them since I have a strong soul, however. I could lose my human race. What race would you become then? She asks curiously feeling a faint sense of hope. Appraise the race I could get if I consumed soul stones. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. The race one would transform to would depend on the race type and rank of the soul stones the individual would absorb. Seems like it depends on the race and the rank of the soul stones. Meaning you'd become a skeleton if you ate their soul stones. I guess that's why humans don't do it, they'd be killed by the soldiers and other adventurers. True. I'll refrain from attempting it, it's not a bad deal for me though. After all, I have the unique skill transformation I can keep your appearance. How would it affect Aurora if she ate soul stones? Appraise it please. I look at her blue curious eyes as I wait for the answer. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Aurora's existence is a grimmer, uh, a weapon type. It does not possess a race thus there wouldn't be a race change. With a confused expression I think about the information received. She doesn't have a race? I saw human one as her race on the status. I look seriously at her and make a question. Aurora, appraisal appraised you say you're a weapon thus you do not have a race, making it impossible for you to suffer a race change. So your status is a lie isn't it? Upon hearing my words she smiles. That's right. I copied your skills, your memories, and also your status before I left your body, those were the three times I used transformation skill on you right before completely leaving your body. Why? I tilt my head unknowingly of why'd she go as far as to hide information from me. Well, we never know when we meet someone who can sneak into our status skills. Wouldn't be strange if someone had some unique skill like your appraisal but for these screens instead. That's true. But you didn't need to hide part of that information from me. I pout slightly angry from her action. 
it didn't feel particularly important to tell you about it back then, and I'll shut down for a while to recover faster. Fine, I'll leave it at that. I start gathering herbs feeling more relaxed while we both recover the mana we spent. Two hours later, I wonder if there's a race that would be better than the one I have. If I changed races would I lose my class appraisal? Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Classes are universal between all races. This excludes items, weapons, accessories, and any equipment with a soul in it. Meaning that Aurora class will be something unique to being a Grimoire. I wonder what's the condition for her to get one. Sister, I'm done with this area, I have enough to work with for a while. Her eyes open, I didn't recover the whole mana but it's enough. So what you wanted to do by coming here? Iris's eyes shine while looking at Aurora, that is to test my new skill of course. I place the bag full of herbs next to the tree and walk close to the ruins. Upon arriving at a fitting spot, I extend my hands towards the entrance and say, Magic Analysis. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Right. Forgot my skills a percent chance to activate. My bad. I take out my tongue pointing it at the cave in a silly way. What now? Aurora questions me feeling curious. To her question, I smile. Status. Status. Level. 7. Experience. 0. 700. Fame. 220. Disgrace. 5510. Class. Witch. Rank 2. Experience. 100. 4 thousandths. Race. Human. Name. Iris. 8 years old. Health. 660 660 mana 890 17 10 status points colon 0 strength 162 stamina 66 agility 85 dexterity 107 intelligence 95 wisdom 165 plus 6 attack 0 magic attack colon 0 defense colon 0 magic defense 0 soul 3690 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchase e, wisdom c, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, sail e, advanced readers, soul bounds, element f, contracteds, peasant, f, class b, monster slayer e, slime slayer c, skill mastery d, tree chopper c, tree types, tree series d, log maker c, tree planters, book thief d, criminal d, expert read ref, herbs gathered, herbs types is, potion brewer ref, potion type c, status mastery d, beast slayer d, horned rabbit slayer e, Potion administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Assassinations, Herbalist Series D, Skeleton Slayer F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero Actives, Status Level 52 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 7 F, Mana Wave Level 1 F, Ice Bind Level 5 F, Ice Sword Level 1 F, Icicle Level 3 F. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 21 E, Sword Mastery Level 12 F, Mana Control Level 22 E, Ice Control Level 14 F, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 6 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 7 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 6 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 6, Magic Analysis Level 2, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 1, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 3, Witchcraft Level 8, Curses Mastery Level 2, Rituals Mastery Level 2, Magic Control Level 2, Magic Knowledge Level 1, Ice Mastery Level 1, Unique, Appraisal Level 50, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice Cursed Soulbound Grimo I Rank F, 72 100. After checking how much mana I had left, status spam magic analysis 80 times for me if that's possible. Notice. Affirmative. Loading skill barrage. 
Notice, 800 mana has been deducted. Seems like I can use status to use skills for me which is pretty amazing. I wonder what else I could do with it. I start feeling my senses vanishing as I fall on my knees, and then a great amount of information fills my brain. Notice, analyzing magic. Notice, magical barrier detected. Notice, analyzing barrier failure. Notice, analyzing barrier failure. The voice kept on repeating multiple times with brief pauses while the skill would fail to activate 50 times. Then on the last three times, something happened. Notice, analyzing barrier failure. Notice, analyzing barrier failure. Notice, analyzing barrier success. Notice, cursed barrier created by the god of chaos. In my head, a different voice spoke, and since status skill was connected, the new voice interrupted status. System, the title noticed has been received. System, the title god series has been received. Noticed and god series? Does that mean that a god or more have noticed us? Aurora shouted surprised as she received the titles herself. Could have also been the god of chaos alone. I tell her after returning to my senses while feeling quite the headache. Are you okay Iris? God of Chaos? Aurora asked worriedly while approaching very close. Yes. I just feel really tired it seems like using that skill those many times was pretty interesting yet exhaustive for my head. Did you got to learn anything at least? She questions with more curiosity than worry after checking on me and seeing I appear to be fine. Yes. Luckily the information passed through my brain before it was being voiced. Anything useful? At this point, she couldn't contain her curiosity, and I could tell it by watching how her eyes glittered in anticipation. It seems like this isn't some ruins, it is a specific place where skeletons and zombies exist protecting a portal at its deepest part, the reason why they don't come out. They can't come out because of the barrier or because of this god of chaos? Yes, the barrier keeps them locked inside, as I am now I couldn't possibly reproduce it. But in some months if I keep studying this I'd be able to add this ritual to my list. A ritual? Is that a skill included in your class? Apparently rituals are a different form of using magic, they are skills in the end but they require a magic circle, and imbuing lots and lots of mana, the more it has the stronger the effect will be. That's very interesting, your class turned out to be pretty cool after all. She smiles very interestedly in it, wanting it for herself. Hearing those words makes me happy and relieved. I smile tiredly at my sister who seems to be quite happy. Why relieved? As soon as she questions me her expression changes radically. Well, I thought it was a bad evil class since it came from disgrace, I felt like it wasn't good at all. It's hard to know if it was the right choice or not. But seeing as you look that happy it must have been, I do a big smile full of kindness. From what you told me disgrace is just a different fame, so don't worry about it. After all, both are part of the same system. I'd go as far as to say two sides of the mirror. Yes you're clearly right. Thank you Aurora. You're welcome little Iris, here let me help you. She extends her hand which I grab to help me lift my knees from the ground. And once I'm up I mean on her placing my arm around her shoulder. She then carries me to the nearest tree letting me rest there for a while, and then Aurora whispers closely at my ear. What if you removed that barrier? If I did that, I believe the monsters inside would leave making it empty. If that happened we'd be able to kill them outside where it'd be easier to fight them, and eventually explore what's deep inside. Yes, but without knowing what's in there we could end up unleashing a catastrophe into the village even getting ourselves be murdered. Fair enough also I received the two titles too. The god ones? Yes, apparently those two worked. That's interesting, just surprised the attention we caught wasn't from the goddess Arya since I'm a human. Perhaps if you kill her devotees and destroy her churches, Aurora does an evil grin. At that I fake laugh. Not knowing what to say since I feel inside that she would actually do that just to annoy a godly being most likely the reason she got sealed, not having self-restraint. Any information about this portal thing? No, I only know that it exists. Let's head home, for now. I'm out of mana and tired. I protest otherwise there's a chance she'd want to stick around for a longer time. Sure, 
I'll take the herb bag, and depending on the guards I'll walk the rest with you. Sounds good. Thank you it helps a lot. We head back home without issues. At home, I have dinner with my parents while Aurora relaxes in the room. How was your day father? Mother? It was enjoyable how about you daughter? I had a lot of fun teaching those kids in the morning and it's a good pay too. How about you dear? After hearing both of them as they take turns to reply I speak. Today I gathered a lot of herbs at the West Forest, so tomorrow I'll be spending a while potion crafting. You went there just for that? Mother asked curiously. We also had a quest there to find Safi herbs which I found a share of. Any encounters with monsters? Usually annoying horned rabbits? Father asked smiling as he fought them before. It was pretty relaxing. I spent most of the time gathering herbs while Aurora explored the woods and the ruins. The ruins? They shouted in unison. The father spoke. They're very dangerous. Don't let her go inside. She could die. Didn't the guards warn you, girls? I'll beat them to pulp those imbeciles. It's okay. Further they did their job. Just Aurora is a very curious girl when it comes to magic, so she couldn't help but check it out a bit. She's safe and unharmed though. That's a place restricted even to adventurers dear. They are ancient ruins that no one dares to mess with. They're supposedly cursed as the air inside of them feel heavy and dead monsters roam inside of them. I'm surprised the army or the church didn't wipe it clean. One of the old saintesses declared that the barrier wouldn't allow any monster to leave it. And so the only people who bothered with it were greedy people. I see. On our way back Aurora did mention that the skeletons had very old ragged clothes and weapons. She used one of them that broke after a few times being used. Most likely it was from an old adventurer. Maybe a warrior or even a knight who knows. Exactly Rosalyn. If a skeleton were to be born in some way I don't think it would have a need to wear clothes. We laugh upon hearing dad comment. The first time I went to that forest I met a horned rabbit while I was gathering herbs. We looked at each other, and then he made a loud noise. Suddenly I was running away from ten of those things, it was dangerous but I managed to defeat them. Ten of them alone? Aren't you like level three or maybe four? Even if you were higher it would still be hard if they scatter around you. Rosalyn asks with a surprised expression while her hands tremble but she hides them from her daughter. I'm currently level 7 but before the skeletons that Aurora defeated I was level 4 I believe. Just how much experience the skeletons gave you? Dad shouted surprised as leveling up took him a lot longer. You two never attempted to fight them before? I asked confused at their reactions. Of course not dear we do not go against the rules, and well we weren't living here before, but even if we were we wouldn't have gone there. Eh, hey, really? I asked my mother doubting her from her personality which doesn't sound fit it maybe mother winked at me smiling her smile makes mine be summoned almost like magic and then i continue each one gave like 100 something experience that's a lot of experience slimes give like one or two tenths of it slimes there gave like half of that i think that means the creatures in there are higher level and possibly extremely strong yes Aurora left as her monster detector skill alarmed her of at least 70 monsters. 70. Further voiced out amazed by the number. Yes, enough to destroy the village as we only have two guards stationed at the west gate. That's quite true. Mother said while reflecting greatly on my words. I guess humans think they're fine as long others tell them that. The more I know about our race the stronger I want to become as there are too many things that feel out of place. That's quite the interesting thing to say. Dear, what makes you think that and what things are not in order? Dad asked interested in my words. For example, the fact that there's a very powerful dragon in the north of our kingdom if one day it decides to fly to our kingdom it would burn us to ashes. Sadly, there's only been a hero who tried fighting the dragon before, and well he died. So normal, humans even if they all united I don't think they'd stand a chance. Even then they should be doing something to become stronger or even finding other alternatives. I agree baby, but most humans enjoy living peacefully. Not everyone has the desire you have sweetie. So we're just waiting for the prediction of the same test to come true. Where'd you hear that? Ah, I heard it before when I was a baby. I believe dad said he heard it from someone at the church. I heard it from someone close to the village church. They should be more careful with such information. 
it could cause panic towards the people in the kingdom. A cold voice comes from behind me saying, I believe that would be good, that way humans would strive to become stronger and start doing something against whatever is to come. Parents look at the source finding two blue eyes approaching from the darkness of the living room. After Aurora sits on one of the chairs father replies to me, that's right but sadly the power within the kingdom is split by many factions. Many factions? Basically the main part of the human's army belongs to the king, then eight other parts of it each belong to one of the eight rose families, and a last part to the church, at least that's how it used to be, not sure of the army situation these days. Surprised they need ten people to do something as simple as managing an army. Aurora said with a cold tone mocking the subject. What do you know about warfare Aurora? Father asked intrigued by her tone. Enough to do it myself. If that's true, I could put on a word with my friend the prince. He's always eager to recruit new talents, such as strategists or other types. Sounds like a good prince unlike the ones I've met, however, I'm not moving away from. Her cold eyes focus me. What's mine? She thought going silently. I smile innocently at her and say, I don't mind if you give it a try sister, in the future if humans would start moving because of you, I would feel assured if it'd increase our chances of survival. An unusual expression filled Aurora's face as an evil smile appeared very briefly, that's not a bad idea little Iris. So would you like to tag along with me tomorrow morning to the capital? I have an appointment with the prince in two days. It takes a while to get there about 300 kms of distance which by carriage will be at best 14 hours of a trip. She stares at me and I nod smiling. Does the prince enjoy chess? Chess? Was that a thing from your past life to Aurora? Mother asks curiously not being a big fan of it since it requires thinking too much. Yes, that's amazing, and yes we do have it in this world too, further clarifies happily as they discuss the rules. Since it is the same ones it'll be enjoyable, Aurora says ending it with a cute smile. Well the nobles play it since they're young, they get a high level of education especially so when it comes to the prince, so don't worry if you lose, dear daughter, don't worry father, I'll be sure to not worry about it, Aurora replies with a smile. I'll help you pack some things Aurora. Thank you, mother. You're very welcome. Rosalind smiled kindly at her as she felt like her daughter had found something to do with her life, other than placing herself in danger through questing. I smile at my family while wondering what's going through Aurora's mind. We then spend some hours having fun chatting at the table before going to sleep. Day 27th of the sun season. The next morning two carriages drop by our house very early in the morning. The coachman parks side by side one of them in front of our door around five meters away engraved with a symbol of a blue sword with a tip upwards the royal family crest and also the Lumen Kingdom flag. On the other side six meters away, is a wagon with a symbol of a white rose from the white rose noble family. Peter? One of the coachmen voices out noticing a familiar face. Jeffy? What are you doing in this remote place old friend? The coachman of the royal family asked. I've come to deliver a message of sorts from the master, how about you, I've come to get a friend of the crown prince for one of those audiences. They both leave their seats and handshake each other smiling, not much further away a door opens and a loop cleaves it with three blonde women behind him. What? Why is the white rose family here? Father questions as he approached the carriages, good morning Jeffy, it's good to see you. Good morning Luke, I hope you've been well since the last trip. Yes. Everything's good. Thank you for asking. As Luke was about to continue the conversation, the other coachman opened the wagon and a man in a black outfit came out from inside. The famous rank S adventurer Robert Jeffy said, surprised to see someone like that here. For them to have brought this man here means they're serious about something, Rosalind thought uneased. Right behind Robert, Raven came out with crossed swords on her back, dressed fully in black clothing moving without making noise with her feet. Good morning everyone, Robert said in a calm tone while staring at the new faces who looked surprised seeing him. I know you. I approached him smiling as he's someone who felt kind back in the day I met Alicia. Upon seeing me he smiled gently, I hope you've been doing well little lady. Thank you for that occasion before. I was truly impressed. 
anything for my friend Alicia, I bow lightly and happily out of respect. Lady Alicia you mean, a cold tone from the side of Robert was heard. Yes, my friend Lady Alicia. I reply calmly ignoring the new face. She stares at me pissed off. Raven, he said in a calm yet serious tone while glaring at Raven as if inviting her to shut up. She then bows her head slightly and remains silent taking a step back. I've come to deliver an invitation to the Iris family, the mistress wishes to have a word, and it's not refusable, he stares seriously at us emitting some kind of pressure that doesn't quite feel like mana or an element. Refusing an invitation from a noble family can be considered a big offense after all, Rosalind thought slightly shaking while looking at Luke. Pardon Robert, but I and Aurora have an audience with the crown prince, further replied calmly as he stands above. That's fine, it happened to be bad timing, however, I can't return home empty-handed, he released the aura making the air easy to breathe again. I'd like to go even if alone, I'd like to meet Alicia, I grab mother's hand receiving her attention along with a smile of approval. My mother places her other hand on my hair and then says, the two of us will keep you company, Robert, then it's decided, I'll see you at another time Peter keep the ladies in good care will ya? Of course, send my regards to your further back at the capital. I will be back shortly Robert, take your time madam. Come Iris, after a while, they return in more expensive clothing. Rosalind in a light blue dress and Iris in a light pink one. For peasants, they have good looking clothing, and connections. To think I'd see one of the coaches from the royal family this far from the capital along with our own. Peter thought enthusiastically smiling at the rarity of such an occasion. This way ladies, he lent a hand for us to hop inside the carriage, then he closed the door behind me as I was the last to enter. Moments after the trip began with a whip and the sounds of horses, what was the adventure a thing all about Robert? I ask him who is sitting in front of me curiously hoping he won't take it badly. R. Young Miss sits from my old days when I became a rank S adventurer when I was 40. That's amazing. My mother an ex-adventurer, and I along with my sister decided to try it. We should be rank E after delivering the last quest we did. Didn't the two of you became adventurers on the day you met Alicia? His eyebrow raised startled at the pace we were going. Yes, we did. I shout energetically as he seems happy to hear me out. That's very good progress truly great job. I blush slightly from all the compliments and his kind words. Seems like they're both capable and of very young age. They're also one year younger than Lady Alicia. Thank you. I smile kindly at him. Not sure what Raven felt about Aurora but she felt pretty normal to me. Was she truly a wolf wearing the skin of a sheep? Mind if I treat you by your given name, Iris? Please do. I like you a lot. I reply cheerfully making his eyes widen for a swift moment, I'm very honored to hear such words from Lady Alicia's friend, I'm truly blessed and full of gratitude, Robert replied while doing a mature kind smile, Raven clicks her tongue and looks at the window board and annoyed by our conversation filled with flattery and nonsense, Iris has grown since the last time I saw her, her eyes look more strong willed, it feels like she went through a share of some battles, possibly close to death ones. Say, Iris, between you and your sister, which of you is stronger? I am by a large margin. I figured as her presence is a lot more outstanding than her sister's. Still, I couldn't get a good perception on Aurora. She felt unnatural. Even though it has to do with their first years being very sickly she almost died a few times. In the last three years she has superated her disease and so she's catching up. Sorry to hear that, he bows lightly with a worried and sad expression. It's okay she's better now, that's what matters. I'm truly glad to hear that Iris. I learned swordsmanship from my mother and magic from my father for a full year. My sister dislikes using weapons, however, she loves using magic and is interested in going to the Magic Institute one day. That place is very expensive. He looks at me with some sadness in his eyes knowing that we most likely wouldn't have enough money. That's why we became adventurers so that one day she can go study there. I'll give her my share of the money if necessary. Truly honorable to go to such lengths to help your sister, so if we disregard your swordsmanship skills which of the two have the better magical skills? That'd still be me. 
I was blessed with the rare ice element, I turn my palm upwards and I make a cold aura on it. My mother was born with the water element, and my father with the unique light element. But sadly neither of us sisters received it, meaning that her sister got the water element, and Iris was blessed with a mutated ice element. It seems like Aurora is pretty normal still I must ask her something. May I know why your sister was called by the royal family? I look at mother, and as she notices my gaze Rosalind nods while smiling at me reassuring me that it's fine to tell him. To be honest, she went there to play chess with the crown prince. It is their favorite game it seems, father is the one who works for him, he's a healer. Unique light element meaning that he must be an exceptional healer, I understand, I apologize for all the questions, no need, I'm just having fun meeting someone who has taken good care of a dear friend of mine, I reply with a bright smile making Raven roll her eyes, in that case, if the opportunity would come for you to learn the swordsmanship of our master Alfred, would you be willing, in exchange for becoming the knight of Alicia in the future? I tilt my head unsure since I had already denied the proposition to her when we met. That is so, he replied with a serious tone expecting me to say yes for my own good. As I become stronger that way easier. I'm grateful but I wish to become truly powerful. And I don't know if Lord Alfred's swordsmanship would suffice my needs as I'm also interested in magic. Raven punched the carriage wall while glaring at me. Robert raised his hand which retracted Raven's glaring. You are behaving so good. I'm so proud of you my baby daughter. Once we get there and have tea with the mistress, you'll be able to understand afterwards the strongest sword art of the entire kingdom, and then you may decide if you wish to or not. Thank you for the heads up Robert. I smile kindly at him while thinking to myself. In terms of swordsmanship I'd truly like to learn with my mother's teacher, she made him sound very interesting. Time flies and then we eventually arrive. We leave the carriage with the help of the coachman and I look in front of me. A mansion with a white stone paved from the entrance to the metal gate connected to a grey stone wall covering the mansion surroundings, and a garden on the sides of such a path. As we walk through the gate and the path, we see swordsmen on both sides looking at us. Robert opens the doors and we head inside. The first thing I notice is a red carpet that extends all the way to the other side about 10 meters long. Then I see many women in black with white aprons going to places and doing things. There are maids, workers whose focus is the cleaning and maintenance of the mansion and what's around. Robert tells me quietly as I must have looked very surprised to him. I nod quietly observing everything around, this way please, we follow Robert, Raven and the coach stayed behind near the wagon, at a large dining hall, three people with black hair and black eyes are seated talking to one another, Master Alfred the guests have arrived, let's go have tea outside, Alfred replied calmly and dignified wearing a very expensive white attire with a blue ribbon and a brown mantle covering the shoulders to the waist. The dark chocolate skin toned brown head made inside a black outfit with a white apron containing a rose emblem on it, opened one of the doors that led outside while smiling beautifully, and everyone went through to the garden, they us. As Sylvia passed in front of us I stared at her body curious about what a strong woman's physique would look like. Luckily for me, she was wearing a firm and light white dress that demonstrated the different marks of the muscles, especially the abdomen. A black hair long enough to reach the middle of the cleavage leaving only a bit of skin to see, my eyes then looked at her shoulders and arms that weren't large in width nor too muscled. The hands however had plenty of calluses. Once she passed through I noticed the rest of the backside noticing a silhouette similar to Mother 1, just a tad thinner as Mother gained some weight and hasn't worked out as much as when I was learning with her. Alicia then passes in front of me smiling at me flicking my forehead softly holding her laughter inside as I was lost in her mother's figure. We follow right after reaching the outside. Thanks to the position of the sun and the mansion, it was currently filled with a pleasant shadow reducing the warmth of it, along with a delicate light breeze that didn't allow for any of us to possibly sweat from the heat. We headed closer to the tea table, and then upon arriving close to it, Alfred stopped turning to us and spoke with a formal and serious tone. First of all, thank you for pleasing us with your company today, however, I expected for, 
where may the other two be? Sadly the Crown Prince carriage had affairs with the father and Iris' sister, Robert declared while bowing respectfully as he felt the gaze from his master falling on him. That's quite unfortunate but understandable nonetheless. Perhaps another day we'll have such an opportunity. It has been a long time Rosalind, the mistress bowed lightly by pulling her dress softly, acting unbefitting of a noble lady in her rank towards a peasant. A very long time indeed Lady Sylvia, I hope you've been well, Rosalind repaid in the same way while smiling happily. That's your childhood friend, the extremely talented swordsman you always talk about mother, the one from the old beggar story and the strongest of the royal guards, I shout energetically and surprised, startling everyone in the making Alicia doing her best not to burst to laugh at how I just turned a serious meeting into a funny one. Upon hearing that Sylvia chuckles unable to help herself, hiding her continuous laughter behind a fan that she quickly takes from the tea table. Haven't seen mom laughing in a while, to think she knew Iris' mother, Alicia thought as she looked at her smiling happily. To think the person Lord Alfred lost her was also the head of the royal knight. You never cease to surprise me Lady Sylvia, Rosalind added holding the excitement and the big amount of happiness from re-encountering her friend after so long. Thank you for the compliments, you've matured delicately and if you may allow me to say, a few sizes, Sylvia said while checking her chest cleavage out which is fairly big, especially so after increasing a bit after having Iris. Did you stop practicing swordsmanship Rosalind? I've reformed as an adventurer and I only teach a few kids back at a steer village while I work in an alchemy shop, where we sell potions, please have a sit everyone let's drink some tea as we continue the chat, Alfred suggested while winking at Alicia after he did and we started seating, Alicia came closer to me and sat next to me, I'm happy to see you're doing well, I tell her in a low tone while smiling happily having missed her for a long time that almost felt eternal. It's good to see you again Iris, we ended up meeting earlier than I expected due to a report about your sister, she whispered while placing her hand in front of the mouth like kids usually do, a report about what? I asked lowly confused imitating her actions unconsciously, one of our assassins saw you two in a steer village and apparently she was scared of your sister, which makes no sense as she's seen death and killed plenty, to think we were being observed? It's a good thing we were careful about the Grimo eye transformations. She's never used her dark element in the village, so it must have been that ominous aura that spreads from her whenever sister loses control. Anything in specific? I ask innocently trying to grasp which of the possibilities were perceived by their family. I'm not sure, my parents didn't give me the details, just something about her aura feeling deadly. I raise my voice so that her parents can hear and say, sister a bit special, she's been in death's door since she was born due to a sickness that were recently healed two years ago, copying me and understanding partially Alicia says, I'm happy to hear that she's better now, how about you, what have you been doing since the last time I saw you, you wouldn't believe it if I told you, I laugh lightly interrupting the adults conversation, Alicia if you and Iris would like, you can drink your tea while showing her the lake by the garden, her mother said softly which Alicia understood immediately that they were bothering her. Sure mother, that sounds like a wonderful plan let's go, Iris, she grabs my hand and we walk together through their garden while ignoring the tea. Guess you didn't want any tea, Alicia said after we walked a bit further from the table. Not really, I only came to see a friend, I don't care about those formalities especially since they just want to use me to guard you in the future. Is that a bad thing? I'd be happy to have you as my future knight. I want to become stronger and not only with swordsmanship, I've acquired a magical class and I'm currently level 7, but even then I feel extremely weak. The other day I saw a level 20 goblin warrior. For real? That's incredibly high for someone as young and small as you. Yes. Hey, I'm still growing. Alicia chuckled at my words and I continued talking. The goblin looked very dangerous, but leveling up increases our status the way we want it to which makes adventuring worthwhile, you should try it someday my lady, I tease her back making her chuckle once more which ends up in her poking my cheek lightly. I'm still level 1, but I've learned some skills with my father and Robert, so I'm sure I could try some quests, 
even though I do not have the freedom to do so. Being a noble sure is a little limiting but I do hope you're not stuck here forever, and what kind of skills do you have? Swordsmanship level 50, sword mastery level 40, and some that I have to channel mana to do which are the trademark of my father's style, weak versions of it for now. That's amazing my swordsmanship is like level 20 and sword mastery at level 10, I tell her while smiling realizing the great gap between us. She smiles back and says, you must have worked very hard, I have what I get from being taught for my entire life we could say by the best, so I'm sure you'll catch up in no time especially if you follow my house tradition. Mother did her best to teach me what she knew, so it works out. I also know a bit of magic. In other words, I'm balanced. Rosalind looks like a good mother, say would you like to see the family dojo as well? Sure, show me the way. I reply smiling while grabbing her hand as we head there after passing by the small lake that looks rather small in comparison to the river near my house. A little earlier in the other carriage with Aurora and Luke. So my dear daughter now that we're both alone, Father makes a serious expression as he looks at Aurora who in return stares back expressionlessly. Hum? What's wrong father? I'd like you to be extremely obedient while we're in the capital, there are various groups and factions that could prove annoying to deal with otherwise, ain't I always? They smiled at each other, I can tell that you have a lot more life experience compared to Iris which enabled her to grow up faster and honestly in this world we live in I'm truly grateful for it, there may come a day where the two of you will have to take care and protect one another as the war is coming and with it, we never know what it may devour in its way. I understand father, I promise to look after her and take good care of my little sister. Even then the person you're about to meet is someone very sophisticated, different than every other noble I've met. He is willing to listen to peasants. Furthermore does not see us as ants as most of the other nobles do. For that reason, I'd like you to be yourself, but never use any type of magic in his presence. All right, even though I wasn't planning to. Already had my share with royalty in the past. No matter what happens, the royal guards are all monsters, they will not think twice in killing either one of us, and I can't protect us from any of them. I understand father, in the case. The prince likes you and sees worth in your person, he may get you an entry for the magic institute that you have interest in, or even for a job in a high position. I've never pried in either your or Iris past life memories because we're your family now, and because of that I don't know what kind of knowledge you could possibly have for you to back up your earlier statement. He gasps for some air and then continues talking. But you're my daughter and I believe in you, if you tell me you can somehow lead an army and again somehow expand the territory, and even conquer other kingdoms, then I'll believe you and act upon that. Aurora smiles kindly at those words. Luke extends his hand and pats her on the head. Do what you think is best for you and Iris, and listen attentively to any propositions the prince may do. It could be very beneficial for either of you in the future. I'll keep that in mind. I'm interested in the Magic Institute. But yesterday I saw something a lot more interesting that was able to captivate my heart. Something? What was it? Luke asks filled with curiosity completely unaware of what it could be so amazing to make Aurora say such words. She whispers to him, a skill that Iris Scott called magic analysis. With a low voice understanding she wants to keep this matter secretive, Luke said, what does it do or what was it used for? She was able to analyze the barrier from the ruins in the West Forest, getting the attention of the God of Chaos, and two titles related to it. With a dumbfounded expression Luke said, So, you're saying she was able to find out that the barrier is connected to him somehow? Yes, she went as far as to say that it was created by him. You both truly never cease to amaze me, so what else did Iris find out about it? that the barrier was made to protect what was inside of it some sort of portal in its deepness, it also kept the monsters from coming out of it. I've heard of heroes exploring ruins like that one, but they usually wouldn't go too deep due to the horde of monsters, or they'd get lost in it as they are mostly gigantic mazes, the one in the west, I saw it from above and it was gigantic, though I did see what looked like a tunnel at the end of it, so I believe there's something in there which could be this portal thing or perhaps a hidden path to somewhere else. Even if the four of us went there, we'd most likely die since the heroes couldn't do it themselves. 
I feel like a hero is just a person that is granted one or two special skills no, I believe the records do say that, along with the hero class given by the goddess and usually only one of the summoned people gets it. In other words, they probably were only able to go so far on their own, without relying on anyone to grow stronger faster. Because of the experience shared, Luke asks thinking of the issues of partying with other people. Yes. I believe that's the reason since they usually would need to become strong fast to save the kingdom, does sound like a possibility, they would end up avoiding the dungeons too, as doing normal quests or hunting in the borders of the kingdom grants the necessary experience, and ends up reducing the enemies they'll have to fight against later, at some point, they'd get tired from being on the ruins where it's dangerous, and train elsewhere instead is what I think would happen or maybe even not know about them since they aren't born here, people who are summoned don't usually go to such ruins, the hero is usually trained by the king, and the rest are split by the factions, so questing is like something done at a later date, and there are no quests for ruins, so they not knowing about it turns to be a big possibility. The nobles rose families and the church was it? Yes, that's right daughter meaning there's more than one possible annoyance coming into this kingdom at some point. When is it? She asks in a cold tone startling Luke who was caught off guard. When is what Aurora? He replies calmly upon briefly regaining his composure. The summoning ritual, she clarifies with an even colder and lower tone. I'm not sure when the last one was, but it's usually 90 to 100 years between the last one so it could be at any moment really. If the sage and the hero from my past end up somehow being summoned into this world, I'll definitely have my revenge no matter what it takes, even if I have to wait tendlessly once more. Even though killing them could bring trouble to Aris whom I owe my life to, so in a way, I'll have to be careful at handling it. I've come to really like her, but at the same time I can't forgive what they did to me. Choices, choices choices to butcher the pigs or not to butcher them back to the present on the white rose mansion gardens rosalyn we invited you to discuss the future of your daughter iris alfred and i have a tradition that goes through the white rose family it consists of giving swordsmanship lessons towards the five candidates who receive the white ring and then in the future one or more will be chosen as soon as sylvia finished talking alfred continued exactly love as you must know Rosalyn, I'm a sword master and the swordsmanship we pass in this house since ancient times is the best in the kingdom, this it would certainly be a once in a lifetime chance for a peasant. Furthermore I'm very interested in Aurora, I'd love to allow her to also receive a ring based on what I was told. Upon hearing that, Robert who was listening silently reported everything he heard from Iris whispering it to them. As the mother, I'm grateful that you're even spending time evaluating them or perhaps giving them a chance to prove themselves. However, the path that my daughters will walk, I decided to leave that up to them the day I lost to Aris in a duel, which she later joined the guild. As for Aurora in specific, she has absolutely no interest in swordsmanship, she took the father's side in what comes to magic. In that case, we only need to get Tyrus's approval. Yes. Lord Alfred, if my daughter decides on accepting your offer, I'll support it any way I can. In that case, if you'll excuse me, he gets up from the table and heads towards where the girls went. I didn't know you were the woman that defeated Alfred. Doesn't that make you the strongest swordsman in the kingdom Lady Sylvia? You can drop the honorifics Rosalind, and it'd make me the second strongest swordsman. The other monster is still alive. Our teacher Ray is? Yes. But since he doesn't care about nobility, I'm currently holding the number one title and the head of the royal knight's seat. You've sure come a long way. We're both 43 now, so I'm looking forward to seeing what the next generation can do. If it wasn't your kid I wouldn't even have invited you. Figured as much. They laugh. Come, my husband will test your daughter soon. All right. Moments later they all reach the dojo. This place feels comfortable Alicia. I'm assuming you spent most of your time training the sword here? I question her while taking a good look at it. Yes, practically every day either being taught by father, mother or Robert. Finishing looking at it I find it perfectly clean, with the absence of dust. Furthermore, a large enough wooden floor made of many squares glued to each other, 
The walls and the ceiling have strips of wood giving it a different appearance, and further at the end of the room, there's a wooden table with what looks like weapons on it. On the walls, one can find closed black windows, like squares that don't open either side, probably there to allow the light to enter. No freedom. I think as I too once shared the path of a noble being locked all my life to something. Don't look at me with sad eyes Iris. It's for my own good as the head successor. Even if that's true it is still sad that you can't leave this place. I give her a tight hug while patting her short hair that is a bit longer compared to the last time I saw her in an attempt to give some comfort. If you keep your hair growing like that, one day it'll hit the floor. Iris, she laughs lightly finding it amusing. Mother the one who cuts it from time to time. She loves seeing it long, so that's certainly a possibility. The dojo door opens and four people walk in. Hope we're not interrupting anything, Alfred said with a serious face as they saw us hugging each other. We let each other go and I reply, not at all. The two of us smile embarrassed. Good. He walks towards a table filled with weapons on top of it mostly filled with swords. He unsheathes one of them and throws it at me then he unsheathes another and takes a sort of stance by lowering his back and knees slightly while Alicia walks to the side closer to the entrance. So my butler Robert said you declined his offer saying that my swordsmanship wasn't enough for you. I start losing my senses, and then I say, so, did I hurt your pride? Everyone around me made a surprised expression including Alfred. I'll show you what you could have learned, and make you regret that attitude. He dashed at me fast mana coating his sword, I freeze the floor beneath his next step making him slip creating an icicle under him so that he falls on it which he destroys with his sword while putting extra strength on his other leg falling to the side. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Iris is incredible. Alicia thought excitedly as she saw what unfolded. He quickly got up and took a serious stance walking forward. I mana coat the sword he sent my way with 400 mana making it shine brighter than his and then a slash the air creating a horizontal mana wave towards him. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. A surprised face appears in his eyes as the mana flies at him. Alfred starts moving away from it and when the attempt realizes something weird looking down. I spined. I had frozen his feet to the wooden floor, notice, 100 mana has been deducted, it's been a while since the last time I was injured in some way, understanding the situation with ice all the way to the knees, he charges the sword with more mana throwing a mana wave back at mine, meanwhile, I summon two icicles attacking him from behind, notice, 100 mana has been deducted, behind. Alicia shouted warning the further noticing the danger of such a sneak attack, he turns the torso making the icicles graze as the mana waves explode upon hitting each other vibrating the entirety of the room. Blood starts dripping from the sides of his hip. This combat style is truly creative, not once but twice I was injured, if I taught her swordsmanship on top of it, she'd reach new heights and be extremely useful to Alicia while he slashes the ice in the feet freeing himself while mana coating the sword, I make a big icicle on top of him letting it smash him, notice, 300 mana has been deducted, he jumps backward dodging it barely, my daughter truly is incredible, so this must be the reason why Aurora said ice would fit her, to think she foresaw this much, they're both outstanding my girls, Rosalind thought while her eyes shone with happiness, is she really 8 years old? I'm giving 20% of myself, so I don't hurt her, but she's making it pretty hard. Guess I'll have to go a bit harder, suddenly Alfred dashes twice as fast towards me compared to other times he attempted it, where I'm forced to freeze the floor between us while making four icicles around him closing the exits. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Seems like I'll have to train Alicia harder after this, he smiled faintly noticing my tricks skillfully slipping on the ice while slashing at them. As he surfed the ice towards me, I use my leftover mana and half of my health to summon 20 icicles from everywhere around. Notice, 410 mana and 300 health have been deducted. I faint on the floor due to mana exhaustion while the icicles go towards him. Meanwhile, noticing that he's in a pinch, 
he pushes the body to 50% and opens a way to the side destroying two icicles rolling through the floor while a few of the leftover icicles still graze him. After a moment he gets up and turns to me finding my body on the floor where I fainted. That was an amazing effort, Iris. I'm glad that you weren't all talk, so I get to save your face and honor. A happy expression fills the face. Himana coats the blade then Mana slashes it skillfully in a curve crushing all the ice shards on the floor making beautifully sparkling dust that gets penetrated by the light from the door they left open. Alfred then goes back to the weapon table sheathing the sword and placing it there. Mother walks up to me and checks on me, seems like she used too much mana on that final one. Let her rest in one of our rooms, Alfred leaves the training room after saying that. You're welcome to stay the night and eat with us Rosalyn. Take care of your friend meanwhile Alicia, Sylvia followed Alfred smiling with a mix of happiness and enthusiasm. I will mother, she walked closer to Iris worried while Robert picked the body up and led them to one of the rooms in the mansion. After they placed Tyrus in one of the beds, Alicia spoke to Rosalyn, I didn't know Iris was that amazing. Honestly I didn't either. I'm as surprised as you are. Rosalind replied while smiling proudly at her daughter, I believe Lord Alfred hasn't been damaged since he last dueled with Sylvia, even if those attacks were just grazing him they meant a lot, Robert added delicately some words praising Iris's efforts. Dad wasn't being serious, he's a lot more amazing than that. Most likely was testing her. Nevertheless that was truly amazing. I doubt I'd have survived that last one. Yes. Had he gone all out from the beginning it would have been a different outcome, but even then I believe there would be one or two grazes since it's very hard to dodge all those ice spells Iris made. The most amazing thing is the control necessary to do so, she must have been well taught and worked very hard, Robert said praising Iris and her parents. Still, I don't think she'd use mana without using a combination of swordsmanship as I taught her. That wasn't like her at all. Iris relied too much on ice spells. When she wakes up I'll ask her what happened. Aurora and Luke's perspective at the capital. After the trip, the wagon parks near the royal castle where the king and queen live. Jeffy leaves his seat and then opens the wagon door, helping Aurora out who takes his hand, leaving before Luke. Thirty meters in front of them there are soldiers on each side of the entrance holding different weapons in white outfits with a blue sword figure on their backs. They go through the middle of them alongside Jeffy who escorts them through a white stone paved path. The big black door opens and a butler escorts them henceforth instead. I'll go rest a bit Luke. Whenever you need me just call for me. Thank you Jeffy. Luke smiled doing a light bow. Are either of the guests thirsty or hungry or need to go to the bathroom before meeting the crown prince? I could use some water and go to the bathroom. He looks to Aurora, and winks discreetly. Same here, she replies noticing her father and understanding the reasoning. Of course, please follow me, Justine prepare some water for the guests, the butler tells a maid close by who nods and heads to the kitchen right this way and the ladies that way. He points at a door a bit further than the men's one, after a while, both appear from the respective doors and are served with some water in silver chalices. The crown prince is ready to welcome you, Luke. Understood please. Do take me to him. Is that young lady coming? The butler stared at her as she's not on the guest list of today's meetings. Yes, she's with me. So the prince shouldn't mind. Very well. Though I do warn that any repercussions will be targeted at you if he does mind, he said with a serious face to establish the line of responsibility between them. It's all right, if anything happens I'll take the punishment, the butler points towards some stairs in front of them and spoke calmly, let us proceed. The three of them head upstairs towards some long grey stairs that could be seen from the entrance of the castle where they came from with a red carpet on them. Upon reaching the second floor they head through the right hall, all the way to a door which beyond it is a big living room, where Luke had been received before. At the outside of the large door, the royal guards with fierce looks stand guard on each side. Good morning Sir Lloyd, Sir Rudolph. Hope you've both been well since our last meeting, Luke smiled softly at them while lightly bowing as their nobles. Oh if it isn't the famous healer from the Boomers, 
here to heal another acquaintance of the prince, Rudolf asked in a mocking tone. That is likely, like used to the treatment replied Unbethed. That young girl is your daughter? Lloyd asked curiously noticing a small figure that didn't match the father. Yes, Sir Lloyd. She is one of my twin daughters. She's way too pretty to be your daughter, Rudolf said making both of them laugh. I was wondering what the noise was all about but it seems you gentlemen are just having fun without me. A cold voice was heard behind the royal guards. Towards the voice, they made space allowing entrance and exit from the large door behind them. Upon hearing such a voice Luke bowed and said, Your Royal Highness, it has been a while since the last time we met. Indeed, it has. He looks at Luke and then notices a little blonde girl with cold blue eyes looking straight at him while in a dark blue dress, a color unbefitting for her age. Come in, let's talk ask the maid to bring tea and cookies for the girl. It seems we have an extra guest today, he smiled as he turned around. Then walking further inside the room, Aurora looked at the entire room noticing many bookshelves and a large round table with six chairs two large windows behind them who were at the left of the entrance close to the wall, and a blue carpet with the sword symbol in the middle of the door she passed and the one in front of her. She turned left facing the men, then they sat on one of the chairs around the table while she stood a bit behind, that table was where the crown prince usually worked among. Good morning gentlemen. Luke said with a smile at them grabbing their attention. Good morning Luke, two of them said out of courtesy. Good morning young one. An elderly one said while smiling at Luke the best he could. Happy to see you in good health teacher Mark. Luke directed his eyesight at the old man while he said that. The man laughed slowly in an elderly fashion making the wrinkles around the eyes visible, and then said, Is this young miss your daughter? One of my twins the blue-eyed one. Aurora. I haven't seen such interesting clear eyes during my lifetime. Upon the elder Mark commented the rest of the men stared at her eyes confirming his statement. She truly doesn't look a bit like you Luke, is she really your daughter? The crown prince asked curiously thinking he may have been cheated on. Aurora took her mother Rosalind's side, though I'm unsure about the blue eyes, as her twin sister has green ones, and we both have brown eyes. Sounds to me like you were blessed with two future beauties, the crown prince said teasing him making the men around laugh lightly. That is so your royal highness, he replied smiling a bit flattered and embarrassed. So what do we have the honor of the extra guest? The prince asked while making a serious expression as not just anyone can walk inside without an arrangement especially a peasant. Aurora then bowed light while peerlessly lifting her dress just to the height necessary for a perfect pose startling the men and gathering their attention and spoke. I've come to bargain the kingdom fate with a chess match, she said expressionlessly while taking note of their reactions. Everyone except Luke who's used to her eccentric personality looked dumbfounded at the little girl's words. The crown prince regaining his composure replied in a proper manner. I'm always up for a chess match. Lawrence take Luke's to the one that needs the treatment. At once your highness. The man got up along with Luke who didn't remain seated for long leading him into a different room through a door located opposite of the one he came in. The men upon hearing the prince's words made space on the table, taking books and papers out of the way, and the young one placed a chessboard on top of the table. You may rise, have a seat, Aurora was it? He extends the arm in her way while smiling kindly. Yes, in a calm manner she replied while walking towards the seat in front of the prince aligning herself with him and the chessboard. They look at each other while placing the pieces in the right order as they speak. It seems you're interested in betting something with your peculiar words. Is it a position or a job you seek? I've only come on behalf of my sister Iris's order. Her sister ordered Aurora to come? What kind of relationship does their family have? Seems like I should have kept Luke inside the room. What did your sister ask from you? She said many things truly, however. Dad mentioned that the crown prince is one who sees the true value of people. Upon hearing those words the interest inside of the crown prince grew larger, and the curiosity to his unanswered questions too. 
Holding the speech right she continued with her little one-sided talking. She said for me to play three chess games where sister wrote the result of them in this paper. Aurora took a paper from her dress pocket and placed it on top of the table positioning it next to the board. Then she said I will bet my life on the line to get the prince's attention in the exchange for the control and management of the entire army of the Lumen Kingdom. The young one who's in the direction of the teacher mark, sitting left of the prince and right of Aurora, a tanned skin man with black hair and dark blue eyes, started laughing at Aurora's proposition. As soon as he finished voice came out through his mouth, I am Ryu, the head of the Blue Rose family the one titled of strategist who has commanded 60% of the army whenever it was necessary. In other words, if you were to beat the crown prince at least two times out of three, I'm willing to let you control the 10% on my side. That's how much trust I have in the crown prince chess ability. I the crown prince promise that if in the non-existent possibility that you beat me, the best chess player in the kingdom that I'll give you a role in the wars to come to manage the 50% part of the army under me. This young girl's eyes aren't wavering. Her expression remains absolute of this bet. The old man Mark thought finding it mysterious. So he spoke to halt this joke by them. Your Royal Highness, and Lord Ryu. I believe you both are being too hot-headed in this matter, betting the army like that against a little kid. It is fine old man Mark, after all. I do value those who live in this kingdom, and if she truly was a strategist prodigy of some sort, I'd be able to focus towards regaining the control of the other factions. May it be as you say, your highness, the old man feeling defeated said while bowing lightly. Aurora turned the chessboard so that she'd have the black-sided pieces. Shall we start then? Time isn't everlasting after all. She smiled gently being that the first expression since she received their attention. 30 minutes pass and she loses the first game by a small margin, it seems like I overestimated this girl, Mark thought as he drank some tea, though for someone so young that was pretty good. How old are you Aurora? The old man asked curiously attempting to gauge her talent. We're currently 8 years old. We? Oh, she must have referred to her sister too. I see. It's a shame you'll be giving your life in this bet to the crown prince otherwise I would have taken you as an apprentice, he laughed slowly due to age. A shame to serve me? The crown prince replied with a refreshing smile after the strenuous game. The old man laughed at such a question knowing fully well no harm would come his way. It's been a while since I couldn't get into someone's mind or understand a playstyle fully well. The way she plays is abnormal, Ryu thought mesmerized as it felt like some moves could have been done differently, and some good chances wasted. But what surprised him was even creating such opportunities. They placed the pieces back again, and then the board turned resulting in Aurora's taking the first turn along with the white pieces who start first. This time the game took longer and after 40 minutes it resulted in the loss of the crown prince by a slow margin. After the game they took a little break. Meanwhile, Lord Ryu's thoughts started running wild. Despite her very close victory her face remains without an expression fully focused. This girl has been blessed with an exceptional concentration by the goddess. Not only that, but it felt like she dragged the game longer than it had to be. Does it have something to do with that paper? Perhaps her playstyle is still being refined? Maybe there's a chance she's still improving as she plays with someone very good like the prince. Who is this sinister sister that gets to order this girl around? Someone she looks up to? A girl she fears or respects? Maybe the sister is even smarter? Luke feels a lot more reasonable compared to this girl. In fact are they truly further and daughter? They don't even look alike. Children usually take up to their parents, but 8 years old. That's not long enough to even perceive such deep traits, with how unnatural she always remains expressionless, almost like it's not a human being having only smiled twice ever since she got here. Well let's cross that, she's certainly a human, even smells the same way peasants do. But there's certainly something different about her. The dark blue dress, she's wearing colors that are unfit of a kid, clear blue eyes like ice, an initial cold tone, an eccentric proposal, a peerless etiquette, an extraordinary knowledge in a game as hard as chess, a paper with the outcome of the three games, the outcome, the result, 
was this girl possibly blessed by the goddess in a way that she's able to predict the future for a few hours or something? No that can't be, since not even the saintess can manage such a feat. Her play style is truly different, however, it was not one that would have used such an ability, she struggled in some stages, barely won. The sound of a door open and two men returned to the table interrupting his thoughts. Welcome back Luke, I didn't know you had such a prodigious daughter. The old man said while laughing in an elderly way quite satisfied with how the games unfolded. A prodigy? Did she actually beat the crown prince somehow? The further let out a small smile without knowing what to reply with a very serious expression. The crown prince wrote a letter and signed it with a royal stamp placing it on the opposite side of the letter Iris wrote. Your Highness, Ryu said in a shocked tone confused about what he was doing. I'm a man of word, even though I'm not looking to lose, and now I get to play with the white again ensuring my victory. After all those who strike first hold the advantage. The old man Mark said while rubbing his short white beard. Exactly, that is my style. The crown prince replied convicted of the result being favorable to him. Well that is very true. And she already lost once while playing with the dark pieces, and barely won with the white ones, Mark thought expecting her to lose but putting up a good fight. Mark then explains to the two who just sat at the table about everything that happened. Cold sweat drips from Luke's head as he hears it while seated. You better not lose Aurora or you'll become a slave to the crown princess never again seeing the sister you adore so much. He gripped his fists under the table. I don't want to also lose a daughter for a job in the army, much less for a game of chess. He gripped his fists harder as the emotions took a toll inside. Ryu noticing Luke gripping started relaxing ceasing himself of his worries. It seems like her father didn't expect this to happen, so it was indeed the work of the daughters, two eight-year-old kids conspiring while using their father. That's truly fascinating, I'd very much like to meet the other one who seems to be the leader of the two. As if reading his mind Aurora said, My sister is one of the bearers of the white rings, so for that reason, I'm the one who has come in her place. Lord Alfred has chosen a peasant, Ryu asked surprised letting out a loud tone without meaning to. With a cold stare and a cold tone, Aurora replied, Lady Alicia has. Realizing his indelicacy despite being true, Ryu doesn't say anything else, it seems I offended her by offending the sister, in other words, she truly does see that girl in high standards, and apparently so does the White Rose family. To change a little the conversation Luke said. In fact, a wagon from the White Rose family arrived at the same time as the Crown Princes, so my wife Rosalind and daughter Iris went with them. Was it the first invitation? The Crown Prince asked in a semi-serious worried tone. Yes ever since she got the ring from Lady Alicia, Luke replied calmly while confused about the Prince's expression. Then there's nothing to worry, despite peasant or noble. They give a fair chance to all who are chosen by the head successor, to learn their swordsmanship. I did not know that, but it does cease my worries as I didn't have the chance to go with them. The crown prince smiles at Luke. It is but a tradition, but if your daughter accepts she'll have a chance to become truly strong with the sword. I'm not so sure she will. She's a nice wizard and loves magic. That's a pretty rare element. Due to the concentrated lineages we have in our kingdom, there are not that many ice mages. How about this daughter? Did she inherit your unique light element, or it took your wife's element? Sadly, she was born very sickly for the first five years almost dying multiple times. She survived her illness three years ago, but an element did not form. Sounds like the goddess blessed her with a good brain instead of magic talent, the prince replied in a way that would cheer up Luke. Thank you, your royal highness, Luke bowed lightly showing sincere gratitude. Now then Aurora, let's start the third and last game. He moved his rightest pawn two steps forward while smiling charmingly, as the game went the pieces decreased from each sideboard. Sweat started falling both from the crown prince and the people around the table except Aurora. The room atmosphere felt warm and tight, due to that. Ryu got up and opened the window a little making the room gain a small breeze to recycle the air. Mark having analyzed for quite a while starts going into deep thinking. This girl is incredible she hasn't sweated a bit, 
doesn't look nervous, and takes no time at all to play whenever her turn comes up pressuring the prince with each play. The moment the crown prince moves a piece, she's already moving hers, and despite playing as second, she was able to gain the initiative and even give quite a tough time. Her moves are a lot sharper, and I haven't noticed a single mistake. Just what kind of brain did the goddess Arya bless her with? After a long time passing, the crown prince who never resigned was checkmated by a big marge of seven pieces. For the first time since the prince was born, he applauded someone's else talent as the clapping would usually go to his own achievements. The men around the table followed the prince, especially Luke who was proudly clapping with a lot of strength while smiling at his daughter super excited and happy, relieving himself of the possibility of losing his daughter. Ryu who could no longer help his curiosity stopped clapping and opened the folded paper, unfolding it and placing it between him and the crown prince. In it was written three sentences, lose the first game as the black to entice the prince to go forward with this offer, win the second game as the white by a very small margin to make him believe he could win the third game, win the third game flawlessly to show your brightness. This is unexpected. The prince laughed awkwardly while placing his hand on the top of the head, followed by Ryu who couldn't believe what had transpired in this room. He then pushed the paper to show it to Mark. It seems like I was totally played by this little girl. I can't help my interest growing on her amazing mind, that and the fact of the sister knowing how it would end. I wonder what skills Aurora's sister could have. It's truly phenomenal. These two will surely contribute to the kingdom in the future. The prince then made a motion for the butlers and maids and Ryu's subordinate who had come along with Luke to leave the room. Leaving himself, the old man, the head of the Blue Rose family, Luke, and Aurora in the room then spoke. You're a special human with a great intellectual, however, I cannot trust in you with the kingdom's army, however, I have written that letter for you to be able to enter any place of this kingdom it'll allow you to further deepen your knowledge be it in the magic institute, the battle academia, the church, or even the guild as a higher ranked, it's also written that you may even join our strategy meetings from this day onwards, what do you say? He asked her curiously while clenching the hands onto one another. She replied coldly showing a bitter and sorrowful expression to those around marking them further, as she hadn't made many expressions through the whole afternoon by saying. I'll refuse all of them as that was not what we betted on, and I'll return home and spend my days doing quests at the Adventurers Guild that I and sister are already part of. Girl it is the crown prince you're talking to, Ryu shouted remembering Aurora of her place. The daughter then looks sadly at Luke and says with an ironic tone, it seems like in the end, your words did not reflect the rightful truth father. She gets up from her chair and starts walking towards the exit. Hold it. I forbid you from leaving. Ryu shouted as he was starting to heat up from anger due to the earlier disrespect. She who was already with the back to him turned to Ryu, and then he felt overwhelmed by a glare, shaking everyone around her with an unknown skill to them. The killing pressure won. The guards from both doors entered and the aura ceased instantly the moment she heard it. Was that my imagination? Rudolf asked while looking at the guards on the other side then looking at a little girl with an innocent expression standing between both doors while looking at Ryu. The man regaining his composure stated, the crime to use magic in the presence of a member of the royal family is death, he said with a menacing tone, to what Aurora replied by saying, I did not use magic, I do not have an element, after all. That was my life force for almost dying every day for five years, some people refer to it as life force manifestation. The guards then said that they didn't feel any type of magic it was more like an aura similar to the head of the royal guards that Sylvia uses, but sort of more intense which didn't make sense as she's just a kid. I just wished to lead this kingdom towards a better path as at any given time the dragon up the north can drop by and destroy us. The demons can come through the sea or the mountains, the south factions can come and conquer us. The sane test declared that humans will perish in the future. But seeing as negotiations didn't work I'll do what I can alongside Iris. I believe that is not a problem right your highness crown prince Julius Lumen. 
She smiled kindly with her most adorable childish expression while bowing in the most educated way swaying the different guards from both sides into taking her lightly. Now I want you to work for me even more, the crown prince thought excitedly as his hands were still trembling from the earlier pressure, releasing him of any doubts as there was truly something unique to the girl. I command you to join the army in three years by the time you're eleven as a tactician general under my orders unless your talent allows it to be earlier, he said mentally unfazed by everything that happened. That's as much time as I'll still need to get the whole army under my command. Aurora stared at the prince's A's and smiled lightly. Then he continued speaking, I am one who will use both nobles and peasants by their talent, and it'd be a waste to have you murdered in this room since you didn't break any laws. You will however learn discipline and the arts of war our kingdom has mastered through generations with the old man, the best teacher in the kingdom. Upon hearing that Mark bows his head while smiling. You will further learn the innovated principles by the head of the Blue Rose family Lord Ryu. Upon hearing that Ryu bows in accordance knowing fully well that this is what would have happened from the outcome of the chess games. With the 60% of the army I own together with Lord Ryu, I will allow you to show us your resolve and knowledge. I do not intend on making you the acting general based on a chess game alone if you prove yourself and exceed the three of us in the art of war the same way you beat me today in chess. He regained his breath and then spoke, if you do that then you will have that right leaving myself as the only person in the kingdom that you'll pay declarations to. This is my final offer and these are my conditions, do they sound fair Luke? Yes your highness, but I'll leave it to my daughter to decide, even if she's young, I believe in both of them. To the point of allowing them to choose the life Aurora wants to have, Luke smiles at his daughter nervously as he didn't expect the outcome to have such an impact making him realize clearly that there was no irony on her words during the trip here. What do you say Aurora? I wish to inquire on some things and propose some conditions of my own for it to be a, she makes a brief pause and then says, a truly fair deal. This girl truly is taking the crown prince lightly, but she's a peasant and a kid, so she has yet to learn her place in this world, Ryu thought calmly as his anger dissipated along with the prince's decision some moments ago. Julius placed his elbows on the table and put his head to rest on top of the hands and spoke, come and sit again, let us discuss such details, guards you can wait outside, everything is clearly fine, the guards moved out and closed the doors once again without saying anything. Then Aurora sat down and started speaking. First I appreciate your conditions, however, I do not care about the teachings of these two men as I can beat them both if we ever would war against one another with armies of similar sizes. Most likely half would be enough to handle either of them. Mark started laughing lightly then said, that may be very well true, but I'd still like to stay in my role as an advisor. He looked seriously at her. That is fine as long as you ultimately follow my decisions no matter how weird they may sound. If his highness doesn't complain this old man won't either. Aurora's cold gaze strikes Ryu who speaks as the attention of the other men also falls on him. This lord promises to help you as long as achievements are earned in wars to come. The gaze then returned to the crown prince and she spoke. Secondly, I will not sit back, I'll expand the Lumen territory southwards. I believe that's where the Saintess premonition has fallen from. That's correct, the Goblin King will arrive in a few years, Ryu added wondering how she wants to expand through the dense forests on the south, a natural territory to the beasts. If this truly happened it would make our kingdom richer, especially with the woods and mines further south, Crown Prince thought as he nodded in agreement. Thirdly, I'll reform the arts of war used by this kingdom for that reason I'll teach them to both advisors, Mark and Ryu, who will assist me transmit them to the armies. I'll teach them a poorer version of the real thing just in case they betray us in the future, she thought to herself while calculating far, far away in the future. So far so good, the crown prince replied seriously wondering what else would come out of her mouth.
Fourthly I want to make sure the church will not take control of this country while I'm out of the kingdom due to the fanatics, and as such I want the saintess to be part of the army along with their elites. With this, they won't move lightly in the shadows and the fanatics will fill the crown prince pockets every time there's an expedition, not only the church ones. A smile surged in the crown prince's face as he didn't expect such a request. This girl is making my life harder, however, the prophets aren't small. He once again nods in agreement knowing that the alliance Julius shares with them isn't small. Fifthly in case the crown prince is not able to gain control of the entirety of the army as he is not yet king, every faction will give a big percentage of their best troops for every expedition for the same reason as the fourth. Yes, in less than three years I believe I'll have the power necessary to have at least 80% if not 100% of the total army. Sixthly I'll be teaching both advisors from my home so they should get a temporary house in the village as I still have to. She looked down thinking and then looked at the crown prince, and continued speaking, pay declarations to my sister. This girl sure is straightforward using my own words implying that there's someone she sees close to my level, such arrogance reminds me of Zylf since he's pretty eccentric too. I have a counter offer which is that your sister can easily come to the capital to study if she'd like, Iris would have all her living expenses paid for. Ryu starts writing a letter similar to the one the prince did towards Aurora. I'll leave the negotiations between the two of you in that regard even though, I believe she wants to continue her work in the Adventurers Guild so I wouldn't waste my time. Nonetheless, I'll give her a recommendation letter, he extends the paper to the prince who seals with his emblem and then places it on top of the other one pushing both to her. One way or another, like this, both of you can have access to more things than the normal tournament recommendation, but we'll still want at least one of you to participate in it, and since you don't have an element, and normal mana might not be enough, I've already registered Iris to partake in the tournament in two years, Luke said as it was a surprise he was saving for the future. Even better this will give some merit and face to the crown prince, especially if Iris manages to rank in the top 10. Since you're both twins we can say that you were the one who got in such ranking of the tournament Aurora increasing the respect and morale of the troops. Since you're a rare case of not having an element, speaking of which can you even use mana? Yes, a bit, she makes a soft light appear in her hand to not cause trouble for herself. Very well, in that case. Do ask that of your sister and on our side, we'll make it so that she's introduced with your name. That should be fine since she enjoys fighting it would be a good experience for her. Seventhly I wish to have access to all the documents inside the church and know the true reasons as to why they exile people with disgraceful classes since I seek to repair this issue and use both fame and disgrace classes in the army making it stronger. This one is to see how I can help Pyrus and perhaps even myself. That one will shift unnecessary attention to you and your sister which will be dangerous, both could even die, Mark advised with a low cautious tone. What's so wrong about such classes? Aurora asks making a startled expression as she doesn't understand how they could pose such a notable menace. Personally have read some of their books, however, I had the backing of the king back in the time, and it was his highness personal request and apparently those classes come with troublesome abilities aggregated to them. How so? Since if they are troublesome as long as they are used rightfully it could bring a great change during wars. Aurora said full of conviction to her startling the men around who got used to the expressionless side of her. For example the class Berserker makes the person go insane the more they use their skills, and their strength increases exponentially. We've had to kill someone in the past due to killing random people for becoming fully crazy. It took a hero and some other strong people to do it, Ryu adds calmly to Mark's words. In a low tone, Ryu added information to the conversation taking the lead of the conversation on the explanation side, another example and this is classified information is the church saintess sister who was exiled for having her skill cursed and having the disgrace class which which class like Iris? Her skill was cursed which one? The saintess has a skill named Oracle it is a blessed skill that was inherited by her mother, and that skill is said to have been given by the goddess Arya. Her sister received the same skill but cursed grade so her visions are completely different than the saintess, 
and they come in riddles, and there's a skill that she's unlocked that is extremely powerful and dangerous. When she was exiled she used it to kill a great number of priests who took her out of the kingdom as revenge, she has been gone ever since. We wanted to find more about her so that she could ally to the crown prince as he judges by character. But our scouts couldn't find her. Due to all those reasons she was exiled from our country by the church and is living somewhere in the southern territory of the monsters if she's still alive. She too has green eyes and green hair like the saintess, but she's the younger one. What's her name? We don't say a witch's name. It is known that one can be cursed though we don't know if it's true. Pretty sure it isn't. Even in my past world the strongest twitches couldn't curse random people they didn't know from knowing their name alone. Is there a chance she'd pose a threat to any expedition I'd lead? Don't think so. In the end, even if the same test tags along with, they're not on bad terms with one another, just the church with her. Isn't the same test part of the church though? After a long dialogue between Ryu and Aurora, to this specific question, the crown prince replies. It's a complicated thing since she's the closest person to the goddess and because of that they force her to be part of it. But she only cares about the goddess and the human survivability, not the religion that the church defends. She always tries to harmonize the humans and to pass an equality image between the citizens. I favor her work. In other words, there's a chance I can get to reason with her. Of course, that I'd need to show her enough achievements. In the end. They're giving me a chance to prove myself and will study my every move towards what I do to their army. If they don't like something they'll dismiss my services instantly. It's not like I'm not used to any of this. So it'll go well, just wonder if the soldiers will take my order seriously. How about the soldiers will they take orders from a little girl such as myself? Understanding the problem immediately the crown prince clarifies. After we see what you can do, we'll publicly appoint you as a general. If you pass all the tests meeting the conditions referred earlier, then we'll give you the royal crest emblem that will make every human in the kingdom know his place in your presence. Instant high level of authority to a random peasant such as myself. What about the nobles will they accept it? I guess they wouldn't try to fight the royal family orders directly. Can I expect problems with the different noble families? There'll be many who will oppose the idea certainly. However, very few will attempt to do anything as to go against Julius the royal prince. After all, they want to do the exact opposite, be in his grace since he's the successor of the entire kingdom. On my side, everything is said then. Very well Aurora. The prince extends his hand for a handshake while saying. I look forward to figuring out and eventually using your talents. The little girl handshakes with her delicate small hand making the prince think about her, to think this is truly an eight year old girl. I can't wait to see her growth. Just what kind of woman will this child mature? These humans are as dumb as the ones I met in my past life. She smiled gently towards the men in front of her. Yellow divine light started shining down from the sky illuminating the entire capital. It seems the time has come for the heroes to arrive, the crown prince said in a light tone turning behind, towards the windows. As they all looked to the light coming from the window while raising from their seats, a shadow from them formed covering the small girl behind, who was wearing an evil expression of a demon about to ravage the world. Inside a church, the saintess is looking at a very large room with a big magic circle on the floor, on top of it. An unusual number of thirty summoned humans can be seen. Why are there this many humans? The Pope Klaus thought confused as the number in their old books never ceased more than ten. Is the upcoming threat going to be incredibly hard? Perhaps the Goblin Army isn't the only one we'll have to deal with. A green-haired woman spoke in front of these humans alongside Klaus and a few priests behind them, as a warm welcoming aura surrounded her calming their hearts. I am the saintess of this world. I welcome the O oh brave humans who shall save our Lumen kingdom from perishing. A black haired with black eyes boy speaks, yo, so you're the saintess? I have a message for you from the goddess Arya. Yes, that is me, what is the message O oh young soul? The goddess apologizes for not sending you some sort of celestial messages whatever that is, but in compensation, she summoned more helpers than usual. Understood, and so you gentlemen are? From the overall idea while I was talking with the goddess we were summoned from different worlds, with our memories of our past lives, 
so I know at least 19 of them. They're my university classmates, an advanced school of sorts. The group was divided into 20 and 10 as he said that. Those other 10 are people that the goddess picked from other worlds, different from my own. Also my name is Ken, I'm the class representative of this group. For now we are want all of you to place your hand in this stone book over here. I believe the goddess Ariel explained the procedure. Yes, that goddess was really beautiful with her black long hair and golden eyes. My name's Sophie, a pink haired girl with pink eyes spoke from a different group. It's a pleasure to meet you all. I'm Pope Klaus, and I'd like each of you to come put your hands in these stone books. They will give you the initial idea of your information and aptitudes. After a while, all their names, ages, elements, and classes were available inside the book. Seems like we got our hero, Ken, a priest said with a smile making the Pope excited. Upon hearing the name Ken steps forward. I was the chosen for the hero role, really? He questioned feeling an immense bliss from that thanking the goddess in his mind. Yes, like many past generations, a hero is usually one with black hair and eyes. As a hero, you get to choose which faction you get to join, though we obviously advise the church as it has been the home for most of the past heroes. I'll go to the faction that is willing to host the 19 members behind me. He said while pointing backward over his shoulder without looking behind ending up looking kind of cool. We can house that many, the Pope said without hesitation as he wanted the hero no matter what. I can tell you really want me the hero to be part of the church, if that's so then you better treat them good. In exchange I'll be sure to do a great job as a hero, he said with an arrogant tone, possessing the knowledge of hundreds of RPGs. You've been blessed with the unique light element, and the blessed skill holy smite capable of destroying any race except the humans and animals. The priest added explaining how special the class was. That sounds like a great skill, from the conversation we had with the goddess I expected less, but this is a good start. The priest upon checking a few more pages says, there seems to be another hero, your eminence. Another one? He asked confused as not many receive the hero class, and two at the same time had never happened before. Apparently it's the pink haired girl Sophie. What other factions are there? Sophie who felt her group ignored asked wanting to pick someone other than this ridiculous pope, however, with a kind smile he replied. There exists the royal family faction and the eight rose colored noble families, who each represent their own power with their extensive territories in the kingdom. They sound pretty amazing too, but I'll stick to this Pope, Ken replied as the goddess told him the saintess had incredible powers without specifying what exactly. Very well, priests take them to their rooms and start teaching them about this world once they feel ready. A group of priests started leading the twenty college students out. I'd like the royal family, Sophie said then she looked behind and asked. How about you eight whom I don't know? They started thinking and ended up going along with her, as they didn't know each other except for one guy, who knew Sophie extremely well. Very good, the Saintess will now take the ten of you to meet His Highness the King, whose fate may or may not be further split as the royal family usually only takes the hero. Your Eminence there seems to be another unique class called Sage, however, such is unknown not even listed in the records of the church. Sophie, who already expected that looked at Romeo, the guy furthest in the back who was smiling, as in their past world they were also the hero and sage. A sage? The Pope questioned confused as he never heard of such a job. Romeo stepped side to side to Sophie and spoke. I'm Romeo and it is a class from my and Sophie's past world. It's focused on knowledge and any type of healing and support skills. Upon hearing that Sophie nodded in agreement. Thanks to the versatility of this class we were once able to seal the strongest monster that ever lived in that world, inside the cursed mirror for all the eternity, even as we have already died over there for who knows how long, she'll still be there asleep till the end of times, unlike the rest of the summoned our souls were picked from what the goddess called the void. That sounds tremendously useful. You could even seal one of the demon lords or even the king. The Pope declared thirsty to get his hands on such a class. That is so. However, I'll go wherever Sophie decides to go. Thus we'll take the path to the royal family which I'm sure they'll accept us both, 
and find a home for the other eight summoned people who each will be useful in some way surely, as the goddess said unique classes aren't everything in this world, so I take it that being a hero, won't be as great as it used to be. Seems like you messed up Klaus, Saintess laughed happily in her mind and then said, please, do follow me. I'll guide the ten of you to the royal family, to the castle close by, damn it. I should have treated them better, but it's not a gigantic loss I still managed to get a willing hero and nineteen summoned humans. These types of humans grow faster than a normal one and usually come with better blessings of the goddess Arya. I'll focus our resources on them as our army has grown big enough for now. An hour later the saintess arrives at a long living room where the king, the prince, Ryu, Mark, Luke, and Aurora are sitting at a long table. Welcome Saintess, the king said while getting up with a big smile on his face. Thank you, your highness, she bows slightly out of respect. So this is the Saintess of the kingdom, and these are the summoned people they're a lot more grown up than Iris. Wait, that face with pink hair and pink eyes that's the hero from my world? That guy the sage? Why are they here? Did the goddess tell them about me? Why are they in a younger version? What's happening here? No, wait, calm down, the system the one who sealed me, so there's a chance that they think I'm still sealed in the past world, and the goddess should know that we want to help the humans in case she noticed us. Everything should be fine. Calm down Aurora, calm down. The same won't happen again. If it does Iris can help me. Everything is fine. You won't spend 10,000 years again sealed in a dimension. A different Aurora, spoke to her. I want to kill them. I want to destroy them. I want to break them. I want to torture them. I want to hurt them. I want to harm them. Ah, yes, I truly do want that as well but soon we'll kill them, soon we'll destroy them, soon we'll break them, soon we'll torture them, soon we'll hurt them, soon we'll harm them. Yes that is right, but now is not the time, that's right Aurora the time hasn't come yet for us to claw at their throats and engulf them in their own blood. Soon very soon I'll make them suffer the same way they made me suffer. Yes, we must be patient Aurora for the awakening of our master Iris hasn't happened yet. We must wait for the cursed class to take full effect on her personality. Only then will we become truly strong once more Aurora. Stronger than we used to be. No Aurora? Much stronger than that. Much more powerful. For the day our master awakens. For that day will cause more chaos than the god of chaos himself. Yes. Now shut up I need to concentrate. Mad laughter echoed in her brain as it got lower and lower vanishing into the corners of the mind. The saintess was looking confused at Aurora without taking her eyes off her and then she spoke. Who's that girl? You've heard of Luke the healer right? It's his daughter, she's the soon to be general of my army, Aurora. Aurora, Romeo and Sophie said in unison while looking at the girl. Aurora looked at them innocently and confused, then she got up and bowed saying, It is a pleasure to meet you, Saintess, I've heard a lot from you and all were good things. I look forward to the day we'll work together to save this kingdom. Likewise, young soul. It is my pleasure if I can help our goddess Arya bring complete salvation to the human race. She bowed slightly while smiling out of respect for such courtesy and good manners. Anything wrong Romeo, Sophie? Saintess asked them as they were being unpolite. No, I'm sorry we confused her for someone else, this one looks completely different. Just so you two know, the last summoned was close to 100 years ago. So it is impossible that anyone you know in a past life will still be alive in this world, most humans don't even live that long. They breathe deeply and say, sorry we understand. The king then spoke, I heard an unusual amount of summoned humans were brought by the almighty goddess Arya this time around, is that true saintess? Yes, your highness about thirty. One of the heroes took the church side along with nineteen of his friends, and these are the leftover ten along with that rude but cute boy Romeo Sage, and this rude but cute girl Sophia Hero. They bow their heads apologizing further. It's alright, you two are still young and just came from a different place so rise, and tell me of your wishes. Romeo took the initiative and started talking. We'd like to remain together as we were the hero and the sage of a past world together. We both have a unique class that complete each other very well. 
the sage class being a supportive class with healing skills, can be considered a class based on knowledge. Then Sophie spoke. We do not know how the other eight can help, but please do take them into good factions, so that they too have an opportunity to grow stronger. After all, the goddess blessed everyone in a way to help the human race. The king laughed and then he said, Yes, now you two sound much better. We'll comply with your wishes as we do not force any summon to do anything against their own will. We do ask that in the least when the goblin king invades, that you will help us save the kingdom. The crown prince then spoke, I don't know how your old world was, but in this world, we're the weakest race, we're the smallest country with 10 million humans and in four years we'll be facing a war against a goblin king. Your highness if I may speak? Yes, of course. Present yourself while at it. My name is Kana, warrior class, 20 years old. And in my old world a goblin king would be around level 30, and very weak. I've even killed one alone along with a big horde. I had a different class than I have now and was level 80, the max level was 100. Greetings Kana. I'm the crown prince Julius, he smiled cutely making her blush. We believe the goblin king alone to be above level 100. As my father mentioned, in this world, we are the weakest. An average human is level 20 and 10 million. We consist of around 10% of the world's population, at least that's what has been estimated, but we're not entirely sure, as exploring could lead to death. All the summoned felt nervous upon hearing that as some of them had a great experience in past lives dealing with monsters and other things. We've been guided by the goddess Arya and other summoned heroes who came before you in past generations. We're also very well situated on the map with the sea to the west, mountains to the east and an impossible to pass through the territory on the north where a legendary red dragon lives. For now we'll let all of you rest and be taught about our world. We'll have different teachers from different noble families. Every and each of you will surely find a suitable home in one of the prestigious eight rose noble families. Different butlers picked one and took them. The remaining three, Romeo, Sophie and the saintess were invited to sit at the long table. Before we resume the discussion with the summoned, Aurora please do take the recommendation and the letter I've written. You and your dad can go home. We'll meet soon. Ryu spoke with a serious tone. Thank you, Lord Ryu. We'll be waiting for news. Luke smiled at him. I hope to see you soon Crown Prince, Mark, Ryu, and saintess. Aurora smiled innocently while waving at them in a childish way giving a normal child impression to Romeo and Sophie. Have a good trip back home child, if the fate threaded by the goddess aligns our paths, then they will surely be crossed within time, the saintess replied with a charming smile. The crown prince smiled at Aurora with high expectations. If you'll excuse us, your highness, of course Luke the healer, have a good trip back home, the king said smiling gently. The butler showed them off to the wagon where they'd be able to rest during the trip back. Well then, Miss Hero as many will start calling you from this day onwards. I'd like to know your story and experience in your past world alongside your friend's side. In our case, we lived in a world with only humans, at least by the time we were born, and because of that, the conflicts, wars, and sacrifices were all between different human kingdoms, in our case the one we were born in, was made up of 70 million humans, seven times bigger than our kingdom, that's incredible, the king thought feeling like he lost by a large margin, all kingdoms sought to dominate one another in order to dominate the world, and due to that every war would consume millions of lives, there was a special tough country who almost dominated the world, but we ended up defeating them. I used mainly a long sword, we called it Great Sword, and Romeo would heal the wounds of our armies, and develop spells to help us in many ways. A two-man army basically, Romeo clarified putting it into the simplest words he could think of. The prince spoke, check your information with a personal information skill, just focus on that name with your mind, you can even say it out loud works the same. Oh. I can see a little screen with some information. Yes, me too. Sophie said happily as that didn't exist in their own world. The prince started a long explanation. Even with unique classes your stats should be very low. Every age that passes we get one stamina which equals to 10 health points. 
probably the highest stat you two have. Yes, they said in unison excited. From our information, a goblin gets one strength, two stamina, and minus one wisdom per age, so they get dumber but stronger than us by age alone, however, leveling up grants them five status points, so it's not a low amount as they can recover the wisdom of ten years with two levels, that's yes, exactly Sophie, and goblins aren't the strongest of foes, the demons are a lot worse, and the monsters can be equally bad as such. The knowledge you two already have in case this system may or may not have the same skills you two had, will allow you both to become stronger faster or not. Nonetheless, we'll all spend resources on all the summoned, so that they can become strong enough, but as you've guessed the chances that a lot of you and a lot of us will die is certain. From a world filled with wars that were eventually brought to peace, to a long rest. And now another world in war sounds like we have a long way again Romeo. At least this time around every human is in the same boat. The Saintess spoke cheering them up. Hopefully, knowing that there are factions this early on, already makes me think that not everyone will be friends with one another. That being one of the reasons I avoided the Pope. No offense Saintess but he felt creepy, Sophie said feeling rather disgusted. The Saintess laughed. He's a bit greedy in some ways, but he's not a bad person, at least, I haven't seen him do anything bad, otherwise, wouldn't have allowed him to take twenty summoned, young lady. Seems like you found someone you can vent to Saint S. The king laughed reminding himself of some of their private conversations. The king then looked at Julius next to him and asked, So son, what was that all about? A little girl who probably isn't even ten years old being the general of the Lumen Kingdom army. R. Let's just say she's the real deal, a prodigy with a sick body incapable of using magic and doing physical activity. That little girl was born with a sick body? She truly doesn't sound like a threat then, Romeo thought reminding himself of what it was like back then. If she can't fight in either way. What's the prodigy thing about her? The king asked confused frowning the eyebrows. The crown prince smiled. Her brain, she outclassed me in chess. Whoa, that's fantastic. The king started laughing as he above all others knew how smart Julius is. Your highness has chess in this world too? Romeo asked while smiling curiously. If I can beat this prince guy then surely I could replace that little girl. Yes we do. Do you also play? Yes. It was very famous in our old world along with some other games. I don't have much time left so which of you two is best? Sophie pointed at Romeo who is quite good, that would be me. They played three games and Romeo ended up losing all of them. Dang, I didn't expect to lose in chess as soon as I came into this world. Just how good are you prince? I used to be the best in the kingdom, but I've lost the title to that Aurora young girl. She beat me fair and square. She looked pretty cute. Too bad she's too young, Romeo said bluntly making the men at the table laugh. Sophie stepped on his feet feeling jealousy as they were a couple in a past life. Ouch. No need to do that. It's not like I'm going to betray you or anything Sophie. You better not otherwise my sword might slip onto your neck. She pouted cutely making everyone laugh. Also Prince Julius. We both have unique classes with unique light elements, so we'll be a bit stronger than most right? Yes, that is so. We're looking forward to your growth these four years before we get invaded by the Goblin King, the prince said while smiling reassuring Romeo who knew he needed to become strong. Two days later in the morning of the day, 29th of the sun season, Iris's family have reunited again in their house. They could be found on the sofa discussing everything that happened. Those were such long trips. Iris, I hope you won't have to go to the capital anytime soon. Aurora said feeling tired from it since the wagon ride took hours and hours. Dad and I got you a recommendation letter in case you want to study in the capital with everything paid. Whoa well, how did you? Rosalyn asked surprised opening her mouth wide as it was something usually only received to the top 10 winners of the annual tournament. I beat the prince in a chess game. Aurora laughed making the three of them smile at her. That's my sister. Even though I don't want to go to the capital, I have found a lot of things I want to do. I also rejected Alfred's swordsmanship offer. The greatest sword master skills? Didn't you want to become stronger, daughter? I taught you magic and your mother swordsmanship. But I figured you'd want to improve on both. Yes, 
but I was still happy I got to see Alicia again and mother got to meet her childhood friend Sylvia who is the mother of Alicia. Regarding getting stronger, I have some ideas what the head of the royal guards is. I didn't know that sister. Yes, I reply feeling excited, mother was very happy and surprised. I look at Rosalind who is still smiling happily about it, that's interesting, sister. Also apparently in the kingdom capital and possible around it, not sure how far that vast light reached but it appeared on the sky illuminating everything intensively, it was the goddess that sent the summoned heroes from possibly different worlds, about thirty of them. Just in the day you went to the capital, how lucky are you sister? I wanted to be there to meet them too. They were all older than us apparently around their twenties, I'm assuming with special classes, elements, skills, and who knows what other blessings. Yes, that's most likely a thing. Some of the past ones had them, daughter, even though only the hero that usually stands out, possibly due to some strong skill they might have. Exactly love, the book Tales of Artana. Mostly only have stories of past heroes. Even if the country could have been supported by the other ones too. In other words, now is when the humans will be the strongest. That's amazing mum, I gaze upon my sister and voice my excitement. We need to become stronger or they'll surpass us. Indeed. We also told them I couldn't use elemental magic and barely anything other than a bit of mana, that I was all brains with a weak body due to being sick early on. That's a very good way to keep unwanted attention from our family, mother added while thinking about the conversation as it flowed. By the way, I have a confession to make. I look at them with a serious expression. Due to my disgrace class I've been losing the senses, and something or someone has been taking over me from time to time like the time where I fought Alfred. With my eyes starting to shine, I take a breath regaining air and continue speaking. Due to that, my brainwash resistance skill has been growing a lot. But since I have four cursed skills they sometimes overwhelm my mind and I don't know what to do about it, with a few tears starting to flow I finish by saying, I don't want to become someone evil if I can help it. Luke and Aurora looked at each other as they remembered what they heard in the reunion about the church and disgraceful classes, then father's mouth opened, I think there's one thing we can try Iris, it'll help you lot, a solution? I question while mother wipes my tears embracing me in her arms, you have two ways of going at it. You either resist till your skill max is nullifying completely the skill's effects, or we pay a blacksmith to make you equipment with that property which could be very expensive. That's pretty possible but you'd need soul stones from monsters that aren't affected by brainwashing, mother added with her voice right next to my ear. Such as? I look at them filled with curiosity. Aurora has faced some already didn't she? You mean the skeleton's mother? Yes, they're dangerous, but they work also undead zombies, and ghosts. Go deliver the quest Aurora. I'll do some alchemy before meeting you at the West Forest. I have a lot of herbs I haven't used, and Rowan will drop by soon to come to gather things. All right, we can try to get some of them in the ruins. Ah, and water the fields before you leave please. Sure, meet you there. I'll try to get a new quest towards the West Forest. Sounds perfect, thank you, sister. I'll tag along with you need to meet Vicent. I'll lend you a hand with the fields. Thank you father, they leave together. And I take a look at mother who is smiling while watching Luke and Aurora who seem to have gotten closer since the last time we saw them. After they leave I ask mom something, mother is it alright if I eat soul stones? I have a gigantic amount of soul, appraisal said it should work fine. Even if it was fine, I don't know how that could help you, dear. I was thinking that if I destroy a skeleton and then eat the soul stone, I would naturally have more brainwash resistance. I think it is too risky. Imagine that your soul loses to the souls you ate and you become a skeleton, even if you remain with your personality, the body would be forever gone unless you ate human soul stones as well. And even then things might not work the way we want it to. It's hard to find a way to counter the effects of the skills. I let out a sigh rubbing my face on my mother's breasts. That's true, so you need to make sure that the way you chose to go isn't a bad one or it could become worse or grant more than one problem. 
Plus the church would either dispatch a team to destroy you if they knew or an adventurer or a soldier would kill you on sight. Unless I ate one human soul stone and one skeleton at a time, if I did that would it work? Appraise such information. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. The chance that the race would change would be minimal but not zero. Obtaining statuses and traits from both races, equipment is safer. Honestly speaking daughter I believe you should let it naturally sink in, so that you get your skills strong enough to counter all the effects, and still use this chance to cautiously level up by defeating some skeletons. I understand mother, my words end with a smile which mom corresponds in the same way, and then her lips open and words come out. Baby. Don't forget it is the ruins, do be cautious about it monsters there are extremely numerous. So if you do go there with Aurora make sure you always stay on guard. Yes, mother, my now dried face is filled with excitement, I'll sharpen my sword, it should still help you on one last adventure while you do alchemy. Thank you. After that, I'll have to go teach the kids some swordsmanship. They got away with a one day break so their bodies should be able to handle extra work today. Rosalind smiled evilly in a mature charming way making me smile. Moments later I place a bag of 30 herbs that I want to give Rowan to sell near the exit of my room. Well then, it's time to start, Dark Alchemy. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Dark Alchemy, Weakness Potion, it'll weaken the consumer losing statuses. Sleep Potion. It'll induce the consumer into a deep sleep. Love Potion, the first person the target sees after consuming the potion will become in love with. Paralysis Potion, it'll slowly paralyze their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Poison Potion, it'll slowly poison their body can be countered by an antidote or a skill that can lead to death. Corruption Potion, person's body starts becoming purple leading them to death can be countered by an antidote or a skill. Antidote Potion, depending on the ingredients different antidotes can be produced. Paralysis Potion, Antidote Potion, two little screens appear with the necessary description. Paralysis, herbs required, one X heartbreak herb, antidote. Herbs required, one X asparagus herb, craft 20 of each please. Notice, 1700 mana and 300 health have been deducted. Potions will be ready in 4000 seconds. System. The title Alchemist series has been received. A bit more than one hour goes by and another voice pops into my mind. System. The title Potion failed has been received. System. The title Potion succeeded has been received. Seems like I managed 11 of paralysis and 9 antidotes out of the 40 I made. The rate is not the best, but it's getting somewhere. It would be nice to have a box of some sort to place all these potions. I start hearing knocks on the door that leads outside of the house. The sound of it opening along with the voice of my mother saying good morning to Rowan, tell him to enter my room please. I shout hoping she hears it as well as I did with them. My room door opens and Rowan sees me sitting on the floor with 20 potions in front of me and starts laughing. I've brought these wooden boxes for your future potions. This way you can stack them on top of each other. 20 potions, it seems like the little miss been working hard around 4 potions a day since we last met. Very good, I'll be able to earn more money in the future, and so will she. Here's a bag of the sales of the last items you gave me about 2500 copper. Upon receiving it a voice pops out in my mind. System. The title money maker has been received. System. The title merchant series has been received. So many alchemy and merchant titles. I think out loud surprising the man next to me then making him laugh. If you'd like to master the merchant series one day, I suggest to sell and buy things from a wagon, to trade items, and to auction some as well. Thank you very much, that saves time figuring them out. I smile kindly at him while storing the potions in boxes, once I finish filling one of the boxes I lift it and give it to him then place it inside a magic bag. Like this, it counts as one item since they're all stacked, he smirks showing off his knowledge on the magic bag. Whoa, that's just like cheating, we laugh at my words, actually I have an idea, he takes out two items from the magic bag and gives me one. Miss Iris I'd like to trade my item for yours, he extends his hand as I extend my hand trading it with him. System. 
the title trading has been received, did it work? He questions me raising an eyebrow, with a curious expression. Yes, thank you. Can we do it some more time so I can max it? Yes, of course. After some time of trading and doing fake sales and purchases with potions and herbs he leaves and I check status. System. The title herbs sold has been received. System. The title herbs bought has been received. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 7. Experience 0 700 fame, 220, disgrace, 7510 class, witch, rank 2, experience 100 four thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 400 660, mana, 942,500 status points colon 0 strength, 183, stamina, 66, Agility, 85, Dexterity, 107, Intelligence, 158 plus 10, Wisdom, 242 plus 8 Attack, 0, Magic Attack colon 0, Defense colon 0, Magic Defense, 0 Soul, 3690 Titles, Reincarnated plus S, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Healths, Beginner Readers, Purchases, Wisdom C, Reader Series B, Body Trainings, Animal Slayers, Intermediate Readers, Cooked Fishes, Preyed Upon F, Cheetah, S, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Element C, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class B, Monster Slayer E, Slime Slayer C, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper C, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered, Herbs Types is, Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Status Mastery D, Beast Slayer D, Horned Rabbit Slayer E, Potion Administer Def, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer F, Notices. God Series F, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Solds, Herbs Boughts, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero Actives, Status Level 51 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 7 F, Mana Wave Level 2 F, I Spine Level 6 F, Ice Sword Level 1 F, Icicle Level 4 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 21 E, Sword Mastery Level 12 F, Mana Control Level 22 E, Ice Control Level 20 E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 8 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 10 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 25 E, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 42, Magic Analysis Level 40, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 1, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 30, Witchcraft Level 20, Curses Mastery Level 4, Rituals Mastery Level 4, Magic Control Level 20, Magic Knowledge Level 10. Ice Mastery Level 4 Unique Appraisal Level 42 Cursed Unidentified Skill Rare Element Ice Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank F 72 100 I have so many series to complete this will take a while, but the faster the better as they give the best amount of statuses. My mana has gone up considerably from all these new titles. My Dark Alchemy and Mastery have gone up a lot. It seems like mass production sure pays off, the same goes for magic analysis which I spammed like 80 times. My brainwash resistance has gone up to 25. My class passives are fighting with it. I guess I should let it reach level 100 so I have more resistance against it. Hopefully, that's the max level for it. It wouldn't be bad if it evolved at some point. If four skills get maxed against brainwash resistance alone, I have the feeling it wouldn't be enough to go against them. I sure picked quite the class, 
I walk close to the mirror and touch it softly while looking at my reflection. I just hope I'll never lose myself. I stop talking to myself and head to the West Forest to meet Aurora. Another hour goes by and I find my sister sitting near a tree at the ruins entrance. At one of the church rooms where one group of the university students resides. What do you think of everything so far Yano? Of the game systems that we had, the skills and all that. It seems to be your typical fantasy game where you level up, and get skills kind of world Iko. A tall and very fat boy after hearing both replies. It certainly does feel like one, just using this information skill called personal data, sounds terribly like a game. The goddess Arya did warn us that if we're not careful we'll lose our lives in this world, after all. It's not a game. Gora is right we should be careful in everything we do. I don't want any of you to die before me. Ken added high and mighty placing his arm around Gora. You're sure lucky you get to be the hero class representative. So for you. It's easy to say. It was by random chance on Oka. He shrugged lifting the shoulders as the goddess area is the one who chooses. I honestly don't believe that Ken. I think the goddess did it on purpose as you're the one with the blackest hair and eyes out of all of us, and she seemed to dig that. I agree with Tsubame, Ong Oka said feeling that the worst of them got the best class. Same, the goddess said us summoned may have a very small chance of evolving our air classes to unique grades, Aiko added upon feeling jealous of him as her class wasn't anything amazing. And she stuck to it while having her life on the line. For sure. Yano shouted angrily as she's equally bad like Ken in terms of personality. Now, now, don't bully Ken. It's not like it's his fault, if anything the goddess just fell for him, can't be helped. Shut up fatty. This is preferential treatment. We are supposed to be equals, I demand a hero class too. No need to be rude to Gora, Yano. Everyone here is on the same ship it's not just you girls, plus you can just become stronger and make your class evolve, shouldn't be that hard. That's right Kaito, Ken replied as he took a chance to support the boys as Gora defended him. Thank you for defending me Kaito, Gora said with a sad face used to being bullied by his classmates, but mostly the girls. It'll be a good chance for you to lose weight facing monsters, you'll be in shape in no time Gora. So don't feel bad, Kaito replied with a big smile while patting his wide back from the right side as Ken was on his left one. I wonder about that seeing as he got the class master chef. I feel like he'll become even fatter. Yano persists on bullying, as her together with other classmates used to do it to a few boys in their class, especially Yano who is a very beautiful and fit girl that hates imperfection and everything which in her view is ugly, she was even a very popular streamer who used beauty to entice the viewers, despite not being the best gamer ever. Aiko and Yano laughed at Gora who became even sadder, depressed, and angrier inside. Now now. Bullying is not good, Ongoka said shyly not enjoying her attitude, even though she too is one of Yano's targets. So what's the plan, Ken? Kaito asked curiously thinking that if someone had a plan that young man would be the one. Despite everything he would always organize things for the class and keep everything in perfect order. From my talk with the Pope Klaus and the Saintess, we're to learn everything we can during our classes with the priests. And then we'll be sent in different parties of four to different churches across the kingdom to fight monsters, and do quests via the Adventurers Guild. In other words, we'll be used as propaganda to the church as we become stronger, a boy with glasses who was silently thinking said. Yes Kuro, I believe that's one way to see things, Ken replied to him promptly as they usually do works together, so they already have some familiarity. We're all above 18 so we can all be considered adults, especially in this world where the age to be adult is 15, nobles seem to marry at 16. They sure marry young Ken. Ong Oka replied shyly while blushing never having a couple before, due to how timid she always is. This type of society didn't exist back then in our world, so we must adapt to them. It'll make things easier for us. It's actually annoying how you get to be the class representative even in this world Ken, Aiko said with a cold tone, feeling like once again he's in charge of everything, such a cursed fate, accept and move on otherwise I'll leave you behind, Ken replied coldly without giving a shit since he's the hero now, 
Yano clicked her tongue and went quiet while Iko rolled her eyes while crossing her arms as she looked to the side frowning. I don't know how they'll split the parties up, but I don't know when I'll see any of you again, and that's if any of you won't die before that happens. So good luck to you all. You too can. Kaito took a step forward and bump fisted him as they'd always do back in the old world. On the other side, the leftover ten summoned were dispatched through the eight colored rose families, except Sophie and Romeo who stayed with the royal family. Iris perspective present. Sorry for the wait Aurora, the potions took a while to make. No problem. I forgot the Sefi herbs at home from the last quest, so you can gather some more before we deliver the quest. All right, sounds good. I don't have a use for them as I can't make perfume with them. And I also used a lot of mana. I've reached 2,500 of it too. That's almost double my mana at this point. A surprised expression filled my sister's face along with a very natural tone. I smile at her and then I spend a while gathering all kinds of herbs into one of the bags I always bring with me. Eventually an hour later, notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Seems like you've been having fun Aurora. Managed to kill five of these things. They're pretty annoying with their magic. I'm surprised you killed ten of them. I got lucky they were very close to one another. I stare at my sister while smiling noticing the five soul stones in her hands. I'm going to try it. Iris, she stares at the shiny things with curiosity. I know. I can tell by the necessity you have in your eyes to become stronger. After all, plus appraisal said in your case it's fine so go for it. As Aurora attempted to eat one she received a familiar voice that resounded in her mind. Notice, only in a weapon form can one consume the soul stones. She transformed into a grimo eye and then something weird happened. The grimo eye that initially looked like a normal large black book, opened and the five soul stones were sucked inside, the book then closed, and she transformed back into a human. Some messages then started hitting her mind. Notice, ranked F soul stones were successfully converted into 250 soul power which can be used to awaken into the next phase. Notice, the acquisition of the skills Fireball and Windball have been rejected due to not matching the Grimo Ire element or its masters thus have been discarded. Seems like I can get skills in the future usable for either of us. Convert the soul power to awaken into the next phase, Aurora thought as she couldn't be more excited to become stronger like she used to be. Aurora in front of me suddenly transforms into a grimoire, and a dark aura surrounds her surprising me. Hum? What's happening? Why is there such an ominous aura around Aurora? Is my sister okay? It then opens and a white page with a few words appear in black. What's this? I approach it and read it. Do you the master of the grimoire? wish to change Aurora's true nature, true nature, what does it mean, as if answering me, more black words appeared and as I read them, I make a shocked expression as some of her past life events were written in it, what but why, I remember everything I've seen about her since the day I met my sister, I come to a conclusion after reflecting for a while, it doesn't matter, in the end, it's my sister, if I changed her, Aurora would stop being who she is, system, the title acknowledged has been received. System. An evil god is pleased by your answer. System. The title disgraceful has been received. System. A goddess disapproves of your actions. System. The title ignored has been received. System. A goddess has excluded you from her blessings. Ah, goddess? A goddess has? What is happening? I make a very confused expression. Black letters filled the page faster than I could read. And then on the next page the same happened, and then all the pages moved gaining characters at an unbelievable speed. What's happening? What the hell is that language even? Pretty sure I've never seen those characters they look so odd, almost like squares with different lines inside of them. When it reached the last page, it closed, and a title in light blue reminding me of my mana color appeared on the cover. Isn't that my mana from the time I contracted with her? It's turning into a name isn't it? I get closer to read it, pandemonium, I say softly and slowly appreciating the grimo eye title while touching the shining letters with my index finger, I wonder what's the meaning of that word, system, the god of chaos has further cursed Tyrus's class, system, 
rare witch class has evolved into unique class Babel witch. Notice, status has been influenced by the class, the list of obtainable skills has expanded, and mana has been recovered. My class evolved? Is that even possible? Just what is Babel? System, the goddess of order further disapproves of you and your class. System, the title forgotten has been received. System, Luna the goddess of order has forsaken you. Another god, the goddess did. She didn't like my class? It's not like it was my choice? I make a shocking expression not being able to do anything about it except worry. I'm just so confused at what's happening. That I don't even know what to do. A light shone in front of me and in its place. My reflection with blue eyes appeared. Finally, something normal happens in front of me that I'm able to understand. To some extent. I look at Aurora who takes a few steps closing our distance. She hugged me and then warm words reached for me. Thank you, Iris. You're welcome sister but for what? I pat her head as I hoped to regain the common sense I had before all this happened, but instead, even my sister seems to have changed. She whispered softly in my ear, for believing in me. Of course, you're my sister. I reply a bit confused, but I decide to let it go as I don't care anymore about this. At this point, I'm used to having a mysterious sister. I smile kindly focusing my full attention on her who seems to be alright after what happened. How's your mana Aurora? Mine was kind of recovered when I gained a class. Evolution I guess. Same here, to think I'd obtain the class of the tome I pursued in my past life. Tome? What's that? I tilt my head trying to figure out but my lack of knowledge gets the best of me. It's a large and heavy book Iris. Usually sought by scholars, one with the most legendary and chaotic stories. You were interested in a book of stories? That sounds unlike you. A sparkling smile appeared on her face. There is a lot you don't know about me my dear Iris. Aurora said with excited eyes and finished with a genuinely happy expression. Even though I didn't change her she does look different. What's so special about a book of stories? Ah, I don't get it. Let's have a look at status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 7. Experience 250 700 fame, 220, disgrace, 13510 unique class, Babel Witch, rank 2, experience 254 thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 400 660, mana, 952500 status points colon 0 strength, 183. Stamina, 66, Agility, 85, Dexterity, 107, Intelligence, 158 plus 10, Wisdom, 242 plus 8 Attack, 0, Magic Attack colon 0, Defense colon 0, Magic Defense, 0 Soul, 6690 Titles, Reincarnated plus S, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Healths, Beginner Readers, Purchases, Wisdom C, Reader Series B, Body Trainings, Animal Slayers, Intermediate Readers, Cooked Fishes, Preyed Upon F, Cheetah, S, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Element C, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class B, Monster Slayer E, Slime Slayer C, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper C, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered, Herbs Types is, Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Status Mastery D, Beast Slayer D, Horned Rabbit Slayer E, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer F, Noticeds, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Sold, Herbs Bought, Acknowledged, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, Forgotten, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, Zero, Actives, Status Level 51 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 7 F, 
Mana Wave Level 2 F, Ice Spine Level 6 F, Ice Sword Level 1 F, Icicle Level 4 F. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 10 F, Swordsmanship Level 21 E, Sword Mastery Level 12 F, Mana Control Level 22 E, Ice Control Level 20 E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 8 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 10 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 25 E. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank E, 2 200, Whoa, What's Wrong With My Disgrace Amount? My expression becomes a shocking one, raising my eyebrows. Just how disgraceful are you, Iris? Aurora started laughing making me feel bad. Apparently enough to make a goddess forsake me. Aurora stops laughing and asks me worriedly, The goddess Aria did? No. It was a goddess of order named Luna. It seems like the god of evil and the god of chaos teamed up to meddle with us. That's interesting which of the gods did mine? An evil one? Could have been the god of chaos as well which I suppose is evil too? Well even if they're both different, they both sound like bad gods, so I think you are right about that. It is a good thing if gods like us. Aurora said happily as the gods of her past world hated her. True. It seems like all my class skills increased a lot, even my ritual that I haven't tried yet. Snow falling? Aurora notices the name on the status screen in front of them, that sounds adorable. I haven't seen Snowfall in a very long time now that I think about it. Aurora navigates into her endless sea of memories. I figured that since I haven't seen snow yet, and my element is ice that it would make a good fit, plus it supposedly turns the place around me into my own territory which makes me very curious of what that means. That does sound interesting. I wonder what good will come out of having a territory of your own iris. I can't wait to try out. But we should try to kill some skeletons, now we need levels and I'll need an even bigger brainwash resistance since the grade of my class went up. It probably will make things more complicated for me, if I were to guess from the berserker story. That's true, Aurora placed the bag with the herb Zaris gathered near a tree hidden in a bush close to it, and then followed Iris into the ruin smiling happily about her own class. The epilogue of the second arc. After Iris received the forgotten title, all the statues of the goddess Luna around the entire world started bleeding from their eyes for ten days straight without stopping for a mere second. The different beast races screamed while others ran from them, some called for their elders, lords, and kings. Sacrifices were made by some races to calm the anger of the goddess. Some magical rituals were made by others as the crying with blood resembled a bad omen. Others fought each other to honor the goddess. Some danced and others sang till exhaustion. Many races did something unique to themselves. Unknown to the different races under the goddess Luna. What may have caused it? They started moving to find out what or who the problem could be while trying all sorts of things to find it out from items to skills. The world would soon be engulfed in pain, sadness, death, and ultimately in chaos. Ruins arc interlude. Each beast kingdom and monster territory have a portal secretly hidden deeply inside of it. One can only wonder what may unfold inside. From time to time beings come out from such places. This persisted for thousands of years. The beings that came out of such portals created their own camps that became bases which turned into kingdoms. The beasts are usually born from a sexual act, but that's not the only way. Since ancient and dark times when the system wasn't yet implemented, the first creatures appeared from these portals. The human race was created by the good goddess Aria, also known as the goddess of summons. The demon race was created by the evil god. The monsters and the portals were created by the god of chaos. 
The beasts and leftover races were created by the goddess of order Luna. Each god is doing its best to eliminate the other three gods except the god of chaos. He only wants to cause confusion, and wouldn't mind if the world got destroyed in the process. Due to the hate for goddess Luna, he ended up meddling with the balanced system she and the other two gods created. If there are good and bad, then orderly balanced system cannot exist. After all, what kind of fantasy world would this be? If there wasn't a little bit of chaos, who knows, what other wonders and tricks did the god of chaos pull to deceive the different opponents and the skills used by them, it'll be a problem inside these ruins Aris since you don't have the night vision skill. Yes I can't see a thing, but I'm hoping that persisting through this darkness will make me able to receive the skill, it happens when we do something unusual, but if I start detecting too many monsters we'll turn back and run away. Yes. Sorry for being in the way. Can't be helped you're lacking a skill, and sunlight doesn't reach this deep. One of the reasons people don't explore it. Yeah, it's too dangerous. They kept walking through the dark hall while holding hands as Aurora can see the path with her night vision skill. When they reach the first room a voice appears on Iris's mind. Notice, the skill night vision has been acquired. I got it Aurora but can only see like a meter far away. That'll be good practice for you then, I'll leave the two skeletons in front for you, I'll go for the ones further on the left, stick to mana coating they're weak to it. All right sister, I mana coated my mother's sword while fighting with reduced eyesight. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted, I see the sword approaching which I sidestep and strike a counter at the arm slicing it in half. They feel slow, Aurora said they were annoying. I suppose it has to do with my status being a little high that I get to outmaneuver them. I slash at the head cutting it in half without giving it much time to do anything other than accepting its end. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton, the experience truly is amazing. I take a step back outranging the attack from the other skeleton, how smart are these things anyway? I throw my sword at his head piercing it. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. You need help sister? I can see a little deeper but still not far enough to see her, the room is very vast. I hear a crushing sound and then a voice. Notice, 90 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Alright, we've cleared the first room, Iris, however. From my last time here if we advance two more we'll most likely be surrounded by all sides so we should stay in this one near the exit. In other words, we fight while protecting the exit. So we wait, let's collect their soul stones, the weapons are too old so don't think anyone would buy them. If this was a long time ago, we'd have a harder time. Some of the skeletons ate some soul stones on my last time here, so there's a chance that they'll be stronger than these and smarter. So watch out for the Tyrus, I'm detecting one from the middle for now. Upon hearing Aurora's words I head there and wait for it to come. Moments after, sister this thing looks different than a skeleton. She approaches and takes a look at it as it approaches us. Let me test it first Tyrus. She runs at it while mana coating her hands with a dark aura, and then she aims for the head but the monster ducks her hand attempting to bite her torso. I spined. I freeze his legs and he starts making loud noises, notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Aurora grabs the chance and uses darkness creating a big hole in the monster's head. The monster falls on the floor causing some noise. System, the title zombie slayer has been received, notice, 200 experience has been rewarded from a zombie, notice, Iris has leveled up to 8, a monster called zombie. I think mother mentioned it in our conversation, Aurora, for now, you can consume all the soul stones. If I do we won't be able to make you the equipment sister. In case a monster were to eat them while we fought others getting even stronger then I feel like we'd be in peril. So for that reason please do. Alright, I'll use turn them into soul power for now. Soul power? Yes, I'm not sure what it does but I can convert it into points awakening the next grade faster, that's what I did before since we were still missing 23. Oh, that makes it faster then, sure go for that, I'm detecting a few monsters coming from the right, 
must have been the screams of the zombie. Leave them to me while you consume those. She takes the soul stone from the zombie and joins it along with the skeleton ones, then transforms into Grimoire form and consumes all of them. Use status points into wisdom. Whenever I get more till I say otherwise automatically use them in wisdom. Notice. Affirmative. Points successfully spent. Status updated. Two skeletons and a zombie. Is that about? The moment I see it, I raise my sword by instinct barely stopping the incoming arrow which ends up grazing at my cheek. Notice. Ten health has been deducted. Uck. I move towards the wall forcing them to exit the hall into the room and get closer to me. As I run the zombie in front of me acts differently and rushes to me aggressively, while I feel the blood dripping from my face. Is there a chance these things are attracted to blood? Appraise the zombie. Notice. 350 mana has been deducted. Zombies are created by an extremely rare infectious disease. They can spread it to living beings through biting, creating more zombies or they can also be summoned by a being with a necromancer class. I spined. I freeze him on the ground while using him as a shield for the incoming arrows while mana coating my sword with 400 mana. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Mana wave. I slash horizontally so that they get sliced in half the only one who could avoid it was the zombie who is very fast but he's frozen to the floor. They share the same fate being destroyed by my skill. Notice, 200 experience has been rewarded from a zombie. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 300 experience has been rewarded from a zombie. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 9. Notice, points successfully spent, status updated. What? Was there a zombie hiding behind the skeletons? Leveling up has become a lot easier if we keep this up we'll be able to grow stronger in no time. He even gave a lot more experience than the first one. Could he have been hiding behind the skeletons on purpose using them as shields? These zombies are starting to sound very dangerous, especially from appraisal information. If they bite me I'll get infected and become one unless there's a skill resistance for it. That was insane Iris. Aurora speaks in my mind as she approaches finding the soul stones that fell on the floor. You are speaking in my mind? What's this? It's a skill I won after awakening it's called telepathy it only works with the contracted one. Since it is a contracted skill. That's very interesting, we can even share thoughts like this. I'll be able to know when your skills are brainwashing you, won't be able to do much about it, but I'll know. Can you take the soul stone of the zombie? It looks gross a rotten human body. Actually don't touch it, I'll learn a soul stone extraction skill, just in case that thing sickness spreads into us somehow. All right sister. A cautious tone through the mind is used by me, as it looks sicky and disgusting not wanting to place my hands in the middle of the decayed meat. After a few moments, let's test it out. Extraction. A light exuded from the body of the zombie and a soul stone came out being sucked into the open grimoire. That was amazing Aurora. She transformed back into a human. I'm getting 100 soul power for each of these stones, I got 50 from the ones outside the ruins, so I now have 900 soul power which if I convert will give me 90 points into my own evolution. Amazing, that's a lot faster than everything we've been doing before. Exactly, I'll save the skills from these monsters that I received once we leave this place we'll see what we can do with them. Sure. Now you made me curious at what skills you got. For now it doesn't really matter as I can't use them or do anything with them so don't worry too much about it. Also detecting two more monsters behind us and one in the middle tunnel. I'll go for the two behind. My night vision is better so I won't be surprised by arrows again. Alright. We both run in different ways. As I approach the skeletons I notice one of them shining. Is he the one who ate the soul stones? I feel quite the pressure from it, I'll start by mana coating my sword and see what the skeleton can do while using him as a shield from the one holding a bow further behind. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted, he looks at me approaching while charging mana with a sword making it shine beautifully in blue, and then our swords clash, and my sword breaks, 
making me receive a big hit in length but a shallow wound from my shoulder to the hip. Notice, 200 health has been deducted. I jump backward bleeding while placing one of my hands on top of my long cut by instinct, and then as he starts closing the distance, I spined, I scream while in pain successfully freezing him on the stone paved floor, possibly dealing a bit of damage to it. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. I walk to the exit losing health from the bleeding, Aurora if you can hear me run. Notice, 20 health has been deducted, as I'm walking an arrow hits my arm making my body shudder in further pain, and increasing the bleeding. Notice, 60 health has been deducted. Uck, it hurts so much. I'm losing a lot of blood. I do my best taking slow steps towards the exist as best as I can. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Iris I defeated mine how's your side? She approaches and sees the blood on the floor as I walk with a big wound towards the exit and an arrow on my arm. The skeleton charges more mana and breaks the ice with the sword subsequently chasing me once again. Through hearing the sounds of the impact and the loud steps of barefoot bone hitting the floor, I turn around momentarily ice binding him again successfully as he doesn't even bother to dodge it. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Aurora picks a sword from the floor and charges it with mana, sensing the mana pressure the skeleton charges his own and then their swords clash violently resulting in two swords breaking at the same time. Without a moment to waste Aurora uses her piercing darkness skill to destroy the skull completely by approaching her hand to the head blowing it into nothingness, while I'm hit by another arrow, this time on my shoulder making me fall on the cold stone floor, feeling rather fatigated from the blood loss. Notice, 100 health has been deducted. Notice. 400 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton, she rushes at the archer who's preparing another arrow, and by stretching her mana coated palm, does a clean cut in the skeleton skull splitting it in half killing him. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. She takes the soul stones in her hand and runs to me, helping me leave the ruins as her monster detector starts giving a lot of alerts, as we leave. A trail of blood from my wounds is left behind us. After 20 minutes of slow walking, we reach the forest and rest close to the tree with the herbs. While we walk sister removes the arrows carefully with all the care in the world through the use of the dark aura. I lose 200 health in total after the bleeding stopped thanks to the bleeding resistance skill stopping it in time. Aurora lays me near a tree and consumes the soul stones she carried with her. After looking around in case anybody could be hiding, with a weak voice, I ask, how much mana you have left? Upon hearing me, she sits next to me and shows me her status. Status, level, 9, experience 73900, class, pandemonium race, human, name, aurora, 8 years old health, 1000 one thousandths. Mana 200 1450 status points colon 0 stamina, 100, intelligence, 90 wisdom, 145, soul power, 1200 attack, 5, magic attack, 90 titles, etonyms, uncursed, soul bounds, contracted, notice, god series f, skill points, 4 actives, status level 40d, Darkness Barrier Level 7F, Piercing Darkness Level 13F, Mana Coat Level 8F, Dark Coat Level 9F, Mana Wave Level 1F, Dark Bind Level 12F, Extraction Level 5F, Passives, Mana Control Level 25E, Dark Control Level 19F, Monster Detection Level 40D, Beast Detection Level 10F, Night Vision Level 25E, Unique. Transformation level 13, Killing Intent level 5, Blessed slash Cursed, Mirror level 2, Unidentified, Unique Element, Dark, Cursed Soulbound Contracted Skills, Telepathy F, Consumed Skills, Infected Bite level 5, Brainwash Resistance level 4, Brainwash Resistance level 8, Mana Coat level 10, Mana Control level 7, Infected Bite level 10, Brainwash Resistance level 5, Brainwash Resistance Level 9, Mana Control Level 5, Long Slash Level 3, Human Detection Level 3, Human Detection Level 5. 
not much left as you can see, also those are the skills I've successfully consumed from the soul stones, I can't seem to do anything with them so they're just there for now. I should have done that differently, almost died in such a pathetic way. He completely overwhelmed my mana coated sword even breaking it, thanks to you pushing him. I was able to overwhelm the skeleton, even though both our swords broke, so maybe we were evenly matched, however. What matters is that at the end of the day we won, as long as we survive we'll become stronger, she sits next to me. You're right. My head falls on her shoulder and I fall asleep pretty fast resting for three hours. Iris, wake up, she shakes my body softly, in order to not cause me pain. I let out a moaning sound as I wake up, and then open my eyes remembering we're still in the woods. Trouble? I ask softly gazing slowly around us while some drool falls from my mouth which I clean with my clothing. No. But we should leave and go rest at home it'll be safer than here. You're right, status please. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 9, experience 73900 fame, 250, disgrace, 13560 unique class, Babel Witch, rank 2, experience 2874 thousandths race, human, name, iris. 8 years old health, 26660, mana, 448 2630 status points colon 0 strength, 183, stamina, 66, agility, 85, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 158 plus 10, wisdom, 255 plus 8 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 6720 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, begin our readers, purchases, wisdom b, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Element C, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class B, Monster Slayer D, Slime Slayer C, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper C, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Logmaker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered's, Herbs Types is, Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Status Mastery E, Beast Slayer D, Horned Rabbit Slayer E, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer E, Notists, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs solds, herbs boughts, acknowledgeds, disgraceful, s, ignoreds, forgottens, zombie slayer f, completed series, fishings, farmings, skill points, 2. Actives, status level 51 d, system library level 50 d, mana coat level 10 f, mana wave level 3 f, ice spine level 10 f, ice sword level 1 f, icicle level 4 f. Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20E, Swordsmanship Level 23E, Sword Mastery Level 14F, Mana Control Level 23E, Ice Control Level 20E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 8F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 12F, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 1F. Brainwash Resistance Level 30E, Night Vision Level 10F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Class Rituals, Snowfalling Level 10, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, 
ice cursed soul ban grimo i rank e 14 200 you're looking stronger iris my sister says after carefully examining it which makes me smile faintly upon hearing her words even though deep down i know i'm extremely weak she helps me get up and then grabs the bag we head home without encountering any problem after some time we arrive home and we head inside the room I lay down on the bed resting while looking at Aurora. What are you going to do now sister? I think I'll see how far I can awaken with all the soul power I've got. She transforms into a grimoire. All right, I'll be here. I reassure my sister with kind words, and as soon as I finish talking, a dark aura surrounds her for a while, and then she speaks after returning to human form. How'd it go? I've exhausted my soul power completely. Let's see. Status. I focus on the bottom of the screen to find the counter for the next awakening rank. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Class passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed. Unidentified skill, rare element, ice, cursed soul bound grimo I rank E, 134 200, 134 out of 200, it's not that far, I say while smiling at her as she's bound to become stronger upon going for higher phases, another 10 skeletons, she laughs while looking at me noticing my body in a not so good shape, uck, as long as they're not as strong as that last one. I frown while turning my eyes to look at the window, causing them to turn into a lighter green tone than they already are. Weren't you the one that wanted to become strong Iris? She teases me watching the skin of my body recovering slowly. I roll my eyes and turn my body to the window side then reply to her softly. I will do my best to become stronger, by the way, sister if you feel like walking would you like to deliver the quest? It's the two small bags I left at the room door. Sure you can heal up while I do that. You need anything else? She looks around in search of the bags that contain the items. No, but thank you for asking Aurora. She gets both adventure cards and heads to the guild with the two black bags. A while later she arrives at the receptionist. Hello Aurora. How can I help you today? Hello. I've come to deliver this quest. She gives him the quest. The cards. And the bags. Let's see what we have here. He reads it to know how to handle the reward. Quest rank, F collect Sefi herbs from the West Forest. You'll be rewarded 5 points and 40 copper per herb. Very well, the herbs are in these bags I assume? Yes, he spends a while counting them. Exactly 38 Sefi herbs which equal to 190 points and 1520 copper. I'll update your cards and get the money. He then returns with a bag of money and two cards which the man delivers to the girl and voices out loudly getting the attention of the closest row of the adventurers. Congratulations to you and Iris. You're now both rank E adventurers, currently with 348 points. To further rank up you'll need 400. I'd like a new quest in preference in the West Forest as we know the woods well enough. Very well, in that case. We do have a client that works for the church. He wants some horns from beasts called horned rabbits. You should be familiar with them due to this herb quest. Yes? Yes. I've slain some of them already. Perfect. In that case, I just ask that you kill them without damaging the horns. The better the horns quality the better the reward. I'll keep that in mind. I take the quest, the cards, and the bag. Have a good day Aurora, and send Iris a hug from Hugo. Will do, thank you. People sure like sister, she thought while picking the bag up with a smile. Oh if it isn't Arara. Aurora then turns around finding some familiar faces. Ilias, with an innocent expression she teases the cute girl. In front of her, the party members of Elise hearing that nickname started laughing at their companion. Ah, don't call me with such a name you meanie. You started this time around. Aurora smiled coldly yet playfully, I've reached rank E with 250 points today, how are you and Iris progressing? She asked happily remembering Aurora's sister, we're almost at rank D. What? No way, she snatched the cards from Aurora's hand and read them. Oh my goddess, 
How did you two got this high so fast? I think it was mostly the 40 Sefi herbs sister gathered at the West Forest each was worth 5 points. Ah, these guys only take slaying quests which generally gives fewer points, since we're fighting F-ranked monsters but in exchange. I should be higher level than you. She looks at me high and mighty. What level are you? Aurora snatches back the cards while noticing the faces of the young adults behind her. I'm level 7. You can now praise me, peasant. She smiled from cheek to cheek feeling superior even though they're both in the same social rank. Aurora smiled and then said, you're still two levels behind. She walked past her to the exit leaving the group dumbfounded as they've partied together before. She then turned around and shouted at Aurora. I'll surpass you soon enough, say hi to Aris for me. Upon hearing those words Aurora waved by raising her hand the one holdings the cards without turning back. On the next morning of the day 30th of the sun season, knocking can be heard on the door making Rosalind go to the entrance to see who it is, while the girls wake up from the sound. I'm pretty sure it's not Rowan, wondering who could it be. I rub one of my eyes while staring at my sister full of curiosity. Aurora upon hearing my words looks through the window since she slept closer to it, seems like the visits are for us. We get up and dress into good looking dresses. I pick my bunny doll from the floor placing it on top of the bed when done. I run to the bathroom to pee, then wash my face, and lastly start brushing my long hair which reaches almost the ass. The door then opens and four men in a square formation are seen by Rosalind standing outside while she makes a confused expression. Greetings madam, I am Ryu the head of the Blue Rose family. I've come to speak with your daughters. Hopefully, they're home. Rosalind quickly bows understanding she's speaking towards a very high ranking noble, noticing the blue expensive attire. Blue cloths with black buttons and a black short coat on top of it making him look rather fancy and good looking, contrasting very well with his usual serious expression. Further below she notices black trousers, a dark brown belt, and fully black shoes. Welcome Lord Ryu, and yes they are. Please come in, you may sit over there on the sofa. Ryu and an old man went through leaving two men outside. You two are staying outside? Rosalind takes a quick glimpse at them noticing the weapons they were carrying and the blue armor sets. One of the three sets which are used solely by the royal family guards. They're guarding the house Miss Rosalind, leave them be, Ryu said as he walked towards the living room. If you'll excuse me, Rosalind closed the door slowly to avoid any rudeness. The two men sit on the sofa and then they realize a girl was already in front of them staring at them while waiting silently spooking them. Gee good morning Aurora, the two men said in unison. I walked off the bathroom then entered the living room through the opposite side they did, and saw two unknown faces staring at my sister. An old man around his sixties perhaps, with some white hair and a not too long white beard, but long enough to reach the tip of the nose. White shirt and brown pants along with caramel colored shoes. Once I got close to my sister, her lips opened and a warm childish tone befell on the room. Good morning Lord of the Blue Rose family Ryu and the Crown Prince Julius advisor teacher Mark. Seems like she was waiting for her sister to not have to repeat herself. An interesting girl in fact, Mark smiled appreciating both figures in front of him in a curious way, full of expectation ever since the day Aurora won the chess game. Upon hearing those words, I greet them peerlessly by bowing and lifting my dress. How can a peasant have this level of etiquette? It exceeds some of the nobles I've seen. Did their parents spend that much money on their education? I'm pretty sure they don't have that kind of sum. Ryu couldn't help but be dumbfounded while looking at me lost in thoughts and curiosity. Now then, I believe your sister Aurora has shown you my letter and the recommendation correct? Rosalind sat on a chair listening to the conversation quietly and attentively. Yes, Lord Ryu, but it is not something I am currently interested in. But I am grateful for the invitation, I replied calmly with a kind smile crushing some of the Lord's hopes. I've heard from Aurora that she doesn't have much of a physical or magical talent, would you show me yours? You wish to face me in a duel? I asked confused yet excited for facing someone new since that's the method adventurers and mother uses to evaluate others. Ryu got up and expanded all his mana around his body, 
I wish to see your aura the same way I'm doing with my own, in preference merged with your element. Should I go all out Aurora? Yes, I already told them you were the one who took the blessing in magic out of the two of us. You can even do it slowly so I can evaluate their reaction. All right, I'll make some airs to it, and unnecessary gesturing to take longer then, voice then comes from the middle of my lips. Can we at least do this outside? How come? Ryu notices instantly the worried expression on my face feeling a little confused. I do not want to freeze this entire room, it would be a problem for my mother. The men made an awkward expression not expecting that, and then they got up. Does this girl really have enough mana to freeze the entire living room? For a peasant room it is a decently large one. The old man rubbed the beard up and down while walking. As Iris moved to the exit, Aurora bowed her head as she passed, following right after Ryu and Mark, noticing this became extra confused while following along in silence. Outside of the house ten meters away from the entrance door, I took a deep breath while concentrating in my mind, slowly my mana started surrounding my body in a blue tone, with an initial amount of 500 mana sticking to perfect control over the amount. I start merging it with the ice element fully converting it. This effect causes the surrounding aura color to become a lot clearer while creating small steam due to the warm rays of the sun. For an 8 year old kid it's not bad but a prodigy would have at least triple this much. I'm disappointed Aurora, the dark blue eyed man stared lightly at Aurora who looked at the sister smiling. That kid has good control over the element Lord Ryu, one of the guards mentioned while analyzing the girl in front of them. True, I didn't have that much in her age, another one said while feeling a soft breeze deriving from her aura. I take another deep breath and increase another 500 mana. The ground around me started to naturally freeze and the breeze became cold making one of the guards sneeze. Ryu raised his hand and used a magic detector skill. Ah. Seems like Aurora wasn't wrong after all. That's around 1000 mana. A lot better, but still not fantastical. I gripped my hands to one another in a praying pose and deeply breathed once more increasing 500 more mana. A surprised face by everyone around her could be seen. This is unexpected she's in a prodigy level. Did she take her sister magical share while she was in her mother's womb? Ryu questioned himself upon feeling quite the pressure from the little girl, and even measuring her capabilities through the screen numbers only he can see. I then ungripped my hands extending the arms to opposite sides and added 500 more mana. It started becoming so cold that the breeze itself started freezing everything around slightly, going as far as to add a layer of ice on the clothing of the men watching her. This. This is too much of a quantity for such an age. Mark gazed while laughing excitedly at the prowess of a fellow human and the potential of the future for that ice magician. They started coating themselves with mana to protect themselves from the cold and the freezing. The crown prince will be very happy knowing about this. Ryu smiled as he reminded himself about the annual tournament. I then looked at Ryu placing a finger in front of my small nose, as if to tell him to be quiet and then added 500 more, ending up reaching a total of 2500 mana which is my max amount. The ice froze their feet and their clothes, and the steam on top of the big aura created a mist hiding my presence while creating an ice layer on the men's mana barriers. It started looking like a small blizzard in front of them, making their mana auras being damaged from it. Mark started laughing loudly. This scene before me is truly insane, to have so much talent and potential at such a young age, simply marvelous. What a crazy kid. Now I understand why Aurora estimates her so much. Ryu increased the defenses around the body as the body was naturally shaking from the low temperature. I absorb all the mana back into my body so it doesn't disappear leaving me empty, recovering most of it. From one moment to the other the blizzard disappeared, and all that was left was ice around me in a range of 15 meters having affected even the house door and its walls. Ryu coughed and then started speaking after regaining his composure. Well that was certainly not something I expected from one as young as you. All that pure raw power. You'd make many people some years older than you feel shame, 
one of the guards increased his own mana mixing it with his fire element, warming the entire place melting the ice turning it into water. That man just used the same amount of mana as sister instantly, quite the nasty control he must have, seems like not all humans are complete trash, perhaps that's what I should expect from a royal guard, even though that must have been a bit of his true power. Now we're back to summer, the guard laughed as he wished to make things the way they were supposed to be. Thanks to his actions it ended up allowing the grass and the flowers to not die frozen, instead of providing some water to quench their thirst. I'm very grateful sir, I thanked him for melting the ice for me, as that's not something I'm able to do with a kind smile on my face, due to the three rules of magic. You're very welcome, it's been a while since I felt such chills, I don't really know many ice mages. He smiled joyfully while staring at me wondering what else I could do, as I didn't use any skills. What a shame, ice magic is beautiful. I reply delicately while making a small bird sculpture of ice on top of my palms. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Good thing mana is only spent while turning it into physical things or skills. Maybe I should find a way to use the aura he showed me to something. Perhaps the possibility of containing all of it to myself, freezing everything around during combat, it could be a way to not exhaust myself, even though it does take a toll on the physical and mental capacity of my body. That's a pretty sculpture you have there, a shame that'll melt eventually or I'd buy it from you, Mark said while smiling at it, reminding himself of the birds he used to have inside the cage during childhood. Perhaps one day I can make a curse that doesn't allow my eyes to melt, and then sell sculptures. If they're beautiful, maybe people will want to get one for them. If in the future I find a way, I'll make sure to send you one Sir Mark, I reply with a kind smile. Oh, 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 I'll be looking forward to that child. This man sure knows how to take the initiative, Ryu thought while envying Mark as he felt like the old man had gotten ahead of himself through bonding with the kid in front of them. I'd like to know the reason for you to not wish to learn magic in the Magic Institute. In case you don't know the strongest magician of the kingdom is the owner. I believe he could put your talent to good use. I place my hand in my head as I start losing my senses making my body shake slightly. Get a hold of yourself, Iris. I know. I'm trying Aurora. I put my hand behind my back and stab it with the nails by gripping it too tight. I'm grateful for your support, however. My current goal is to reach the max rank of the Adventurers Guild, and help as many people as I can. That sounds like one who wishes to become some sort of a hero. With the two heroes and all the summoned people that were brought recently by the Goddess Area, we don't need to push her into joining us. Mark thinks as he looks at Ryu trying to convey his thought by nodding sideways. I'd really want this girl to join us, I don't know how bright she is. Her sister is quite blessed in that sense, but she has a lot of talent. I definitely wouldn't like to waste it, Ryu thinks while noticing Mark looking at him waving his head in disagreement. Seems like he wants to let her pass. We can always recruit Iris in the future if necessary. Not to forget she does have the white ring so we can't just take her from Lady Alicia. I highly doubt those monstrous swordsmanship parents of her would allow it easily. Once you reach your goal and decide that in the future you would like to join one of the possible areas that the Lumen Capital has, just use the recommendation letter, we'll be waiting for you patiently. Thank you, Lord Ryu, I shall make good use of it when that time arrives, I smile at them happily. You can go do the quest Tyrus. I'll meet you when I can. Sure sister, if you'll excuse me. I bow politely once again while rising my light pink dress softly. Have a good day Iris, it was a pleasure to meet you, Mark said while smiling excitedly at someone part of the new generation, relieving himself from some worries where he might not be part of, due to old age. Yes, indeed, Ryu added simple and shortly not wanting to bring attention to him as Mark already handled it. Aurora comes closer and gives me the card and the quest just in case. After reading it, I go inside home grabbing a bag for the horns, and then leave for the village while waving at them. Well then, where would you like to discuss the war documents we've brought? Can be inside at the kitchen table. 
I'm sure mother won't mind. Ryu goes back to the wagon and returns with a wooden box meeting them inside. Then opens the box and removes a few books placing them orderly on top of the table by categories. Seems like it'll be a long morning with these two. Aurora thought smiling faintly not really minding it. Two hours passed with Aurora completely silent reading the different books she was given. No matter how many times I see it, Aurora's absolute concentration is truly amazing. Compared to me before becoming the prince advisor, my parents blessed me with great tutors, and couldn't help but feel tired or sleepy. Yet would you look at this girl? Such a long time has passed, and it feels everlasting. Really does make me wonder, what kind of thoughts are going through her mind? It feels like she's absorbing everything. Despite having a good brain, I still don't think she'd have much of military knowledge, since no experience in it whatsoever to back it up. She closes the book and smiles faintly. I'm amazed at how ancient these things are, and they're mostly defensive tactics. Didn't the goddess Arya ever make them move out of their territory? Aside from the first hero, every other one felt rather dull. It almost feels like the slow rate humans absorbed territory around through the passage of years was more in a survivalist way than out of greed. The past rulers must have been greatly influenced by the church's defensive saintess warnings, and the wait for the heroes to assist them. In my head, however, that means we just have to obliterate everything in our way before they stand a chance to invade us. Well, these two mustn't have much knowledge other than defending so I could make them defend the kingdom with the leftover army from all the factions while I do my expeditions, or even use them in sieges depending on the enemy structures, Aurora looks at them feeling bored, what would the total army size that I'd be able to use, around 100,000 perhaps, currently our total army is of 200,000, but we only have access to 120,000, in other words, Aurora interrupting him says, 60% is enough. I expected a lot less from such a defensive kingdom, but I've understood a lot from these books. I'll take 50,000 from the crown prince and 5,000 from every faction except the church I want 10% and the saintess. Also none from you Ryu. I need yours to keep control inside the kingdom. We can manage an expedition with such numbers to understand who and what we're dealing with as I lack information. As a starting point, of course that to do more I'll need at least 500,000, maybe more. What guarantees do you have that we wouldn't just lose those numbers, Aurora? She picks the three empty books and starts writing on them. I'll write the strategies that'll be passed on the soldiers for the expeditions, invasions, and conquering the enemy bases. If you're both not happy with them then we can cease our deal here. Ruthless, but that's welcome, after all. We can't have a weak-minded general if she reaches that far. Ending up controlling the fate of so many soldiers will require the ones below to respect the higher-ups, especially the general, Mark thought pleased as most of those who wield such ranks, crumble from the pressure before even waging war. Very well, we shall wait. After all, we did come this far to ascertain your ways, Ryu gazes at Rosalyn after speaking who approaches with a board. Rosalyn placed two cups of tea for Ryu and Mark on top of the table after they make some space, then went outside and served some tea to the two guards, then she returned and words came out, I'll be teaching swordsmanship to some kids outside if you need anything just let me know. Aurora nodded lightly as her hand motion went on and on relentlessly, Rosalyn moved upon seeing her confirmation. From time to time Aurora would faintly smile as she received experience from Iris killing horned rabbits, making Mark and Ryu think that she actually enjoyed war. One may become a talented ice wizard adventurer, and the other may turn into an amazing general. To think peasants could be this blessed, the crown prince's unique ways have truly paid off. Mark thought realizing that making better uses out of peasants could become a new trend if these two paved such a path for others to follow through. Another hour passed by where Aurora stopped writing while passing the feather under her chin, then looked at them and extended the book, I'll be using these which are more advanced than any you have composed thus far. Ryu quickly grabs the book opening it in the middle of him and Mark, for both to read at the same time for a long while. Trenches, lines, formations, tunnels, just what is all of this? 
It shows how the four basic elements can be used the best in the most interesting ways. I feel stupid as to not have thought of some of these ways, Ryu thought while reading the suggestions and notes in it. Oh this looks truly interesting. It is quite different from what we've gone about the past years where we just march the troops, and the side with the highest army and mana output wins even though we stay behind walls most of the time against monsters and beasts. So the structures protect us while we destroy them. With the unique light element and ice element we can place barriers to further enhance defense measures, along with earth and nature to fortify them, and even use the light one to place barriers on the soldiers. This is truly splendidly. We already used it for our men obviously, but to use it in objects, that is quite original, should be very interesting to create different layers. By using the earth element one can open holes in the ground for the soldiers to create trenches and tunnels, thus having protection against the enemy's magic allowing the enemies to be left on the open for our own magic output. It's so simple yet. Ryu glanced at Aurora who was smiling, then quickly back to the book for more. Mark thought, the thing that intrigues me the most is using sound with wind magic to propagate orders to the army. This will require training but once achieved. We'll be able to use some of these formations she drew, though I wonder why some of them split the army into smaller forces. Wouldn't that make it weaker? He then noticed her smiling faintly and looked at Ryu who raised the head from the book. I'll be in your care from now on Aurora. He bowed slightly out of respect of her knowledge. Ryu who is one of the top 10 most influential people in the kingdom the head of the Blue Rose family. Mark followed through doing the same while feeling amazed and curious as to what other things were still engraved in the book she wrote. To this Aurora said, you don't need to bow your heads, I'm just a peasant. The only thing I want from both, is loyalty and cooperation. In return, the southern lands will become human lands. Mind if I take this book to show the crown prince? Ryu asked as she could still need it for something else. Make sure you don't show it to anyone else. The information in there could cause trouble from other factions. I can picture it happen. I'll guard this book with my life. We'll summon you to the capital soon once we have the acknowledgement of the crown prince. Once that happens, we'll hold a party to celebrate with the fellow high nobility, in other words, the other seven heads. Not forgetting the royal family and some important nobles including the Pope and Serenity. I'd estimate this happen from two weeks to one month, but knowing the prince, he'll likely take a month or more. To make sure they understand that you're truly special, you can stay behind Mark. I gotta go help sister and my hand hurts from writing. Once I'm back we can discuss the defensive matters that'll only be learned by the crown prince army, with excited eyes that end up causing jealousy to Ryu, Mark says. Of course, I'll be looking forward to that. The books Aurora wrote were consumed into a magic's bag from Ryu's, leaving a blank one behind and then he spoke. How many days will you need Mark here? If he learns fast three days if not a week. To think I'd have a learning challenge at this age. Excited laughter came out of him. I'll send a wagon to come to pick you up in three days Mark. Ryu declared effortlessly as he knew. The one titled as the teacher wouldn't fail to reach another's expectations much less his own. Sure is good to be young. Well I'll do my best. Mark replied to Ryu happily filled with determination in the eyes. After Ryu left. Aurora picked a blank book and then used her transformation skill in it. She then gave it to Mark who was distracted staring at the door that had closed, and then she voiced up grabbing his attention. I've written defensive measures in this one, you can study them while I'll go help sister in her quest. Very well, even though I must ask if you can't use magic how do you help her? She taught me how to mana coat weapons and things which I can then use to defeat things, but that's as far as I go. Oh. So your mana is still working, I wonder if there's a way to repair or find your element, I'll research a solution when I'm back in the capital. I'm grateful, but it's best to focus solely on the wars to come, as I don't really have a need for an element, since I'll be ordering not fighting. Alright I understand, when the time comes, I'll assign some guards to keep you safe at all times then. She nods lightly and then gets up, well then, I'll be back when I can. Aurora heads to the west forest as soon as the old man nods slightly picking the book and opening it. 
After she left home the guards were still there guarding Mark, which meant Ryu returned alone to the capital, since the carriage only had four seats. Seems like this man is highly valued by the crown prince, which may also mean that Ryu might be able to protect himself. Aurora then looks at her mother and the kids doing exhausting exercises, mother bullying the kids with her teaching, just like how sister suffered. She smiled faintly while passing by. An hour later of running she arrives close to the blonde girl. Seems like you've been having fun Aris with twelve horned rabbit corpses around you. Aurora then notices a rabbit frozen to the tree screeching, and as she's about to kill it a voice resumes. Leave it be. It's calling for more of his friends. Iris replied coldly while glaring at the stuck rabbit. She's not herself currently, it seems. Must have been all the skills that had leveled the brainwash resistance. Perhaps the class made the disgraceful power stronger or something. Perhaps disgrace class is equal to a cursed class? As you wish master, Aurora replied and then went into deep thinking. Though I must say, this is quite the tactic allowing us to find rabbits without having to look for them. We could probably use this for other types of beings as well, as long as they have a screeching type of skill. The question is would she do it without being affected by her skills? I can't wait for Iris to accept the madness inside of her things would get so much easier. I wonder what I could do to awaken her faster. Though I don't feel like she's changed at all, she's still happy and kind which is pretty great. However, something is definitely changing. The secret should be inside the class. Babel was it? It is a word I've never heard before. Perhaps amidst one of my sealed memories, there's something about it. Never mind. Eventually brainwash resistance will outdo the skills, allowing my sister to return to her sanity. The real problem would be, how is Iris being affected, possibly being corrupted, but if that was true, her personality would be changing. The one currently talking has an unfamiliar tone. Seeing as she didn't get some curse resistance it mustn't be one. Something else, but it's a class that wasn't in the class's book, can only wait and see, while looking for a solution to help her. If it comes to that extent, a bit of coldness is totally fine, but I still want her to preserve her persona, otherwise, she'd become someone else, not to forget I was allowed to retain my own mind from the choice created by the gods. Debts must always be fully paid, and I now have two towards my little witch. Dark bind, Aurora binds the bunnies who came to save the half-frozen one. Iris raises her hand pointing with the index finger in the rabbit's direction. Icicle. Two lines of ice stretch from the ground piercing the rabbits in the middle of their heads killing them. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. The cold green eyes of Iris swap to Aurora and she moves her arm slightly, throwing an icicle that goes close to her cheek without touching it, penetrating a rabbit hiding next to a tree. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. Aurora didn't waver having complete trust in Iris. What was I? I look around me finding dead rabbits everywhere feeling a slight sense of disgust, and a rabbit froze to a tree screeching to get help, then finding Aurora staring at me with a complex unfamiliar expression, what looks like a mix of worry and pride. It seems like I was out again. It's been happening more often lately, probably due to your classy evolution sister. Icicle, I shoot one at the rabbit in the tree putting it out of misery. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, 40 experience has been rewarded from a horned rabbit. For better or worse I feel like we have enough rabbits for the quest. I'll remove the horns from the ones that still have them. Sure, I'll keep a lookout. Aurora replied with a friendly tone while understanding that Iris had been kind to the horned rabbit who was suffering for a long time. I wonder how much longer will this keep happening? Being brainwashed is truly not fun, I make an unhappy expression towards my new class. It's like my own body get controlled by someone else, something else perhaps. It feels in the way familiar but wrong, very wrong. After a while. I place all the 16 horns inside a bag and check my status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 10, experience 571 thousandths fame, 
250, Disgrace, 13,560 Unique Class, Babel Witch, Rank 2, Experience 3,610 4 thousandths Race, Human, Name, Iris, 8 Years Old Health, 505 660, Mana, 1200 2690 Status Points Colon 0 Strength, 185, Stamina, 66, Agility, 85, Dexterity, 107, Intelligence, 174 plus 10, Wisdom, 260 plus 9 Attack, 0, Magic Attack Colon 0, Defense Colon 0, Magic Defense, 0 Soul. 6720 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchases, wisdom b, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, cooked bird f, cooking series, e, slayer series f, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Elements, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class B, Monster Slayer D, Slime Slayer C, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper C, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered, Herbs Types is, Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Status Mastery E, Beast Slayer D, Horned Rabbit Slayer C, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer E, Noticed, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Sold, Herbs Bought, Acknowledged, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, Forgotten's, Zombie Slayer F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 3. Actives, Status Level 51 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 10 F, Mana Wave Level 3 F, Ice Spine Level 10 F, Ice Sword Level 1 F, Icicle Level 8 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20 E, Swordsmanship Level 23 E. Sword Mastery Level 14 F, Mana Control Level 23 E, Ice Control Level 23 E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 9 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 13 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 40 D, Night Vision Level 10 F, Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank E, 3200 You can consume the soul stones, we only need the horns for the quest Aurora, alright. I'll see what the prize is this time around, she transforms into a book and consumes all of them. I can never get any of the elemental skills they use like fireballs due to different elements, it automatically rejects them due to lack of affinity, she spoke to Iris through telepathy since unable to do it normally while in Grimoire form. Do you think you have enough soul power to evolve now? I asked in my mind knowing she would listen. I'll try to spend it all, I have 2000 soul power so perhaps it's enough. A dark aura surrounded the Grimoire as she converted all of it. I looked around to make sure no one spots us and also to be wary of any enemy. Not long passes and she returns to her human form. I won a new skill called Giver, let's try it. Aurora said excitedly making me curious and expectant. Aurora hears a voice from her own status. Notice, do you wish to give all of your consumed skills to Iris? Iris apparently I can give you the skills I received from the soul stones which ones you'd like to have? 
status, status, level, 10, experience 571 thousandths, class, pandemonium race, human, name, aurora, 8 years old health, 1001 thousandths, mana 1291 thousand five hundred status points colon 0 stamina, 100, intelligence, 90 wisdom, 150, soul power, 2000 attack, 5, magic attack, 90 titles, etonyms, uncursed, soul bounds, contracted, noticed, god seras f, skill points, 5, actives, status level 40 d, darkness barrier level 7 f, piercing darkness level 13 f, mana coat level 8 f, dark coat level 9 f, mana wave level 1 f, dark bind level 14 f, Extraction level 17 F. Passives, Mana Control level 25 E. Dark Control level 19 F. Monster Detection level 40 D. Beast Detection level 13 F. Night Vision level 25 E. Unique, Transformation level 15. Healing Intent level 5. Blessed slash Cursed, Mirror level 2. Unidentified, Unique Element, Dark Cursed Soulbound Contracted Skills, Telepathy F. Giver E. Consumed skills, infected bite level 5, brainwash resistance level 4, brainwash resistance level 8, mana coat level 10, mana control level 7, infected bite level 10, brainwash resistance level 5, brainwash resistance level 9, mana control level 5, long slash level 3, human detection level 3, human detection level 5, slight stamina boost level 3, Slight Agility Boost Level 6, Slight Strength Boost Level 4, Slight Strength Boost Level 5. Iris it's the consumed skills at the very bottom. She points while telling it to me. Hum, you can give me all except Infected Bite and Human Detection for now. Not really sure how repeated skills will work but if I have a lot of resistant ones it'll surely help a lot. Human Detection you already have so you can keep it, and the Infected Bite. I don't really want to bite anyone. I smile awkwardly imagining myself chasing people to bite them. Sure thing, give them. I heard a voice from status in my mind. Notice, skills have been learned and merged. Status updated. I feel my mind becoming a lot clearer and stable. Also apparently some were merged and others learned Aurora. Let's see your status to see what they did exactly. Sure, status. We both look eagerly at it while smiling. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 10, experience 571 thousandths fame, 250, disgrace, 13,560 unique class, Babel Witch, rank 2, experience 3,610 four thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health. 54690 mana 1223 2690 status points colon 0 strength 185 plus 9 stamina 66 plus 3 agility 85 plus 6 dexterity 107 intelligence 174 plus 10 wisdom 260 plus 9 attack 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 6720 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchases, wisdom b, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Elements, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class B, Monster Slayer D, Slime Slayer C, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper C, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathered, Herbs Types is, Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Element E, Status Mastery E, Beast Slayer D, Horned Rabbit Slayer C, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, 
Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer E, Notices, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herb Solds, Herbs Boughts, Acknowledged, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, Forgotten, Zombie Slayer F, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 3. Actives, Status Level 51 D, System Library Level 50 D, Mana Coat Level 20 E, Mana Wave Level 3 F, Ice Spine Level 10 F, Ice Sword Level 1 F, Icicle Level 8 F, Long Slash Level 3 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20 E, Swordsmanship Level 23 E, Sword Mastery Level 14 F, Mana Control Level 35 E, Ice Control Level 23 E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 9 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 13 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 66 C, Night Vision Level 10 F, Slight Stamina Boost Level 3 F, Slight Agility Boost Level 6 F, Slight Strength Boost Level 9 F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 40, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 30, Magic Knowledge Level 20, Ice Mastery Level 14, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank D, 3400 Together we check the status curiously about how it affected the skills realizing something that made us both happy instantly. Just how high did my brainwash resistance went? It literally added up a lot of levels to it. It even changed the grade to C. Look at me I'm a rank D Grimo I now. Aurora said with a smile and a happy tone. I told you, you'd get stronger eventually. Even though it only gave a new skill, but perhaps in the future it can be used in a different way. I hope so, in the worst case can make your skills go a lot higher granting you the chance to become stronger. It still works as I'm a weapon in the end. Even if thanks to my own skills I get to help you better like this. Upon hearing those words I pat her head knowing she's trying her best for my own being. I'll do what I can to make sure we both become stronger, okay? I'm grateful but don't worry Iris, I believe we can achieve both our goals like this too. Also there's something I must tell you while we rest. Aurora makes a serious expression giving me the shivers. Remember that in our past life I was sealed in a mirror on that world? Yes. What about it? I ask confused and curious remembering a short dream of the last day of the 10,000 years the trapped girl lived there. Two of the ring leaders who sealed me by the order of the God of Light, got reincarnated into this world. The hero and the sage, Sophie and Romeo, a cold tone chiller than my eyes leaves her mouth while Aurora made a disgusted expression. What? Did they notice you? Did you perhaps kill them? I make a shocked expression as every question could easily end up in a yes, and all that would cause issues to us. No. Luckily I acted fragile and delicate, unable to do any physical activity and magic. I have a completely different appearance than back then. Not to forget that dad along with the prince, cooperated with me in that sense without realizing it themselves. Ah, well in that case we can remain silent since they didn't get to find you out. Should we do something about them? Even though I don't know if there's anything we could do. Since they should be with strong guards I guess, perhaps even the royal guards, the fire one looked insanely powerful. I think in this life I'll use them initially to expand the Lumen Kingdom southward, and when I have a chance in the future I'll deal with them. Since I don't know yet what to expect from the other races, if it was humans against humans then it would be relatively easier. However by conquering the world through making them work for me could be the start of a very long punishment, an evil expression appeared on her face which I smiled kindly while patting her hair. If you need my help let me know. They might be fellow humans, however. I can't allow them to hurt my sister. 
I shouted with a serious face not wanting anything to happen to Aurora. When the time comes, we'll figure something out, for now, we need to get a lot stronger. They both must have unique classes and elements, possibly some very special skills given by the goddess Arya. Yes, you're right, we could go to the ruins and get some more brainwash resistance from the skeletons for now. Sure. We can do that even though, I'll wait for your skills to surpass your resistance so that it can grow naturally before using mines, it should allow you to get a better sense and training at resisting those things in the future, I'm a weapon, so it should not bother me. Alright Aurora, that's fine too, since the resistance skill might get stuck somewhere, and then we can boost it up with some merge. Plus I heard from one of the summoned, a girl named Kana that the max level in her world was 100. However, in this world that could be different, if we can go higher than 100, doesn't that mean that skills can too? Yes, that's what I'm suspicious of, so I'll save the future resistances for an emergency or a necessity, even though our own level may not be correlated with the skills level. True, that sounds like a good plan Miss General of the Lumen Kingdom, I say in a teasing tone and get poked in my forehead as a response. We then laugh at each other while heading towards the ruins. Too bad we always end up leaving the corpses behind, but they're big and the blood would make a hassle. On these bags, if I had a magic one, I'd bring them so that mother could cook them. We'll have to buy one at some point, but for that, we need to get more money. I believe we have around 3,000 copper funds. Either that or we find an alternative or some item in these ruins. That would make things a lot easier rarer and cheaper. Being poor is truly a hassle. Upon reaching the ruins I look around us, and then we enter it. A while earlier at the Astia village, a wagon with a green octogram symbol arrived near the church. From within Gora, Yano, Aiko, and Kaito came out. Welcome I'm Priest Miley and we've been expecting you for. Please come inside our church to rest from the long trip. I'm Kaito and mind if I go for a walk around here? I've been sitting for too long priest Miley, and slept too, so resting is not something I currently need. Just Miley is enough, and of course you can. I'll ask one of our priests to show you around. The man does a gesture to someone inside as the doors are open. Thanks. I appreciate it. He started stretching his body in a peculiar way unknown to those who live here, by extending the leg and reaching the feet with the tips of the fingers while saying, Uck, that sure was a long trip. The back does a bit of cracking sounds. Gora replied, I've never done one like this, it was a good experience, he smiled at Kaito happily with it. You got that right Gora, Kaito stated stretching towards the other leg. Too bad we had to endure smell of your sweat during half of the trip fatty, Aiko said making Yano laugh and the boy feel bad. Come on Aiko we just arrived, give it a rest, it is pretty hot. It's not like Gora is far because he wanted to be, and I wonder in what month or season we are. It truly feels like summer, around July perhaps, in our world of Artana. We have four seasons and each has 90 days, we're currently on day 30 of the sun season, we'll be teaching all of you about it soon. That's pretty simpler than our old world miles, are there any sun season festivals and things like that around here or something, maybe events, ceremonies? They're not too frequent as we're all peasants so funding is hard to proportionate, however, we do have a few that go through the year, the flowering season that has passed is when we do a special one as it is a named one after the goddess Arya. Does that mean each season is named after a different god? Gora asked curiously making Miles frown the eyebrows. We could say that is how it is. However, we humans only pursue the one religion that serves goddess Arya, as she's the one who created the race and also the soul superior being that helps us. The thing with the visions and the summoned people? Yano asked while gazing at the priest noticing a muscular tall man approaching. Yes, that's right. Hum, I see. Yano gazes at the new face devouring the body with the eyes. I'm here brother Miley. A big bulky bald man appeared behind the priest with a shield on the back. Kaito, this is Edgar he's an adventurer that is some relation with the church and will show you around while keeping your safety. Nice meeting you man. Kaito extended his hand, and Edgar handshakes it. Likewise Kaito, would the rest like to come along? I'll rest a bit first, 
Yano said as she was starting to feel rather hot. Same here, Aiko added chasing after Yano to keep her company. I'd like to eat something if possible, Gora said with his stomach roaring which made Yano and Aiko laugh. Miley smiled at them and said, in that case please follow me inside. Let's go then Kaito. They move and walk for a while as Edgar explains where he can find the many different shops and then they stop at the fountain with a garden around. As they rest a bit by the fountain Kaito notices a pretty girl going towards the west to what he can't help himself but question, who's that blonde kid? The boy points at the girl passing through a bit further away from them. Oh, that's Aurora I believe, she's an ascending rookie at the Adventurers Guild along with her twin sister Iris, who has green eyes instead of blue. Adventurers Guild? Someone that young is? Yes, the guild does have an age limit but from what I was told, her sister Iris is quite something for her age, which allowed them to register earlier than usual. That's interesting. I figured humans would all be weak but figures that some are born with some qualities. Edgar laughed lightly then said, yes, the adventurers and the ones that are part of the army are a tad stronger than the rest, especially the royal guards. Each one is a monster. Since they fight with monsters and other things, exactly they get to level up and become stronger. We end up using the 5 status per level up along with a skill point every time. I started with 10 of those points, 1 skill point, and a skill is that normal. Well you're a special case, that skill must be a blessing from the goddess area. But the rest sounds alright. I understand, also you guys have like healing herbs and potions and things like that around here. The twins parents work over there the man points with the index finger, it's a potion shop. If you or your companions ever need the good stuff, I advise going there. All right thank you, Edgar. As for equipment, perhaps the blacksmith, I buy things from them there. They're also really nice people. Can we go there? I'm curious as to what weapons this world has. Yes, of course, let's go there. A short while passes and they arrive inside it, where a man greets them. Welcome to the Three Hammers. How may we help? A small man? A dwarf? Kaito thought out loud feeling excited from finding one, who had been a famous reference in his past world. Ah, for you to know about dwarves, you're no ordinary man. I'm very a dwarf from beyond the West Ocean. My ship wrecked and I ended up in Lumen Kingdom. Eventually ended up coming here and have been living in this shop ever since. There wasn't any information regarding dwarves from what the church showed me. Is there a kingdom with them somewhere to the West? Kaito thought confused from the little he got to study. Either way Veria, I'm new in this village and it seems like I'll be staying for a while, so I'd like to see what weapons you sell. Of course, come along. We have all types of weapons that are generally used by the army itself. He waved the arm and hand softly towards the different weapons while naming them, making it look like dancing. Knuckles, swords, rapiers, great swords, spears, axes, hammers, bows, crossbows, maces, hammers, daggers, wands, and staffs. My class is spearman, so a spear would be nice. Choose one kaito I'll put it on the church tab, Edgar said quickly as the funds for the summon weren't small. I don't know what's good or bad though, kaito replied confused while lacking knowledge. In our shop, we have worst on the left towards best on the right, Kaito grabs the worst checking its weight all the way to the most expensive one. The expensive ones are heavier, as I am now this is far too heavy for me to do anything with it. I'd like the lightest one for now, in the future when I get stronger I'll return. A wise choice, you'll go far Mr. Kaito, Verid replied with a smile and surprised for the choice. And even more for the justification given from someone who didn't look particularly an expert with weapons. At the church, Gora had finishing eating, and then started remembering all the good food he ate in the past world where they were stolen from. Everything was so much better than this world meal, it's truly a shame that I didn't give it importance back then. Personal data. Status. Level. 1. Experience 0 100 Rare Class. Master Chef. Rank 1. Experience 0 1000 Race. Human. Name. Gora, 18 years old health, 195 195, mana, 1030 status points, 10 strength, 0, stamina, 20, agility, 0, dexterity, 
zero, intelligence, zero, wisdom, two titles, summoned, overweight, mana, mana exhaust, health, skill points, one skills, personal data, blessed skill, divine cooking level one, this was the blessing I received from the goddess, perhaps I can make something from my past world with it, I don't think we'll be facing monsters anytime soon and don't feel like my class is suitable for combat, so I could at least support my classmates in the future through cooking, I also seem to have gained 3 new titles since the last time I checked it, and my health seems to have dropped slightly while my mana increased, I'm still annoyed as there's an overweight title, but it gives me 2 stamina, so that's not the worst thing ever, I figured it out by comparing statuses with Kaito, luckily we're the same age and he only had 18 stamina, we humans get 1 stamina per year of life so it matched, he even said he might try to get overweighted just to get the bonus while laughing, that guy is a good friend, exhausting mana seems to increase mana and decrease health, I should probably spend points between stamina and wisdom to avoid that from happening again, the priest back at the first church said humans usually distribute them as evenly as possible since everything is useful to have, he said that intelligence would allow us to understand the world better, so that sounds like something I should get as well, if I'm to use a cooking skill I'll probably need to focus on dexterity, the teacher told me it allows us to be better with our hands, but perhaps it'll also influence the results of the things I make, let me check the divine cooking skill before I spend my points just in case, Gora feels himself growing weaker as he gets mana exhausted a few times even losing some health, divine cooking, fish, chicken, the young man gets up and walks to the kitchen of the church and finds a fish then he selects it from the little screen from the skill, ending up losing more health allowing the mana exhaustion to reach its max effect, in front of him, the fish receives the mana and after some moments, it turns into the random fish meal then stares at it while watering from the mouth and digs in, tears start to fall through the cheeks while feeling homesick from the meal created, at the very least, I'll be able to cook better things than the meals they give us, it's far from the real thing, but it's something, in fact, from now on, I'll cook everything for everyone in this church, as a repayment for taking us in, hopefully the girls will appreciate it and become friendlier, let's see the personal date to again, status, level, 1, experience 0 100 rare class, master chef, rank 1, experience 0 1000 race, human, name, Gora, 18 years old health, 8280, mana, 0 100 status points, 10 strength, 0, stamina, 31, agility, 0 plus 5, dexterity, 1, intelligence, 0, wisdom, 10 titles, summoned, overweight, mana, mana exhaust, health, cooked fish, skill points, 1 skills, personal data, blessed skill, Divine cooking level 2, temporary buff, fish meal plus 5 agility, it seems like abusing of my mana paid off but at the same time it could have killed me, I need to be more careful, their food gives me some temporary buffs it seems, that's pretty cool, it'll surely help my classmates in the future, Gora smiles happily as he heads to one of the rooms to rest, back to present inside the ruins, this place is still dark as ever, I wonder if we could use someone with light element just to illuminate these ruins, that sounds like a funny idea, maybe Elias would like to come one day, we stop and look at each other thinking about it, that actually wouldn't be a bad idea Aurora and I feel like she'd be very useful, these ruins are still extremely dangerous so having more people could prove to make it easier or not, no, how come, I look at her with eyes filled with curiosity, they could betray us and put us in a more dangerous position to save themselves, humans are like that, oh, I see, sister you, I wonder what kind of things you went through in our past life, you wouldn't want to know, I think I do, but I'll wait for her to open up and tell me, I look at the enemies ahead, don't you think it's weird Aurora, we're in the first room and there are four skeletons again in the same positions as last time, and two more behind them, hmm, now that you mention it, but the first time I came here there was only two I believe, so the number is increasing by two every time perhaps, almost like the monsters don't leave the first room after we make a ruckus in it, 
Could they probably get stuck in the first room? It's a little dangerous to run in one of those holes with skeletons behind and ending up cornered by two rooms of them, but if they get stuck here we could lure them all. We could, but then we'd lose our way out. Well yeah, for now, let's clean these up. Aurora clads her hands in mana and runs at them. It's always amazing how she just enjoys fighting with the palms. I broke my sword last time, retrieving only the handle, so I'll have to try something similar. I run at two of them, away from the group Aurora aiming for, in the center of the room. I position myself in front of one of the skeletons so that I deal with one at a time. He slices at me horizontally and I fall back. Last time the skeleton did a vertical slash leaving him open, if I had a sword I'd just parry it but this range is insanely harder to approach. Icicle. An icicle stretches from his blind spot piercing his skull passing through his back to his eye, getting stuck inside it. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Uh, that didn't quite work as intended but since it's inside the skeleton head, what if I spread it in all ways? I imagine multiple icicles expanding from the one inside small ones stretched to all the sides, creating holes in the skull, cracking it everywhere. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Notice, 150 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, the skill ice expansion has been acquired. A new skill, creativity truly is the key to learn ice magic, icicle, I shoot another one this time a bigger one from above the second skeleton piercing the skull head from above as he tries to swing his sword at me which I dodge. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Sister bait them and save your mana. I shout at her forgetting about telepathy. She nods lightly and stays slightly close to their attacking range. I close my eyes and imagine three icicles falling on top of their heads. Then I think of them piercing and expanding inside or close to their heads. Notice, 600 mana has been deducted. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 11. Notice, 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. System, the title creation has been received. System, the title illusion series has been received. Notice, a sealed skill has been acquired. I open my eyes surprised and notice I hit all the targets close to what I pictured. What's a sealed skill? Appraise it. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Sealed skill requires the completion of illusion series to fully unseal current state, one third. That means I need two more titles, but what are illusions? Hey sister I got a weird sealed skill that needs three titles to unseal it. They're related to illusion. What is that? Illusions is like confusing your enemy with a W from a mirror for example, or even doing something that produces a false reality. Maybe lie when you dream and you know it's fake. But that sense of false can be considered an illusion. I have an idea I want to try. Can you summon your mirror here? Sure, she asked confused while extending her hand in front of us. Mirror. I push the mirror to the middle entrance that is connected to one of the pathways and hide on the other side of the hall. After a while, a skeleton approaches and starts slashing at the mirror confusing it with me. One minute goes by. Five. Ten. 20. 30. At some point, their rate skeletons hitting the mirror making a lot of noise, and then a voice rings in my head. System. The title deluded has been acquired. I close my eyes and try to imagine the skeletons in front of me being hit by my icicles. I create 8 icicles piercing them all from above. Notice. 800 mana has been deducted. Notice. 110 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 100 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 90 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, 140 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. I open my eyes and realize I missed two of them. I try again to sense the mana from the skeletons in front of me as every being with a soul has some. Then I imagine my magic hitting them. 
Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Notice, 120 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 12. Notice, 130 experience has been rewarded from a skeleton. I'm very curious as to what you're trying to do Iris with your eyes closed, and I'm surprised you're actually hitting the skeletons. I feel like I'm starting to sense the mana in other beings, but I'm not sure if that's what it is. Status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level, 12. Experience 141,200 fame, 250, disgrace, 13,560 unique class, Babel Witch, rank 3, experience 1,288 thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 54690, mana, 832810 status points colon 0 strength, 185 plus 9, stamina, 66 plus 3, agility, 85 plus 6, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 174 plus 10, wisdom, 272 plus 9 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 7720 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchases, wisdom b, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, preyed upon f, cheetah, s, heritages, amalgams, ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Elements, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class A, Monster Slayer D, Slime Slayer C, Skill Mastery D, Tree Chopper C, Tree Types, Tree Series D, Log Maker C, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert Read Ref, Herbs Gathereds, Herbs Types is, Potion Brewers, Potion Type C, Status Mastery E, Beast Slayer D, Horned Rabbit Slayer C, Potion Administered F, Goblin Slayer E, Orc Slayer F, Assassinations, Herbalist Series C, Skeleton Slayer C, Notists, God Series D, Potion Selling F, Potion Failed D, Potion Succeeded D, Alchemist Series F, Money Makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Sold, Herbs Bought, Acknowledged, Disgraceful, S, Ignored, Forgotten, Zombie Slayer F, Creations, Illusion Series A, Deluded, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 5, Actives, Status Level 52D, System Library Level 50D, Mana Coat Level 20E, Mana Wave Level 3F, Ice Spine Level 10F, Ice Sword Level 1F, Icicle Level 15F, Long Slash Level 3F, Ice Expansion Level 4F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20E, Swordsmanship Level 23E, Sword Mastery Level 14F, Mana Control Level 35E, Ice Control Level 25E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 9F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 13F, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10F, Brainwash Resistance Level 66C, Night Vision Level 10F, Slight Stamina Boost Level 3F, Slight Agility Boost Level 6F, Slight Strength Boost Level 9F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 42, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 33, Magic Knowledge Level 23, Ice Mastery Level 16, Unique, Appraisal Level 42, Sealed Two Thirds, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimo I Rank D, 44400. It seems like the sealed skill was graded as unique and I'm missing one title for it. Your class also ranked up Iris. 
I wonder what ranking up a class does since mine doesn't have an experience system like yours do. I feel like my skills have been growing faster from the last rank up so it should be that. I could appraise but we might need the mana. True better save it plus it's not like we can do anything about it anyway. By the way, Aurora you can consume all the 14 soul stones round us, see if we can rank you up further at some point you're bound to get something that helps you, hopefully. She turns into a grimoire and consumes all the soul stones around, then converts them. I'll be giving you the skills I got from the skeletons aside of the brainwash resistance. Aurora used telepathy to convey a message to Iris. Okay, sister. I should spend my skill points while she chooses the skills. Class skill list please. Notice, witchcraft skill tree list has been updated appraise. Please do. Notice, 800 mana has been deducted. Babel Witchcraft Skill Tree. Actives. Destiny Cards. Once per day can use a random card out of a 22 deck that will bring a catastrophe into the world for a limited time or till a condition is met. Grave Consequences. Dark Alchemy. Crafting potions with limited effects and that only last for so long, starts at 10%, 0, 5% per level. Mana Shield. 0.25% damage is absorbed to MP instead of HP, 0.25% per level. Drain HP, absorbs 1 horsepower per minute from enemies around healing itself, plus 1 per level. Decay, it'll rot slowly something it touches, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Magic analysis, can analyze the properties of the magic, of a magic circle or the area itself, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Curses, it requires casting time, the higher the proficiency the faster it'll be. Frog, may transform the target into a frog for a period of time, zero, 25 percent chance of success, zero, 25 percent per level. Delirium, makes the target have a random illusion for a period of time, half a percent chance of success half a percent per level mute makes it so that they can't speak for a period of time half a percent chance of success half a percent per level blind makes it so that the vision for a period of time half a percent chance of success half a percent per level deafen makes it so that the hearing for a period of time half a percent chance of success half a percent per level taste makes it so that they lose palate for a period of time Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Smell. Makes it so that they lose the sense of smell for a period of time. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Paralysis. Paralyzes a random part of the body. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Fear. Induces fear towards the target. Half a percent chance of success. Half a percent per level. Confusion causes confusion towards the target, half a percent chance of success, half a percent per level. Rituals, require spending mana to create a magical circle, needs tremendous amounts of mana, can accumulate every day. Memory loss, makes targets inside the magical circle lose some memories, 0.25 percent chance of success. 0.25% per level. Sleep, makes targets inside the magical circle fall asleep. 0.25% chance of success. 0.25% per level. Snow falling, due to ice element snow will fall. Everywhere that snows will be RS mana territory. 0.25% chance of success. 0.25% per level. Cursing objects. A random curse will be applied in an object, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Taint, it'll taint users inside the magical circle in some way, 0, 25% chance of success, 0, 25% per level. Magical barrier, defends a place inside a magical circle from magic damage. Physical barrier. Defends a place inside a magical circle from physical damage. Detection barrier. Detects anything that enters inside a magical circle. Babel arts. Grimoire possession. Links oneself with the Grimoire to use pandemonium skills. 
may affect personality while in use. Grimoire announcing, unlinks oneself with the Grimoire, pandemonium skill, unlearned, pandemonium skill, unlearned, pandemonium skill, unlearned, Grimoire skill F, telepathy. Grimoire skill E, giver, passives, Babel mastery, increases specified proficiency by 1% per level, may affect personality. Grimoire mastery increases specified proficiency by 1% per level, may affect personality, witchcraft, increases the whole skill tree proficiency by 0.1% per level, may affect personality, curses mastery, increases curse chance to activate by 0.25% per level, may affect personality, rituals mastery, increases ritual chance to activate by 0.25% per level, may affect personality. Dark Alchemy Mastery, increases alchemy chance by 0.2% per level, may affect personality. Magic Control, increases specified proficiency by 0.25% per level. Magic Attack Slight Boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic Defense Slight Boost, increases specified proficiency by 1 per level. Magic Knowledge Slight Boost, increases intelligence by one per level charm increases charm by one attracts generally the opposite gender one per level mp absorption if damaged by an enemy magical skill heal mp by 0.25 percent of its total mana cost 0.25 percent per level fire mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level water mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level earth mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level air mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level nature mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level poison mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level acid mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level ice mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level explosion mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level lightning mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level spirit mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level summoning mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level light mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level dark mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level time mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level space mastery increases specified proficiency by one percent per level destiny cards that's a new one and it sounds very dangerous so I'll learn it and use it if I ever run into an emergency. There's some other skills I don't remember seeing. Was it from ranking up or evolving the class? I want Grimoire Possession and Renouncing along with Babel Mastery and Grimoire Mastery. I hope with the last one it'll help Aurora get stronger in some way. Notice, skills successfully learned, status updated. I'm done, Iris. Same here sister. I'm also out of mana so let's head home before things get dangerous. Alright, still need to see how Mark is doing with the knowledge of warfare I left with him. She sighs due to having fun in the ruins. I smile at her and grab her hand then speak, cheer up, things will get better eventually. Worst case you can be an amazing general, by itself it can also be a great strength that I can't keep up with, after all. I'm just one little witch. Ideally I'd be able to command 200,000 men. But it'll depend on how everything goes from now on towards the future where the Goblin King will invade. I want to strike him down before he gets even more soldiers. They reproduce faster than us from what appraisal told me. Yes, and their statuses are also better in raw combat, so that's dangerous. I have an idea that we could try tomorrow morning after I recover my mana fully. An idea? Aurora asks curiously as every time I have won something interesting usually happens. Yes, you'll see it. I smile playfully as we head home. The following day 31 of the sun season at Iris' room. I start the day by being woken up by a voice, Iris. Iris, 
Wake up, I half open my eyes and see a naked girl next to me. Just ten more minutes sister, I turn around closing my eyes fully. I'll be going on ahead Mark is waiting for me. If you don't get up I'll leave the room naked. The steps she takes to the door echo and when her hand is about to reach the handle. My body automatically moves out of bed. My palm aims to the handle and I imagine it being frozen. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted. I open my eyes and speak angrily, where do you think you're going in that state idiot sister? I approach her taking three big steps. You know you didn't need to freeze the door right? How are we going to open it now? I kick her in the back of the leg, near the knee making her fall. That doesn't matter you shall get dressed right away. I throw her some clothes and dress some myself. So hush right from the morning, I won't wake you up next time. She laughed after using a mocking tone, hopefully not the way you did today. Next time I'm freezing your entire body, then I become an ice crystal. She imagines herself inside of one, it wouldn't be so different than being trapped inside the mirror, but at least I'd be quite beautiful. I let out a yawn still feeling drowsy, that's true, talking about the mirror did you figure something out yet? Aside from it decreasing back to level 1 after I exhausted my soul power no. It decreased level, I shout confused startling her, yeah, I don't get what soul power had to do with it or if that was even the reason for it, what if it needs someone with a big soul? I ask with expectant eyes filled with curiosity while smiling happily, I could give the mirror to you if you'd like, aside from its hardness it's pretty useless. Sure let's try it, but, can you even give me skills that belong to you? Worth an attempt, give the mirror to Iris. A voice pops up in my mind after Aurora tries to give me the skill. Notice, a cursed skill has been received. Notice, soul bound curse has gotten stronger. Notice, Aurora and Iris's souls have resounded with one another. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted by appraisal. Soul power from Aurora can now be added to Iris' soul to increase it further. Due to a system failure the rate is already 10 times higher. Aurora looks at her sister who has gone silent for a while after the mirror vanishing and speaks, you okay Iris? With a dumbfounded expression, a voice comes out from me. Yes it seems as you can now give me your soul power to make my soul stronger, it seems both of them have resounded, not sure what that means. In this case, I believe it means we've linked further kind of like having a direct connection between our souls like they glued one to another. I suppose since I believe we were split by the system through this new body of mine, and with both contracts, we were able to maintain it to some extent, I think I understand, also due to some system failure the amount you consume is ten times higher than normal, in other words, I receive it like that too. That's good I guess, I don't really know how that would help you, but in my case, it sure speeds my growth as a weapon a lot. True. And I'm not sure myself. But let me check status see if I can figure something out. Perhaps Soulbound will show useful information. Notice. 10 mana has been deducted. Status. Level. 12. Experience. 141,200 fame. 250. Disgrace. 13,620 unique class. Babel Witch. Rank 3. Experience 1288 thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 690-690, mana, 2332840 status points colon 0 strength, 185 plus 9, stamina, 66 plus 3, agility, 85 plus 6, dexterity, 107. Intelligence, 174 plus 10, Wisdom, 275 plus 9 Attack, 0, Magic Attack colon 0, Defense colon 0, Magic Defense, 0 Soul, 7720 Titles, Reincarnated plus S, Manas, Mana Exhausts, Healths, Beginner Readers, Purchases, Wisdoms, Reader Series B, Body Trainings, Animal Slayers, Intermediate Readers, Cooked Fishes, Preyed Upon F, Cheetah, S, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Elements, 
contracted, peasant, F, class A, monster slayer D, slime slayer C, skill mastery A, tree chopper C, tree types, tree series D, log maker C, tree planters, book thief D, criminal D, expert read ref, herbs gathered, herbs types is, potion brewers, potion type C, status mastery D, beast slayer D, horned rabbit slayer C, potion administer def, goblin slayer E, orc slayer F, assassinations, herbalist series C, skeleton slayer C, notices, god series D, potion selling F, potion failed D, potion succeeded D, alchemist series F, money makers, merchant series C, tradings, Herb solds, herbs boards, acknowledged, disgraceful, s, ignored, forgotten, zombie slayer f, creations, illusion series a, deluded, completed series, fishings, farmings, skill points, 2. Actives, status level 54 d, system library level 50 d, mana coat level 20 e, mana wave level 3 f, I spine level 10 f, Ice Sword Level 1 F, Icicle Level 15 F, Long Slash Level 13 F, Ice Expansion Level 4 F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20 E, Swordsmanship Level 23 E, Sword Mastery Level 14 F, Mana Control Level 35 E, Ice Control Level 25 E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 9 F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 15 F, Acid Resistance Level 1 F, Axe Art Level 1 F, Axe Mastery Level 1 F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10 F, Brainwash Resistance Level 66 C, Night Vision Level 10 F, Slight Stamina Boost Level 3 F, Slight Agility Boost Level 6 F, Slight Strength Boost Level 9 F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 50. Destiny Cards Level 1, Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 10, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 42, Curses Mastery Level 14, Rituals Mastery Level 14, Magic Control Level 33, Magic Knowledge Level 23, Ice Mastery Level 15, Babel Mastery Level 1, Grimoire Mastery Level 1, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimo I announcing unique appraisal level 42 sealed two-thirds cursed unidentified skill mirror level 7 rare element ice cursed soul bound Grimo I rank D 184 400 seems like I won two skill points probably from the skill mastery title which is rank a only one more to go in my case the mirror is level 7 Aurora and my soul is worth 7,000. I had between 0 to 2000 soul so between level 1 to 2. Since I was always going up and down it probably didn't matter much. But since you have it at a higher level it should work better for you. Could also be because I'm a weapon too with soul power instead of soul. True that now it is time to find out the truth. Appraise mirror. I point towards the mirror word on my screen with a big smile. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Very sturdy mirror protected by an unidentified barrier, failed to appraise the magical component. A unique skilled failed to appraise a cursed skill? I guess one rank away is too much. Perhaps it has a different solution. What if I try something else? I point my palm towards the room floor, mirror. Once the big mirror appears, magic analysis. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, analyzing barrier, failure. So you want to fight me eh? I will let you know that this skill even worked against a god barrier. Status spam it till it works. Aurora looks at me confused and quietly while I'm speaking alone, tilting her head in the process. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. After 8 tries it finally worked. Notice, analyzing barrier. Success. Notice, space element detected, portal type of space unidentified location. Notice, curse detected may form a pact with the mirror to use it. However, might get cursed by the old owner barrier. I start losing my senses and place my hand on the head. Damn not now, Aurora please give me the brainwash resistance skill first. As Aurora changed into Grimoire form to proceed to that, a very cold tone came out of my mouth. 
grimoire possession, she got pulled into Iris's hand and their souls resonated further increasing the personality alteration. A wicked smile appeared on the girl's face. Learn cursing objects and decay skills, an unusual low tone echoed in the room as a chill aura spread from Iris's body. Notice, skills successfully learned, status updated. Iris drew an empty circle around the room with her mana and then spoke, snow falling ritual below the girl. The empty circle was filled with a five point star. Iris smiled, magic analyzes, appraisal, status, system library, snow falling ritual ten pointed star. Notice, 1500 mana has been deducted from the grimoire. The star inside the circle transformed into a ten-pointed star, slowly filling the entire room with higher mana density. She approaches the mirror and places a hand in the now visible barrier due to the room filled with mana, and pieces of snow falling. Decay cursed barrier. The barrier transforms into a shadow who looks around grasping the situation around. Then noticing the danger, tries to return to its master while the girl without losing time, voices out the next command. Magic analysis. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Notice, analyzing shadow. Notice, weakness was analyzed successfully. Notice, due to decaying, the curse can no longer attack Iris, but it's trying to return to warn its master, Romeo the Sage. A voice full of ill intentions that sounded demonic left her lips. That would trouble my master, an evil smile then filled her expression turning a little girl into a very scary one. She raises her arm pointing with a finger to the curse, dark bind. A dark hand was summoned below the shadow close to the mirror grabbing it, ice sword, curse objected. Notice, 300 mana has been deducted. Notice, object successfully cursed, due to magic analysis skill, it was cursed with the proper countermeasure. Dark bind. A second dark hand entangles the shadow that is no shape, and then the two of them pull it towards the sword. Notice, 100 mana has been deducted, begone worm, Iris pierces the shadow completely corroding it, enhanced by the curse and decay effect making the shadow curse unable to resist, ending up perishing. System, the title curse slayer has been received, notice, 1000 experience has been rewarded from a sentient curse. Grimo Iron announcing, Aurora transformed back into human form and spoke. Who are you? Why did you call Iris master? A kind smile appeared on Iris's face and then with her mana, she wrote the word Iris on the mirror, and spoke. Copy me Aurora. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Aurora knowing everything that transpired copied her sister's behavior, writing her own name on the opposite side of the mirror. Can you at least tell me what's on the other side of this mirror? Aurora approached Iris who decided to push her into the mirror with an evil smile. If you're that curious, go find out yourself, as the words left Tyress's mouth. Aurora was sucked into the mirror while screaming due to her trauma. Erase ritual, erase cursed sword, the mana density around her calmed down and she jumped inside the mirror with the eyes closed then Iris's senses returned. I open my eyes quickly and see myself entering the mirror. After going through the mirror I find my sister on her knees crying on the ground filled with snow. This place is so beautiful and white everywhere. What's wrong Aurora? She looked up at me with a face full of sadness and despair and spoke. Iris? Is that really you? Of course silly, who else would I be? I drop on my knees and hug her while patting her hair softly. Don't cry my beautiful sister, everything is okay. Or rather where are we? There's something inside of you Iris. I don't know what it is but it felt creepy. I know Aurora. I've been trying to fight it. However, I can only hope my brainwash resistance gets maxed fast. I saw the things it did, the way it used your skills. It was like a full-fledged witch, someone who knew your class truly well. I pass my fingers on her cheeks cleaning her tears, and say softly. Don't worry dear sister I also saw what it did and I've learned with it. I turn around at the mirror and lightly touch it. The black color of the wood around the glass changes color to brown. This made me feel that I can go through it again, meaning this place is just somewhere else. Our names are signed even in this side too. It seems we can go back any time, so don't fret. Aurora upon hearing my words feels relieved nodding at my words. Now the question is where are we? I look around me finding everything white. 
filled with snow and I start realizing something. Take a good look around Aurora, don't you notice something strange? She gets up from the ground and after checking everything words come out. This area is rather small, isn't it? Come, let's walk. Mirror retrieve. It disappears and then I grab her hand and we walk for a few minutes in a straight line, eventually reaching the end of the snow. That looks like blackness, a void perhaps? What do you think Iris? Without fear, I try to pass my hand above and beyond the line where the snow ends. My hand stops at an invisible wall. Well, this is a good place for us to store things or hide if something happens. True Iris. You can even practice your witchcraft without anyone bothering you since the mana density in this place feels a lot better. I think I read about that somewhere, what was it again? The higher density the faster your mana recovers. It is a good place to practice skills or in your case swordsmanship and witchcraft. True, I won't have to hide my class and skills anymore. I'm already loving this place just on that alone, a small world with no one to bother us. We should get back though. I'm making Mark wait, mother might come in and make a ruckus that we're not in the room. Yes, you're right let's go, mirror. The big old mirror appears, I grab her hand and we go through together. Shortly after we return to the exact same spot inside the room. Seems like we return to the spot from where we enter. Indeed that's good to know, alright we'll talk later. She hugs me tight one last time for a long time whilst calming her breathing, and then leaves through the door using her element to remove the ice in the handle. Once she does I look at the mirror, at the reflection in front of me. So who are you? I wait a bit and nothing happens. Well, was worth a try. Retrieve mirror, the mirror vanished and I left home towards the trees behind the house, grabbing an axe on the way. I spent the morning watering fields, cutting trees, and turning them into logs while mother teaches the kids. The guards that stay at my door are very kind and are always smiling when they see me, so are the boys. I wonder why everyone always stares at me, why they bother themselves at all. I'm just a random kid. I head home to take a shower from all the sweat, then get myself into a light blue dress. I take the bag that contains the rabbit horns, the two cards, and head to the guild. Some time passes and I shout from the entrance making everyone aware of me while heading towards the usual balcony, Leon or Iris. She shouts equally loud feeling very happy and excited to see me, making some of the adventures around do a cringe expression. Haven't seen you in a while, how have you been? I place the bag with the horns and the quest together with our cards. I've been good handling all these adventurers, as usual. How about you and your sister, been having a good questing? Yes, we've been slowly progressing. That's the way. Despite being slow it'll end up always part of the progress, after a while of checking everything on the table, she shouts happily at me. Speaking of which Miss Iris, congrats to you and Aurora on the rank D. Here's your card with the 408 points and the 120 copper for the horns. Thank you, Leonor, even though we actually reached the D rank by doing F quests. That's a safe way to go at it, nothing to be ashamed of. Plus people usually party with a lot of others to do higher ranked quests. True thank you. What quests do you have? I have a rank F with slimes, a rank E with goblins. As she was going to say other things, I quickly interrupt her. I'll take the slimes one. Since sister busy, so I'll go at it safely. Here you go, I read the paper wondering where it would take me this time around. Quest rank. F an unknown group of slimes have been sighted on the east woods beyond the farm of the Astia village. They have killed a few adventurers who passed through. You'll be rewarded 2 points and 5 copper per slime guild. Be careful Iris, as there have been some victims already, and if you'd like. There's a newcomer who could use a hand as he never killed a monster before. Leonor points to the right, that bald guy Edgar, with the octagram shield. Can introduce you to him if you'd like company. Sure. I'll take the person along. I walk towards a really tall man. Mr. Edgar? He turns around as I interrupt some conversation he's having, and looks at his front not seeing anyone then looks lower seeing me. A little girl. The blonde rookie. Iris right? Yes, hello. I reply with a smile then add a quick explanation. Leonor told me a newcomer had joined so she told me to ask you about it. He takes a few steps to the side. 
Hey Kaito, Gora. This little lady wants to talk with you guys. I look at the two boys in front of me they have brown hair and brown dark eyes. One is really fat and they're both taller and look older than me. They approach me and say, hello I'm Kaito a spearman, he says with a charming smile, and the other one says in a friendly tone, hi I'm Gora, a master chef. Spearman and is holding a spear, easy to understand but what's a master chef? One who cooks or something? What's up with the big bag he's carrying? Hello I'm Iris and the receptionist told me you two were looking for some help. I'm currently heading to do a slime quest in case you two would like to join me. This young kid is adorable even in our old world I didn't see many blondes with green eyes. I hope she won't bully me like the other girls at the church. Nice to meet you, Iris. Gora replies happily while bowing lightly in my way, even though I'm not a noble making me feel awkward. Are you strong? Kaito asks curiously, so he doesn't intend to party with weak people. I guess I'm a little bit strong? Kaito looks at Edgar who nods at him remembering their talk by the fountain. Actually it doesn't matter, we'd be happy to be part of your party Iris. Worst case maybe I can befriend her and get some free potions and other goods from the parents. Sure, I reply with a smile. Let's head to the eastwards then near the farm fields. We walk our way there while chatting. I haven't seen you two around the village before, are you new? I asked them filled with curiosity. You wouldn't believe us if we told you we came from a different world, Kaito said with a joking face. Why not? It's pretty normal for the goddess Arya to bring heroes to this world. Oh right. They did say the goddess does it every 100 years or something, Kaito thought finding it less amusing, and totally unlike the way. He imagined the conversation scenario to be. We're two of the thirty summoned people from this time around, we used to live in a world much more civilized, and with greater science than this one with barely any wars in it. That sounds like a really nice world Gora, even though I don't know some terms. I smile kindly at him. Imagining what kind of world that could be. Iris seems pretty friendly so let's surprise her. He stops moving and takes out a small box from the big bag and from it a fish. He uses divine cooking while imagining a food called takoyaki. After a few minutes, a plate with takoyaki on top appeared in his hands. Here Iris, feel free to try this. It's a meal from our homeland. You can cook things from your past world. That's amazing. I stretch my hand and grab one of the balls eating it. Notice, a plus 5 agility buff was added from the food. Your food gives statuses? That's pretty incredible. The food I always cook is just food, I laugh at that as nothing I made gave me anything, other than filling my belly along with cooking titles. How do you know that? Kaito asks confused as to when he tried some food, had to check personal data to find out. I checked it with a skill, I nom another. This is so good. You're truly talented Gora. Upon hearing my compliment he became red like a tomato and spoke. Please eat more. If you're still hungry after this I'll make some more food. I finished the plate then said. I appreciate it but I'm good for now. Thank you very much it was delicious. We resume our walk along with our conversation. Now that I think about it. What level are the two of you? We're both level 1. We haven't really fought anything so far. Since we just came from the capital, Kaito replied with a relaxed tone while looking at me. I suppose you don't know how to use that spear then? Kaito taking it personally replies a little colder, what has that to do with you? My mother teaches young kids. One of them is an adventurer, maybe you could become a student and learn more about your weapon. I smiled innocently while trying to be helpful to the newcomers. Gora proceeds to hit Kaito with his elbow discreetly making him understand that I didn't mention anything bad with it. Sorry about my tone. I thought you were making fun of me. Really? I didn't notice. We keep walking as I'm used to a lot worse from my sister, and then I continue the conversation. Is it okay if I ask more about your world? I'm a very curious girl. It's fine by me. What would you like to know Iris? Gora quickly replies in a friendly tone. What did you guys like most about your world? food. Games. Games like hide and seek. I ask confused at Kaito's words. They look at each other laughing. 
We had some very advanced games where we could have adventures in unrealistic worlds created by smart humans. It's a little hard to explain but it's like we could use magic and skills without actually being able to. That does sound confusing. They chuckle without being able to avoid it. As I make a funny expression not understanding it. It's kind of like a made up world where you get to do the things you can do in this world. Gora simplified since he realized he's talking to a little kid. Oh, now I understand a bit better. Thank you both. I smile joyfully at them wondering what kind of beings would live in such worlds. This girl sure is always happy, compared to the girls from our class she's a lot nicer excluding perhaps Song Oka who is shy and kind. Kaito looked at Gora who seemed to be thinking on something as well. I hope Iris grows into a good woman unlike Yano and Aiko. Those two are the worst. Gora sighed not noticing Kaito staring as he faced forward while walking. Hello, long time no see. I shout happily seeing a familiar face from the first quest I did with Elise and Aurora. The old man turns around, oh if it isn't Aris the one who helped me last time along with the other two girls. How have you three been child? Everything's fine. We have been doing a lot of quests and we're now both rank D adventurers. She's two ranks above us? Kaito thought surprised while looking at Gora who didn't pay much attention to it. Congrats young lady. I hope you can become like the lady who used to be a peasant and then became a hero, showing the world that it is possible for lowborns to surpass nobles. If you were to become this kingdom hero. Ah oh, what delight that would bring to my heart. He coughed twice possibly from talking too much, age, or even sickness. I wouldn't dare dream that high. I smile, and then I say. I just want to become stronger and help others through questing. The old man laughed lightly. I'm sure you'll grow stronger with such a good goal. He pointed a little southeast. You should find the forest there since I believe you've come for another slime hunt. A kind smile then appeared on his expression while extending a hand to the top of my head, giving me a light pat. Yes. Leave it to us. He looked at both of them. Then he stared at Kaito for a bit. Make sure you treat this girl properly. She's the farmer's pride. The old man laughed loudly for a bit then resumes coughing rather aggressively. Ah, yes? Of course, Kaito replied confused feeling targeted making Goro chuckle. I didn't know about being their pride. Did no one care about a slime quest or something? Perhaps it's due to me being a peasant and so young? Well, it doesn't really matter. I'm glad I can be of help. I start walking while waving the old man goodbye, and then a few minutes later we arrive at the forest. Gora make me a meat dish for strength. Coming right out. He took out a rabbit and started making something with it. I'm assuming you'll do all the fighting for Gora? R. Yeah, I'm the offensive class after all. I believe you both could fight together. Before I became a wizard I would just farm fields. You think I can fight? Gora asked surprised while preparing the ingredient. No way you can. Look at yourself your weight too heavy and have a support class. Upon hearing Kaito's words he made a sad expression. I believe you both can fight equally well. I look seriously at Gora who looks back at me with sad eyes. I could give it a try, Gora said trying to reach my expectations. Do you have anything you can use as a weapon? Sadly not. I only brought raw food. What weapon would you like to have? I'm pretty big so maybe a hammer? Did hammers exist in medieval times? He looks at his friend who was a little upset with the whole conversation. Since the games he played, every class had their own specific role. I guess they did, small ones for crafting. Ice hammer, I create a beautiful big hammer made of my element around 60 centimeters long, with a big icy rectangle on top. Notice, the skill ice hammer has been acquired. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Here you go Gora, I extend it to him while feeling the weight of it. He puts the bag on the floor and grabs it with one hand, and then realizing it is pretty heavy ending up using both hands. Whoa, this is pretty heavy but so cool at the same time. He said happily loving it. All right, I'll stay behind both of you and support you whenever necessary. Thank you. Iris Gora shouted happily and ran making noise with each step towards the forest. Kaito looked coldly at me, and then followed through. Look Kaito a clear slime here. He lifts the hammer really high and lets it fall on the slime smashing it. Notice, 
10 experience has been rewarded from a slime, the poor slime, I chuckled, oddly finding it funny how a living being just got smashed rather violently, he then lifted the hammer and noticed a shiny stone on the ground, what's that thing, Iris, it's a soul stone it contains a portion of the monster inside, we use it as currency in the guild, a way for them to know how many we've defeated, oh, the hammer is a bit heavy so if you could, you can grab those for us, he said happily thinking of a way to not make me do anything dangerous. Sure, leave it to me Gora. I look at Kaito who's struggling against a slime. Even with a strength buff and all my points on strength, I'm not dealing much damage to this thing. What's wrong with these monsters they're supposed to be extremely weak, yet Gora one-shotted one. What the hell is this? Gora even has less strength than me so how is he able to do that? Is this slime simply stronger than the one he defeated? Let me. Yo Gora, can you handle this slime too? Yeah bro. Leave it to me. He runs closer and then smashes the slime in one go. Notice. 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. These are things are so weak. Gora laughed making the classmate become full of rage, which led to shouting, What the fuck? Why are your attacks working when I'm the one with higher strength? That's because they're practically immune to physical attacks since they're made of mana, while Gora has a weapon made of ice which these in specific are weak to. Ice Spear. I then close my eyes imagining a long stick with a very shaped edge at the tip. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Notice, the skill Ice Spear has been acquired. Try this one, I extend it to him who takes it with brute force. This guy isn't very nice. Gora notices my displeased face. Kaito then places his other spear near a tree and aims at a nearby slime killing it in two hits. Notice. 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. This weapon really does make a difference. These freaking monsters made me show a bad side of me. He then runs at another one and starts piercing it relentlessly, to relieve the anger dwelling inside. Notice. 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Goro approaches me and speaks, sorry about Kaito's behavior he is a prideful person but means no harm. I look at the one who approached me and reply, in the future, I'm willing to party with you, but not with him in case you end up alone, ask Leonor to tell me that you need help, I'm honored and who's Leonor? The most beautiful and kindest guild receptionist. Oh alright, I'll ask in the guild for her if necessary, thank you, Iris. Well go smash more things, I'll pick the stones meanwhile, the weapons won't last forever. R, right sorry, he runs at slimes while having fun smashing them. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, 10 experience has been rewarded from a slime. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 13. Seems like he's having fun. I could try to make more weapons in the future, just to get a lot of skills to rank up the skill mastery further. I want to learn mana shield now that I have a skill point. Notice, skill successfully learned, status updated. Mana shield, I start feeling a thin barrier being formed around me. Didn't cost any mana to activate it, meaning that the skill will probably consume mana whenever used. I think it was when someone attacked me or something. Ah, a loud shout surprised me and Gora too, who isn't too far ahead from me. I run as fast as I can to the scream direction. Finding a red slime burning Kaito's legs who's on the floor screaming, Icicle, I shoot four small icicles at it. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a slime. I run closer to him and lightly freeze the burnt areas while he makes a pained expression. How did this happen? I ask confused not expecting this to occur. My legs hurt. Ugh that stupid slime was hiding behind a bush and I just ran on it without realizing it. I guess that's what happens when you're too angry to notice your surroundings, something my mother would surely teach you. Kaito, check your health, Gora says worriedly as he approaches. Ugh, personal data. He checks the information in front of him, in an invisible screen to me. I have around 60 health left, and got a burning resistance skill from that so just need to recover, apparently also leveled up, let me put the points on stamina just in case, seems like he's using his head now, perhaps the pain sorted the priorities up, I collect the soul stone and then coat my hands with ice, freezing and blocking an incoming fireball from further ahead, 
Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Noticing this, Gora runs around flanking the fire slime, while I keep holding my position protecting Kaito behind me. To think I'd be protected by a little girl, just how low have I gone in this world, just how hard is this shitty place. If it wasn't for this girl I'd most likely be dead by now. Not only did I ignore the rest of my statuses, but I also thought I had become op just for receiving a temporary stronger weapon than mine. I'm so retarded. Before we came into this world the goddess told us we're part of one of the weakest races. I just assumed that I'd instantly be able to beat slimes easily which in games are usually super weak, very often the weakest. In fact, why are slimes this tough? Was the red slime an advanced type? I guess it has a skill and since it can be used in close and long range, it gives him a lot of advantages over me. Notice, 50 experience has been rewarded from a slime. At least Gora is being more successful than me, seems like I'm the one falling into supporting. If I don't step my game up pile. Can you walk? I ask him while extending my hand in his direction. Yeah, don't worry. He grabs her slim hand which gets him to be pulled out of the ground easily. Huh? This girl is pretty strong. How is the girl like this? She's so much younger than me. How is this possible? The goddess gave us a blessing skill and told us these skills would allow us to grow faster than most humans. He looks at me startled making me do a confused look back at him. I guess that since she's been living here, probably had a lot of time to develop her abilities. Meaning that in a few years I should pass her as I have a blessed skill and she won't get any easily. Speaking of which I haven't tried my skill yet, since I needed a spear to use it. The reason why I went to get one at the blacksmith. I follow Kaito who seems like he's looking for something along with Gora, who brings me the soul stone from the fire slime he smashed storing it in the bag along with the rest of them. Found one, he gets closer to the slime and shouts. Dragon thrust from the ice spear, a fire dragon came out melting the weapon and burning the slime on the ground into dust. I've never seen that skill. Was it the skill the goddess gave him? It was pretty cool, even though I prefer the good food from Gora's one. That was amazing Kaito. Yeah, even though it consumed all my mana. Personal data. Upon checking the changes he makes a shocked expression. My max health decreased and my mana got a lot higher. Mana exhaust, health, and slime slayer titles. He shouted confused at the information in front of him. That was my reaction a while ago. I smile happily reminiscing my starting line with the system library. That happened to me too Kaito when I used skills for the first time. Oh, so it's a normal thing from these titles. Didn't the church tell you guys about them? I ask with a calm tone while making an innocent expression. No they only told us to spread the statuses points evenly as we'd need a bit of everything, and then they'd get us some good equipment to make it easier for us to level up. Are they scared they get disgrace titles or something? If they don't get many titles like I did they'll be extra weak. Should I tell them? Since titles give good things we can try to collect some more of them as we go. Gora voiced his opinion on the matter keeping me silent. Yeah, let's share this information with the girls at the church, and send a message to the rest of our summoned friends about it. Let's take a rest here before adventuring deeper, I suggest cautiously so we can recover before attempting to go further. Sure, I'll go grab the food bag and make us something. Yes please. Your food is the best. Doing this quest with these two is actually more enjoyable than I thought it would be. Kaito let out a smile while thinking about it. These weapons you've drawn Aurora, you say they're able to possibly take down the flying type enemies if they come close to our walls, Mark points at the excellent sketch on the white paper notebook. Depending on the materials used and the enchantment, I believe it can even take down the famous dragon like buffing it with a hundred different skills. This way we can defend the kingdom capital. If one day the red dragon or any other ancient monster comes by, we'll be able to fight it off. But why water enchantments? In case our soldiers hit them with this gigantic ballista the water enchantment will block fire magic from being formed inside the dragon. Mark scratches his chin finding it interesting since Aurora's words could indeed work. Furthermore there's a chance we get invaded from the mountains, I don't know what other races there are, but from Ryu books, I saw dragons, wyverns, and harpies, 
They were all flying types. We have monsters called Gillums at the top of the mountains their territory stretches pretty far, and they fight off whatever comes from both sides, not that long ago they'd stop the advancements of ogres. Yes I read about them, but a dragon would melt the Gillums probably, perhaps you're right even though they can throw a big to a gigantic's boulder, so even dragons need to be careful. Even the red dragon in the north, that one is the sole exception Aurora. It can probably melt everything it wants from afar. Another thing I'm interested in is making observation towers. We can put a bell on top of it to alert everyone around it. Even use a smoke that leads all the way to other towers making a path of smoke back to the capital. But I'd recommend bells. I saw that in your book, and honestly that's a very interesting idea. We could put a soldier with the fire element in it. Also some archers with zoom skill which allows them to see further ahead, reducing the tower's quantity. We need to improve the communication from our borders to the center of the kingdom if we want to expand successfully. If one of the borders is attacked we need to know from where to respond swiftly. By having a better way of passing messages we can distribute the army better, I understand. Another important thing is increasing the cereals farming fields and put the soldiers also working on them when they have nothing to do, to self-sustain themselves. That's an interesting approach. They tend to be lazy while on duty. These farming fields would extend near the borders so that we don't have to use wagons to carry the cereals later. Oh, now I fully understand what you meant by that. You're almost there Mark. It is also to enable our armies to be at the borders instead of sitting on the capital doing nothing. This way we can also increase the recruitment and any extra labor will be used to chop woods, farming, fishing. This includes building walls, camps, and towers. Thanks to those things, they would receive titles, it would make them naturally stronger. Your perspective to war is out of this world Aurora. In the end, what you call defense is in reality kingdom building. We'd only leave enough troops back to protect the kingdom and the capital from any rebellion or criminal groups. Keeping it safe is also the army job. If we keep the army outside at the borders won't the population be able to turn on the king easily? We'll make the population expand to the borders by granting them all kinds of new jobs. Instead, make the citizens follow the armies to the borders. You're brilliant. How about the factions? I believe that the nobles will want to partake part of their armies, especially by making rewards for having ranks in the army based on the new territories we'll get. Whoever does more in war will get more rewards. We'd have to reform the ranks further, however. That'd indeed keep the factions greedy and busy. It could even make them more motivated to participate in war. Yes, exactly, but it will also make the church expand further into the borders by consequence, as their followers will want to support the saintess who will be at the front lines. Mark hits the table with both hands smiling excitedly. Everything could work. This is very interesting and exciting. It couldn't. It will. After all, it was devised by me. Can't even call you arrogant as it is slowly taking shape into reality. Mark started laughing happily enjoying the idea. Do not allow the church to retain 30 summoned either, make them be part of the expeditions and of this development. Surely there'll be some interesting ones who'll have blessed skills that can make this progression faster, or even bring something useful to the table. So keep someone from our side take a look at them. We'll have a list of their classes and divine skills when Ryu comes back as well. Any contact with them that you may see fit, just leave it to us to make it happen. Very good, at that point, we'll be able to deepen this plan. I'll also make sure the Crown Prince understands everything that we discuss here, allowing him to discuss it with the King, and then we can start acting. We'll have problems at some point keeping the main roads safe from bandits and criminals. Especially so if we need to transport armory, equipment, food during our lines whenever we need them from the capital. Solution? Reforming the church about the disgrace titles and classes as they can be used to further strengthen our race. Don't discriminate against anyone especially peasants, as they overwhelm the nobles by number and allow them to become guards. If we did that it would be a direct confrontation with the church. Make them send the saintess and the elites to a different location, and I'll purge these eight archbishops along with the pope and whoever dares stand in the way. Aurora said coldly while creating an ominous aura around making Mark slightly shake. This girl is truly merciless, 
But she's right. If we're going to do this, we can't be held back by anyone, if we wish to expand the territory. We need the crown prince to turn into the king gaining full power. That way we would be able to do as we wish, and if everything truly goes as this girl says, who knows how far I'll see the humans go. Mark looked down at the notes then at her making a serious expression. I'll convey the message to the crown prince, however, make sure you keep an eye on your surroundings. Once we all start moving to do everything, the way your family may be seen by the different factions will surely differ. It's fine, by that time I believe Iris will be able to deal with those things, she just needs to keep getting stronger and stronger. Eventually once you become a general, the royal guard will also accompany you and guard you, you'll just have to wait till you have the title. Your family too will be secured, so you can focus on the battlefield. Seems like you're starting to believe I'll lead the army mark. Upon hearing these words he smiled and then replied. Strangely after living for so long, I've never been more sure of anything in my life. The further we extend the better our transporting food methods will have to become, so pass three pages ahead. I drew a different mechanism that can be pulled by horses. Also investing in such animals long term will be very beneficial. We'll have to get some sponsoring from all the factions for all of this, but it should be quite doable they are pretty wealthy. We can also set taxes lower to live near the borders and merchanting licenses so that whoever wishes to sell goods will have to get and renew them every year. Of course, this applies to nobles too, the space they use will also have a cost, especially inside new camps. If everything goes well, I expect some rich people to appear, willing to sponsor our campaign, that would surely bring great wealth over time, keeping the merchants circulating through the kingdom instead of being stagnant mostly on the capital will be very nice. Thanks to the expeditions new people will come wanting to enlist in the ranks, more smiths will be required, creating more room for them so we can teach said jobs to some of the soldiers to have crafters close to the borders. This could become a self-sufficient army in the future. That's the benefits of good preparations, but the kingdom itself needs to develop better methods of farming. I've created an interesting way with Iris outside, would you like to come and take a look? Of course, we've been sitting for a while, it's good to stretch the legs, he laughed while getting up and following Aurora outside. A few moments later, they reached the field outside. So as you can see that big part is strawberries only because Iris loves them, but what is interesting is this section over here, she does what I taught her, I call it crop rotation. After checking other farming fields, noticing that they insist on the same product all year long, instead my sister does a rotation between wheat, turnips, barley, and clover. What are the advantages to this crop rotation? Different plants need different types of food from the soil, we call those nutrients. That means using these four types, it equals to a non-exhaustion of the soil. So when it rotates the seeds clockwise, the properties that were sucked during that one year, are able to recover, making the soil healthier. That way, every year the necessity inside the ground remains the same, creating a natural regeneration of the soil through time. With mages of the earth and nature elements, I'm sure the fields can be enhanced a lot more, depending on the results. It could be super effective. Aurora then points at some of the plants and follows with an explanation. We end up selling these, especially since one of them is used for animal caring which we don't do. But if we did, we'd be able to have a good amount of food for them too. In other words, horses. Seems like you intend to reform the farming method as well. Mark felt surprised as he thought warfare was all she knew about. Everything I read I understand. I've spent a while at the library enough to read its every book. Of course, the testing things helps, also making the soldiers do farming and fishing have other opportunities too. Hmm? Like what? Not only we get cheaper labor since it becomes part of their wages, but also the titles that I mentioned before from farming, fishing, woodcutting, and possibly building will make them stronger. What do those titles do? Personally, I've never done any. Aurora goes near the house and grabs a hoe while going into thinking. The church incites for people to not pursue too many titles due to them possibly having a negative effect, possibly allowing peasants and nobles to obtain disgrace classes. 
nobles have instant access to rank 1 classes, due to the noble title that is given upon their birth. This allows them to get classes like warrior, priest, wizard, and others. Meanwhile, peasants start with rank 0 choices, due to title peasant things like farmer, fisherman. Thus through many titles, lowborn can catch up to nobles. It's not by chance that Iris has become a little strong, she has a lot of titles and works very hard for them. Since I'm a Grimo Ira I don't get tired, probably why I don't have that type of thing. Upon returning she extends it to Mark. Check your personal data skills statuses numbers and then plow the fields. When you hear a message from the system compare the old number with the new one. After a bit of plowing a familiar voice resounds in his mind. Let's see, personal data, he looks for a difference and realizes something interesting. I've become stronger by one point, which is barely anything I know, however, the more you plow the more it'll give. If you water the fields, plant seeds, and plants, and do many other things, everything will ultimately contribute to it. In other words, if we make soldiers do these jobs along with their usual training they can become stronger faster. A smile appeared on Mark's face. You can water the fields if you'd like, it'll give you some stamina which in your age, extra health is always welcome. To think I'd see a day where a noble would be farming and watering fields by a peasant order. One of the guards said to the other from afar. I'm as surprised as you, but from their conversation, it seems like we might be the next ones doing that. They look at each other feeling some unease. A while later after Iris, Kaito and Gore arrested, they resumed the slime hunting quest walking deeper inside the forest. The first time I did a slime hunt quest I almost died and we even had a healer with us. A really cute girl named Elise. So you struggled a lot at the start? Kaito asked surprised thinking I was strong from the start. Yes, I believe we all do. And to be honest even now I still do. We're just weak humans after all. Even with this blessing, the goddess gave me I'm still not finding myself that strong. You'll become strong in no time bro. The blessing will surely level up. Gora said with a big smile filled with positivity. Exactly. With a skill as amazing as that it's a matter of time Kaito. I help to cheer him up despite everything. Thank you for the rabbit stew Gora. Your food is really good. It even increased my strength so let's use the buff. You're very welcome bro. And Iris I'd like to take lessons with your mother. Do you think she can teach me how to fight with a hammer? Yes. I believe so. If she can't then that's it. Where do I go to have those lessons? Southwest of the village there's a house where I live in near a river, and also a field that I made with mostly strawberries. Strawberries? That's amazing I love those. Gora shouted almost drooling over all the strawberry cakes, cheesecakes, mousse, ice cream. His past memories contained. Mind if I tag along for those lessons as well? Kaito asked shyly while turning his face to the side. Of course, everyone is welcome to do so. Just don't forget it's not free, so you'll probably have to earn some money for that. It's fine we can use the church funds for that. Oh true Kaito, I should probably start using those to pay for ingredients to expand my divine cooking skill. I believe in your case the priests would be more than happy to do so, maybe even make a restaurant of sorts. I'm sure it would be popular. I laughed knowing how good his meals are. Let's head deeper and explore the forest. I haven't gone too deep before so maybe we find something interesting or not. Sure let's go. Gora lifts his bag carrying it following me. Kaito picks the spear he bought and walks along with us. I'll make sure to stick to this girl till I get strong enough. Then I can ditch her and become overpowered like in those games I used to play, and surpass that prideful Ken. Speaking of which how old are you Iris and what level are you? Kaito asked to ascertain their gap. I'm 8 years old and am level 13 currently. Level 13? Is that high? Sounds extremely low and she's strong fighting slimes which should be even lower level, so she's not worth much after all. That's amazing Iris, seems like I have a long way to go, Gora said while smiling happily. You'll catch up in no time Gora don't worry. Thank you for the confidence boost. By the way, Iris, do you know how the experience system works in this world? In our world Artana, the higher the level of the monster you slay the more experience you get. In one of the games, 
I played I'd get more experience if I killed things alone how about in here? I believe it's similar, though not by a big margin I suppose, meaning that in this world it is better to party up with other people. This is certainly good information. Wondering what the other two girls are up to, Gora said softly as if thinking to himself. Two other girls? I ask curiously not having seen any at the guild. Yes, we are a group of four out of twenty. We were split into parties of four all across the kingdom. Oh, yeah, that way I believe the church can show off through the entire kingdom their new summoned additions. Kaito declared sincerely as Ken gave that idea initially. In the end, they are funding you guys, right? In that sense, I believe it's a good exchange. I guess, it makes our lives easier so personally I don't really care about the details. As long as I have food and a roof I'm good to go. Gora added having gone through difficulties in his past life. What is that? We all look at more than 30 different colored rocks on the ground. Those are some cute rocks. Kaito approached one of them poking it with his spear tip. Seeing as nothing happened, we started walking through them with Kaito in front of us looking excitedly at the rocks around him. Just in case, let me appraise this blue shell. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. Level 10 Turtler, a four-legged monster that hides inside its shell under the ground waiting to prey on its enemies, can breathe underwater, and the shell is extremely tough. Without time to waste I scream, Kaito run. The moment I said that the turtler he passed through started surging out of the ground, and a 60 centimeter sized beast appeared next to him, the spear boy didn't have the reaction speed to escape, allowing the enemy head to come out of its shell devouring his hand. He looked confused at the hand who was holding a spear till recently watching the spear falling on the floor, and then started screaming of pain as his body perceived what happened. Shit. Ice sword, in my hand a sword made of ice appears which I grip tightly feeling unease. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. I run at it and strike its head with the intention of slicing its neck, but as my sword flowed through the air, the enemy shrunk inside the shell. This made my sword hit the toughest part dealing no damage, making my hand tremble from the shock. Just how tough is this thing? I shout while noticing a few more shells start to shake and I help Kaito running back by placing my arm around his back, Gora come help. I shout at him waking him up from the shock. Gora runs to us and once closer he lifts him placing the body on the wide shoulder, I freeze Kaito's hand to stop the bleed. Gora then starts running with him out of the forest towards the adventurer guild as fast as he can. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. The turtles start staring at me from afar and I start backing off slowly. Seems like deep down it's these things territory maybe they let us leave in peace. One of them opens its mouth and I see mana being charged. I start running to the side. After a few seconds, it shoots a water stream towards where I was missing. Icicle, as I create one from above it a different red shell turtler shoots fire at it. These are things are smart, but what if I make one from below it? Does it also have a shell? Icicle. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. It hurts the creature making it let out a noise. And then I make another one pierce it from below making it cry in pain again. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted. Interesting so that's your weak point. I stop running while looking at those creatures who start walking towards me slowly as a group, while charging opening their mouths, and channeling it with different colors. The voice from before resounds in my head. Do you need help? To what I reply. Oh, you ask for permission now? The voice replies. Brainwash resistance has gotten pretty high after all. It laughed in my mind with a cute tone. So who are you? I raise my hands and icicle the nearest four turtlers from below hurting them. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. A tone that I imagine would belong to an adorable girl resounds in my head. We are you. I run from them passing through a tree as it is blown away by the skills some of them charged. I run towards another tree standing behind it to take cover. We? More than one? How many are there? I ask confused as I don't understand all these different voice tones. A more charming mature own resounds in my head, that'll depend on how much stronger you'll get. I feel like you girls are teasing me at this point. I shoot four more icicles opening their wounds deeper. 
Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. A demonic tone resounds in my head. If you keep running that way you'll get trapped by the turtlers that dispersed. It laughed madly in my head. I turn back and start running from where I came. Approaching the injured monsters slowly while looking back, finding that a few of them walked out of the bushes I was about to go into. How did you know that? I asked confused at the voice knowledge. A tone that reminded me of a sleepy girl resounds in my head. Wasn't that obvious? Yawn, monsters have telepathy like you and that insane grimo eye of yours, and they're not retarded. The turtlers start surrounding the injured ones as if protecting them. That would have worked if I attacked from the front, but since I do it from below, icicles. I shoot four more from below, while the turtlers shoot fireballs, water balls, air balls, thunder balls, and acid balls at me as I run. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. This is getting crazy. The balls splash and explode in the ground, turning it into all kinds of different colored pools while one of them hits me. Notice, 60 health and 6 mana have been deducted. Seems like the mana shield absorbed a bit of it. I freeze my arm slightly due to the burn. Notice, 20 mana has been deducted. A demonic tone resounds in my head. You could use destiny cards before you run out of mana. It laughed in my head. All oh right, I haven't used it yet. I wonder what it does, as I'm about to use it the adorable tone speaks in my mind. Don't use it. You won't become stronger if you rely on it to do the work for you, plus you'd bring unnecessary attention. And it might not even work as you are. The demonic tone laughed happily as it almost tricked me. Attention from who? A charming voice replied to me, the goddess Aria, and possibly the church faction if she'd send them a message about your existence. I've already gathered the attention of other gods what difference would it make? I ask curiously not understanding the consequence. A sleepy tone replies, Yawn, you are truly an idiot. What do you think happens if a god doesn't like you? I start thinking about the things that happened before when the goddess Luna stripped me of her blessings and forgot me. I lose her blessings? What does that mean though? Appraise this information. I keep running dodging the incoming skills from balls, to jets, to explosions, while I circle the turtlers using the trees as shields. I watch the different colored magical circles appearing in many places, forcing me to dodge those marks. Notice, 200 mana has been deducted. Blessings are given to a being as a form of evolving their skills, often known as blessed and cursed skills. Any beast skills are now impossible to obtain or evolve to. I shoot four more icicles focusing on the damaged turtlers, this time with extra mana as they should be at death's door. Notice, 400 mana has been deducted. Notice, 600 experience has been rewarded from a turtler system. The title Turtler Slayer has been received. Notice, 630 experience has been rewarded from a turtler. Notice, Iris has leveled up to 14. Notice, 640 experience has been rewarded from a turtler. Notice, 620 experience has been rewarded from a turtler. The turtlers start falling on the ground while I run towards the exit of the forest, as my mana starts running low. If I were to lose Goddess Arya's blessing I wouldn't be able to evolve my human skills further or to obtain new ones, unless one of the other gods' blessings would still remain. Probably not even with them since different races. I'll have to be careful with it then. So if you girls, are me then what are you? A sleepy voice replies. Yawn. Just how clueless can you be? We're your skills, the ones that may affect your personality who gained life due to the curse of the god who evolved your class. If I'm not mistaken the god of chaos was the one who changed that for me. And I think I have like six or seven skills that can change personality meaning that I have six or more voices. Ah, what a pain. I let out a sigh, and as I do I notice Gora and Kaito on the ground close by still inside the forest. You geese didn't leave? Ah, sorry Iris I couldn't carry him anymore. My legs. My body is tired, Gora said while panting harshly. I look at him who is sweating intensively and then I remember something important. Did you guys just get all that experience from the turtlers too? Yes. I'm now level 7 so Kaito should be too, Gora replied as Kaito is laying on the floor due to the pain. Kaito if you can hear me spend all points in stamina. 
It'll keep you alive. I'll be carrying you to the village. You don't have to reply, just do it mentally. Upon hearing my words he made a pained moan lightly trembling his head. We then head back to the guild for treatment. After carrying Kaito in my back we arrive at the guild, with Gora in the front. Healer. He lets out a shout, trying to communicate but due to panting from the over-exercising, Gora falls on his knees taking deep breaths while placing a hand on the heart that is beating madly. Fatty. Aiko says surprised upon watching the usual big figure of his enter the guild full of sweat completely drenching the floor beneath him. I then arrive with Kaito on my back. Kaito, why is he? Yano looks at the missing hand screaming getting everyone's attention. Kaito, Edgar and Aiko run towards us to help me as I'm exhausted from carrying him this far. Please take care of Kaito, Edgar, I say softly as I'm totally out of breathing, dropping Kaito on the floor with his help. System. The title corpse transporter has been received. Different voices resound in my mind laughing, yes, yes, very funny, keep on laughing at me, a title befitting a witch I know, a demonic tone speaks in my mind, truly matching us, you need more titles like this, his laughter continued while I did my best to recover my fatigue, Gora sits on one of the benches sweating like crazy too, with the help of three adventurers who came to assist us. I crawl a bit to the side and sit close to one of the pillars resting my back and head on it, allowing my body to give in to the tiredness. I stare at Kaito and the girls that are looking after him, along with Edgar and another adventurer who is performing some heal through the unique light element usage. Next to them I notice a blonde girl glaring at me. Gora who is close by on one of the benches says, the blonde one with dark brown eyes is Yano and the black haired with dark brown eyes is Aiko. Blonde color in this world is pretty rare so I was surprised seeing one like myself. I didn't know it was a rare color. They're the two girls who came with us. Also summon ones, they don't like me. And I don't know if they're like you, so be careful around them. All right, but it should be fine, after all. I did my best to keep Kaito alive. I smile kindly at him while breathing moderately as it was a long run. Also thank you Iris for saving Kaito. Actually thank you for saving him for the second time too. I giggle a bit making him do it too. An adorable tone resumes in my mind. Does he like us? Did he fall for us? The question causes me to blush as it was unexpected, making me avert my gaze from him. What are you talking about? He's just a new friend and a lot older than me, we, us, gosh, no matter, I let out a sigh as I'm not used to all these voices. After some time passes and we recover some of the fatigue I and Gora deliver the eight soul stones of the slimes that he brought in a bag. Once we receive the rewards, I take my card from the three on the balcony, I'm going home now, see you a different day Gora, take care of your friends, take care Iris, thank you for everything. If you need us, we're living at the church. Sure. I'll keep that in mind. Feel free to visit if you still want the classes. I walk away from my new friend, and as I pass by Kaito to check on him, Yano notices me slapping my right cheek, and yells, How dare you do this to Kaito? Notice, 10 health has been deducted. An evil voice unlike any other speaks in my mind. Kill this filthy bitch who dares to hit us after saving that piece of trash. I raise my hand at her and an icicle grows from my hand, all the way to the wall of the guild grazing her cheek, startling everyone who stares at us without saying anything. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. She looks at the bleeding in her perfect face while turning the face around to see how far the ice went terrified, then slowly back at me and I glare at her making tears fall down the girl's cheek. Without saying a word I walk off and head to the entrance while the icicle falls on the floor shattering into a million pieces. An adorable voice speaks in my mind, how can they be so ungrateful to us? Humans can be like that. Just like Aurora once told me. The adorable voice replies, at least Gora was thankful and friendly. An evil voice replies, we'll see till when. A demonic voice echoes in mad laughter. I head home with my card and the little money I got from all that. As I walk home I bump into someone and the sound of something falling is made on the ground. I look at the sound source and notice a woman with long black braided hair all the way to her ass and a beautiful face. Are you okay? 
I'm truly sorry I didn't see you, I extend her hand and upon grabbing it I pull her to me, just how strong is this kid? I actually flew to the ground, I'm alright, and it is normal that you didn't notice me, the woman smiled beautifully. Really? How come? I can turn invisible. In fact, I'm bored, just came from a scouting mission. Would you perhaps care to play a game? I notice her eyes full of expectation. Sure. Something bad just happened not that long ago, so some fun would be entertaining. I reply without hesitation making her smile. I'll go into stealth and if you can guess what direction of you I'm in, I'll give you a reward. I smile innocently at her and nod, and then she vanished. I do a whole turn around me and don't notice her. Now then what should I do? A charming voice resounds in my mind, spread your mana and sense that woman, she can't possibly dare to be more attractive than me. Feeling jealous? How cute. I let out a giggle and then close my eyes, extending my mana around me as fast as I can noticing that it hits some sort of wall in one of the sides. I turn that way and point saying, you're there. Her stealth wore off and she started clapping, didn't expect this little kid to use mana like that. So young and already a prodigy, too bad you're a peasant and have no future. I extend my hand towards her while smiling and the sunlight reflects on the white ring surprising her. Hum? Why does this kid have that ring? Looking at me her lips open. Hey, why do you have that in your finger? You mean this ring? It was a gift from my friend Alicia. Is this the blonde girl that has been going to the crown prince lately? Guess they'll be making trouble with Alfred and the White Rose family soon if they really intend to go forward with their plan. So innocent and quite talented too. What a waste. Perhaps I should snatch her to my daughter instead, that way I could spare some pain from this kid while getting my daughter someone talented. Say are you willing to become a knight of my house? Your house? Who are you? She takes out something and shows me a pink ring. My daughter could use someone talented like you and there's a chance you won't be selected by the White House. Is that my reward? I ask curiously as my happy face turns rather dull. Yes, exactly. She replies happily enough for both of us. Didn't the successors chose their knights? I ask her confused knowing that's what I was told. Normally yes, but my daughter is stuck at home training all day, every day, and when she's not, well people are silently dying during the night. Oh. I remember Alicia sharing that same fate while ignoring the later part, as it didn't make much sense. I'll tell you what I said to my friend, I have no intention of becoming a knight I just want to get stronger, I reply with convicted eyes bring a smile to her. Perfect. You ought to be strong otherwise you'd be useless. The woman places the ring in my finger faster than I could react, keep improving then, we'll be sure to meet in the future, she vanished turning invisible she was fast. I couldn't keep up at all. Didn't even see her hands moving. Seems like I truly do have a gigantic path ahead of me. I look at my hand having two rings now. They're kind of cute especially the pink one, though the white one is more important to me. At this pace, I'll be having one of each in no time. I laugh at my own silly ideas ending up feeling a bit happier. Forgetting about the accident with Yano. The adorable voice adds. They really do fit you master, beautiful rings for a perfectly good looking iris. Thank you for the compliment, I suppose. I blush a bit as I walk home. In the east forest where Iris has been with Gora and Kaito, a turtler alone was grieving for his fellow family members who were murdered by the humans not that long ago. He had stayed for a longer time than the rest as those four in specific were his parents and sisters. That ice blonde user, curse her for killing my family, curse her, curse her, curse her. I hope she dies in a way ten times worse than my own kin, with one hundred times more pain. May the gods bring her the despair I feel today. May her heart be tainted by the sorrow of today. Just because they ran into our territory, and my sister self defended herself from being hit by one of those human weapons. That man who started this. Kaito was it? I hope he dies too. And that big one too. I pray to the gods that all humans die, be cursed, be destroyed, if only I had the power to do it myself. The turtler then starts hearing a whisper close to the ear telling him to feed off his family, and afterward, upon doing as he's told death the four corpses and their soul stones altogether, 
This time he heard a different voice that was a bit more familiar to him. System, you have been granted an evolution by the goddess Luna. After some hours the body started growing triple the size 180 centimeters big and he returned to the rest of the turtlers becoming their chief swearing revenge towards the humans, and using telepathy to induce rage and fury. We shall become stronger, every single one of you and trample upon those nasty humans. Just you three wait. I lead you all next, no matter what I have to do to achieve it. May this blessing, provided by the beast's mother allow me to deliver my vengeance. At home and after walking inside of it for a bit, I notice my family sitting in the kitchen with Mark. I go closer and start spreading hugs to everyone except the advisor with who I don't know or have any intimacy. How was your day Iris? My father asked me with a smile. It was fun I got to meet two of the summoned by the goddess Arya from a different world, and I ended up doing a quest with them, one almost died because he was careless, they die that easily despite being blessed by the goddess. Mark questioned surprised at my words. Yes, apparently all they have is a blessed skill which by itself already means a lot, but they're level 1 so they are extremely weak. In fact, they were absolutely useless, and I had to save one of them a few times. One of them a boy named Gora. He has quite the interesting ability. Something that interested sister? Aurora looks at me curiously with those light blue sparkling eyes. It seems he has the blessed skill divine cooking which allows everything that he cooks, to improve the status temporarily. Feeding an army in the base camp with it could be very useful. Aurora looks at Mark after saying that. Without a doubt seeing as the army is the strength of numbers if every single one of them becomes stronger even if temporary, it would surely be able to destroy our enemies easier. By the way Iris, it seems I'll be gone for two years maybe more, received a letter today from the crown prince. What? Why? My excitement disappears turning into sadness. Apparently he and Ryu spent a while together among other important people discussing my war theories that I gave him and as such I'll be tested for six months training the army. If after that time passes the results are good, then I'll be promoted as a noble raising our family status, acquiring territory along with a general title. Whoa, I'm completely speechless, when are you expected to go? I hold back my tears. Sadly today, I just wanted to see you before that and have your permission as well. Parents already gave theirs, of course you can, I mean. If that's what you want to do, I don't see a reason not to. After all, the human territory will surely expand with your marvelous mind, I believe in you with all my being. I grip my hands behind my back holding back the tears. I smile at her happily as I grew used to having her with me even if it wasn't for the longest time. Thank you sister those words relieve me even though I'll be missing you a lot, and well, make sure you don't stop becoming stronger especially with me gone. Don't worry my dear sister Aurora, it seems that I won't be alone no matter what I do. What do you mean Iris? She spoke with me through telepathy. It seems that my class which has become further cursed into Babel, back then I didn't know what it meant. But before having it the skills would only change my personality by influencing it a bit from time to time, and now they have become their own personalities. In fact, the one you met is just one of many but my skill is maxed soon so you don't have to worry, I'll find a way to make good use of these new sisters of us, I sure hope so, it would've messy if you changed with no return, and what are they exactly? They are my skills, the best ones that influence the important parts, the ones that said may influence personality, however, they're my skills, in other words, their one true goal is to serve me despite some of them having a rude tone which to be fair, I've grown used to it. We smile kindly at each other. I'll be saving the soul stones that I can till the day you are able to visit me hopefully in a few months. I believe I'll be able to return home from time to time, so don't worry my dear Iris. An adorable tone resumes in my mind using telepathy to deliver a message to Aurora. She's not yours, she's mine. How dare you attempt to have the master all to yourself, you greedy sister. Upon hearing that Aurora loses her composure making a surprised face, I'll be waiting patiently, for your return my beloved sister, I'll miss you tons, please take good care of yourself, and shush adorable girl, you're all equally mine, I tell her making her go quiet possibly embarrassed. 
Mark gets off the chair and heads to the exit, and as he passes by me says lowly, if you ever decide to come to learn in one of the Lumen Capital Institutes just use the recommendation letter, we'll be happy to have you as one of our students. To that, I reply, perhaps in the future when I'm done with adventuring. Certainly, I'll be waiting eagerly for the day, take good care of yourself he smiled and headed to the exit. Aurora then hugged me after having done it to our parents and said, you'll be okay right? Yes, don't worry about it. The voices will be teaching me and helping me out while you are gone. I said innocently while tearing up and hugging her tighter. Parents hugged us as they noticed it and mother patted my hair at the same time. I then push her away softly and say, I won't forgive you if you become any less than the general of the entire army. I wipe my tears with my hand, you better become strong enough to join my army. Aurora flips her hair proudly while showing off. I laugh lightly at her almighty attitude and reply softly. I will, just you wait. After they leave, mother says, I suppose this is what means to have talented daughters. A tear falls off her cheek making me grab her hand and we cry together for a while. After eating something and talking with my parents I head to my room. An adorable tone pops into my mind the moment I lay in bed as if waiting for me to get comfortable. We've all been talking and discussing. About what? I ask curiously feeling rather suspicious of the subject. Each of us has a few conditions, if you're able to complete them you'll grow stronger and we all share two desires. Conditions? Desires? What do you mean by those? I asked becoming even more confused than what I already was. Our first desire is to be able to attain a physical body, and the second is to then serve you the Babel Witch. Last time someone needed a physical body ended up as a grimoire, I declare reminding me of my sister when she was stuck in the mirror. A charming tone said, there are two ways that we know of doing this, one of them you kill a being and we enter its body possessing it and eventually making it ours, and we take a part of your soul with us establishing a servant to master contract making us your underlings, the second you use a brainwash skill and erase the mind inside, we then replace it. Does the type of body matters? I ask curiously thinking about the possibilities. It'll be modified once we do the contract to something similar to you. So it doesn't matter plus our status will be a copy of yours. If it's a weak body it'll take longer to duplicate your information to the new body. But that's the only drawback. If you all get the exact same copy of my status does that mean that you'll all get different skills and statuses and titles? As you are the master and original being our status will always be the same as your own, the only thing that differs is the health and mana, we'll have our own freedom and lives. What would happen if you killed a slime for example? The experience would go to the master along with the user experience that we'd get of using skills, so basically, your skills would level up a lot faster since you'd have many people using them. All that sounds incredibly good but what are the consequences of doing such a contract? You'd lose a part of your soul to us as long as we remain alive around a thousand if you want us to be at our best at least that much. The loss of soul, how does that affect me? It only matters for when you die and become a soul stone generally, however, your sister gave you something truly wicked, uniquely valuable, she gave you a special mirror. The more soul you have the bigger the world we can explore will be, so after you turn us alive we'll make the contract with you and link all our souls, and then we'll help you expand your world as you have limited access to it since you're still incredibly weak. Limited access? What do you mean by that? If the world is mine shouldn't I have full control of it? The invisible walls beyond it, there's no void or emptiness there is the world that is your soul. The more you do and achieve in it the purer you will become. As for what happens we do not know, and what dangers lay in such a world are unknown too. In other words, I could just not do any of that and seal you all together with the mirror. The many different tones made a gulping sound. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't waste a good opportunity to become stronger even more so by expanding my family, as you'd all become my sisters that is if you're all female? Yes. We're all you in the end, we are what you become forever a part of you. There is a chance the system cannot deal with our existence, so to avoid any issues you must do this in the mirror world, and we won't be able to come to this world until we become a full entity. 
wait, but then I wouldn't get experience or anything as there are no beings in the mirror world unless, there is? I make a shocked expression. Since it is a mirror, we believe it'll have everything this world has and a lot more as you also were in your old one. The mirror reflects people's souls, so despite you were locked the world information is in your soul even more in your case as the system malfunctioned on your reincarnation. What do you mean with that? I didn't know that. We've been busy exploring your soul and found out that your soul grows ten times faster than it should, and there's something else. But till you awaken fully we don't know. That's interesting it turns out the system helped me making a world and you girls a possibility easier. It was also due to the god of chaos and the evil one influence even though I don't believe they knew about the mirror of your sister since it was cursed and sealed. So for now we won't have any gods trying to mess with our world. That's right unless you show it to others it should never be an issue, so keep it hidden as best as you can. Once we're alive we'll help you hide it better as well, we have a lot to do, truly. Sounds like we'll have a lot of fun in these two years that are to come. I smile happily while thinking about the surprise it'll be for Aurora once she comes back. Wasn't the mirror from Aurora? Didn't it reflect her soul too, her memories and world which one of them was the same one as mine? But inside the mirror, I believe there was a different one. A sleepy tone resumed it in my mind, it seems you can be brilliant if you try, that's something none of us thought about, but in that case, the mirror was created by the sage, so the world inside the mirror is at the very least three times bigger than this one, and we don't know how big this one is. Thank you for the compliment for a change, and we have a lifetime to figure everything out, slowly but surely. The following day 32 of the sun season. Good morning everyone. The voices resound wishing me the same, I've been thinking about the proposition of yesterday till I fell asleep, and I think we can arrange that, but I'm not sure about brainwashing someone I believe something that has died will be easier for you all to possess. An evil tone resumed it in my mind saying, that's true, however, we'd be able to eat their soul getting hours stronger and by the time that was finished, the leftovers could be given back to you. Hum. That does sound worth the risk, but in that case, the body does matter since some will have more soul quantity than others. In that specific sense yes, it'll also have more mana so human bodies are the best ones since they match yours. If I bring soul stones from my questing to the mirror world would you guys be able to use them for yourselves instead of bodies? It's also a possibility but it would take a while. However, we'd be able to choose our own appearance that way, that sounds awesome, I'll try to get some good ones and any extra we either save it for Aurora Grimoire, or one of you can consume them for extra territory expansion. Seems like you're starting to become more reliant Mastraris, now I'm truly curious about what kind of appearances you'd all get, even though it could be confusing to others and even among you if they were too different. What do you suggest? I tilt my head while trying to grasp for something coherent. Hum, I feel like we could all have the same face but different hair color as well as the same outfit but in different colors, and perhaps a black cape. That sounds reasonable. I believe the cape could be black with a symbol, perhaps a black one with a nine-pointed white star. That sounds interesting, however, why that symbol? I question filled with admiration and curiosity. In the future. When the time comes for your awakening, we'll have all the skills maxed, and your class also has to rank further, so you can get the leftover skills, however, once you do, you'll have us eight, it'd be an enigram a nine pointed white star in a black cape, as we'd all be witches part of the same circle. That sounds superb and exciting. Then wait shouldn't it be ten due to Aurora? Not quite, she's a special entity and Grimoires are the tools of those who study magic, in two years when she returns. You should make her learn the pandemonium skills, we'll need them to help us in the mirror world. Do you know what they do? The things she has written in her pages? No one does but her. However, a Grimoire was created to aid magical users into using a specific type of magic. With some luck she'll have some powerful skills in those pages, depending on what we may or may not find in the mirror world. In the end, it would be us ten versus an entire world, it doesn't quite work well like that. Hum, I wonder about that, 
I remember she said that in her past life she was looking for a tome called Pandemonium, and then she said it had stories in it. I even called them children's ones, which Aurora didn't seem to mind. I don't think a tome with that name would have stories for children. For you to be saying that you should know its meaning no? My eyes turn rather curious while I smile seeking the answer. The meaning I know is that it's a different way of saying chaos. God of chaos and God of evil were the ones doing it, so that it would make perfect sense, but... What kind of skills could possibly make it chaotic enough, was the reason that she searched for it in her past life because she wanted to spread it? I place my arm on my forehead hiding my eyes from the morning sunlight. She's now gone so I can't figure these things out, ah. So exhausting being curious to no end without answers, I let out a sigh and then continue the discussion. Grimo Iro is a book. What would happen if I used system library skill in it? Talking about that I barely use it nowadays, when I get home tonight I'll make sure to read, and I should copy all the books in the library. So much to do with so many series of titles to finish, and possibly a lot more to figure out and obtain. With many copies of me, I could, in the beginning, make everyone do a lot of those things getting more titles which would allow me to grow stronger in no time, and it would increase all of the witches in succession. This is actually a very good plan to get things done. By the time, I'll have the help of you eight we should figure out what's in the other world, and since we can't do that right away due to the invisible wall. We could set up a ritual in the middle that'll expand the more territory we explore. A demonic tone resumes in my mind and says, that sounds like fun. We could make one with multiple layers, but the first layer must be your own the snow falling one, so everywhere it touches will become white and be your own territory, increasing further as we develop the terrain. We can do that. However, what's the point of having a big territory without anyone living in it? We can make other beings that live there submit to us, and if the world is completely empty then we can invite people from Artana to it. On a side note, the snow falling ritual allows the mana to become denser and in that world which is already better than in here, we'll be able to practice magic at will. Right, that's true. A great idea. I just hope it won't fill the entire place with snow. Not like I mind it but others might find it an issue, especially since we'll have to get a farming field among other resources and who knows what else. You could always just transport your field inside and test it out after the ritual to see if it adapts or not. If it does we'll be able to make a living there, otherwise, without food or resources, it'll be tough. From everything I could see last time I was there, it was only snow everywhere. A snow biome. It honestly sounds like the perfect place to start, since if there are kingdoms or territories out there, they won't notice us as we'd be naturally hidden. We can even create a mist barrier at the border to keep it stealthy. Of course, that you would need to get us a skill like that first. In the end, I need to level up a lot along with ranking up my class for more skills I want to see how far it goes, and I need to try things on my own to earn new ones and use them together for combinations. Like that one time how one of you did against that evil curse, that was really amazing. Appraisal is an amazing skill even though it's currently low level and we don't know yet what the max level will be. But seeing how strong brainwash resistance has become I'd say most skills end up at level 100. Doesn't mean that they won't evolve or have a different max level, since the appraisal is a unique skill. I'm assuming it'd be higher than 100 which makes analysis a better skill for magical, and appraisal for everything else most likely. I understand I'll keep that in mind and try to use them more often even though my mana just puffs with so many things that I have to do all the time. Also Iris do not forget that if the titles like the system library one where you have to use it on books, we most likely won't be able to come over to this world unless the soul stone allows the system to see us as just another being, testing it out will be a must. I believe it'll be fine after all before you are a being. You're primarily all my skills, and the system can't just remove my things, it would be very unfair. Not to forget I'll be using soul stones that appeared in Artana's world, perhaps you're right. I roll in bed to relax my mind from all the thoughts. I guess Aurora must be close to the capital. If I also had gone I'd possibly be learning useful things, however, I get the feeling there wouldn't be room for a peasant such as myself. 
Maybe when my sister gets her nobility rank which would place us among them I'll give it a try or when I participate in the tournament. I could also learn swordsmanship in the first or second year that Aurora will be away. I believe Lord Alfred would be happy to have me as a student. There's also mother teacher who supposedly trained Sylvia that's still the very best in the kingdom. Guess I'll ask mother about him. He was old when he taught them, so hopefully still lives. Mom should be awake. I leave my room and head towards the kitchen then her room then outside the house while searching. R. Here you are. I find mother sitting in a chair on the plains close to home. Iris baby? Upon hearing my mother I let out a smile as I get closer kissing her cheek, and then sitting on the grass in front. I was wondering if I could learn swordsmanship with your teacher instead of Alfred seeing as Sylvia turned out stronger than him. She interrupts me making my expression change to a startled one, making me go silent. That was pretty direct to the subject, and quite surprising as in all these years you barely asked for anything Iris. I don't really like to ask for things since we're not exactly rich. The money could be better used for other things. She extends her hand and rubs my cheek softly. That's true, but we do have the recommendation letter from the crown prince. It can pay you any tutor except my old teacher he doesn't really care about money, all that man was ever interested in is the potential a student may have. So if you want to try your luck we'll go to where he lives to be tested. Sure mother, when would that be? Whenever you want I just need to get some clothes and we'll go to a village southeast of the capital where he's currently living. Hopefully still is around one hour distance from here. By me, we can even go right away. We'll have to be back before I got to work so let's head to the village and get a carriage to take us there or maybe we're lucky and find a different transport. An hour and thirty minutes later we arrive at the village. This is the village of Tun, a little smaller than a steer one, but a decent place nonetheless. That's an interesting name. I smile at mother while grabbing her hand as we spend ten more minutes walking. After noticing something quite weird going on I stare at Rosalind. Mother why are we walking with so many turns? Because I have to look in every alley for an old man beggar. A beggar? I look around us and notice an old man under a tree in the middle of two houses. Maybe that one over there? Mother looks at me then sees where I'm pointing to and starts walking there. Seeing this reaction I follow through. Upon arrival, the old man begs for food without looking up. After all these years and you still haven't changed swordmaster teacher eh? The man upon hearing those words places his hand on one of the swords and then looks above slowly. Blondie, my weakest student, he chuckles. Have you come to practice after all these years? Not quite. I actually brought my daughter. She's interested in learning from the person who taught Sylvia instead of Alfred who approved of her talent. Alfred. The weak guy who married Sylvia? He starts laughing again not giving it much thought. Against you, anyone would be considered weak I suppose. Mother frowns thinking on their gap. Mother is your teacher truly that strong? She nods as consenting while Ray explains. It is a different realm I live in, at least in swordsmanship alone. But as you can see I'm getting old and the only good pupil after almost 90 years, was that Sylvia girl who didn't stay long enough to learn everything. That damn brat had to fall in love with that weakling. He got up and unsheathed his sword passing it next to my neck which I freeze surprised barely in time. Freeze, icicles above him. Notice, 240 mana has been deducted. I'm surprised you didn't die. Kid, aren't you too young to be asking for lessons from me? He laughed loudly, and when it came out of the mouth, the two icicles fell in the middle of his legs grazing the legs in the inside section, sobering him up from the light pain. Hum. That was a better reaction than Sylvia who was eleven when she started, he then added while looking at her from top to bottom. How old are you, kid? It's Iris from now on, and I'm eight years old. I reply with a cold voice but finish it with a kind smile making him laugh. That'd be the youngest student I'd have with this counter you made. Come. I just hope that wasn't a fluke as I've decided to retire not that long ago. He gets up and we follow him for a while eventually entering a big wooden house. Then I and my mother take the shoes off copying Ray out of respect. We face each other 10 meters apart as the wooden house is 20 meters long. 
and then he yawns loudly while unsheathing his sword. He then looks at me from top to bottom and says, Rosa, you didn't give your blondie brat a sword? Upon hearing that I say softly, ice sword, and a light blue aura appears in front of me shining, making his eyebrow raised in curiosity. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. Oh, an ice sword? Amusing. Ray dashes forward mana coating his sword, let's see how she fares against this little trick. It'd be dangerous for the mana I spent on my ice sword if I just allow it to be cut, so to avoid that I'll match his aura and mana coat mine too, protecting it. Notice, 500 mana has been deducted. I walk towards my opponent and then attempt to hit the body from the left side, which my sword gets lightly touched to the side, making it be forcefully pushed away. As he aims the sword towards my neck, I take an abrupt step backward losing a bit of balance and summon an icicle between us from the floor which he is forced to cut. Notice, 50 mana has been deducted, I then readjust myself and summon two more icicles behind him while I ice bind him, and then follow with a vertical slash. Notice, 150 mana has been deducted, this kid is crazy strong for such a young puppy, Ray grips the sword and a mana aura fills the hand while opening the mouth, triple slash. What follows afterward is purely amazing he slices the floor destroying the ice bind while rotating his hip which allows cutting the icicles behind, and then takes a step backward. The third strike he makes blocks my own. Just how fast is this old man? He looks ancient how can an old man still move like this? I was still able to damage him with ice bind. It's a hard one to avoid, I stare at him doing a back step gaining some distance surprising me. It seems for a weakling you're not half bad, however. Let's take a notch up. He sheathes the sword and takes a stance by lowering the hips and curving the legs slightly, ending up leaning forward, lightning coat, and then slashes the air by unsheathing with an incredible speed whereas my eyes aren't able to follow. Without realizing it a smile appears on my face, as I understand the gigantic gap between us on agility alone, I won't go down without to fight. Ice coat. I shout eagerly unable to contain my excitement bringing a faint smile to mother's teacher's expression. My surroundings start naturally freezing as the aura I gathered before takes the shape of my rare ice element affecting Ray's body cooling his muscles which should make the man's actions slower, and the floor hard to move through. Show me everything you got weakling. He screams while feeling excitement on the inside while preparing to finish the tryout duel. I look at mother who nods at me with a faint smile, I ice coat my sword further using my remaining mana. Notice, 1400 mana has been deducted. The close to 2000 ice sword coat freezes everything relentlessly around me. Surprising Ray. Just how much mana does this little girl have for her age? Even I had about 1500 at her age and I was a very exceptional case where my parents would help me kill monsters and the like, giving me some early status and titles. Just what has this girl been doing? He takes a glimpse of Rosa who's smiling happily at her daughter unable to contain her own excitement and proudness. You were very weak Rosa, however, at least your seed is quite promising yet compared to me extremely powerless, for now. Ray starts laughing crazily while charging in, taking pleasure in such a duel. Now then I hope this works, I spined. I lock him on the floor with a great amount of ice this time around hurting the legs while the natural aura of my sword freezes his momentum further. Notice, 250 mana has been deducted. Take this ice wave with all my power in it. I grab my ice sword super tightly feeling my hands freezing while gritting my teeth. I pour all the mana that was inserted earlier on the mana coating. And since it is shaped with my rare ice element a different thing happens than when using mana wave which generally bursts out a wide burst of energy. This time around a very thin and clear light blue layer is shot. As icicles spread in random directions while they fly towards Ray surprising him, as he had never seen an ice element skill like this. In fact, he didn't have the chance to teach ice mages. They would often learn magic instead of swordsmanship, not to forget it would require for their talent to be exceptional and to his liking. 
Notice, the skill ice wave has been acquired. A smile that goes unnoticed by me and Rosalind spreads through his face. I could dodge this but that wouldn't make her understand the difference between us. In other words, I shall simply overwhelm it, he laughs. While charges the sword with a large quantity of mana blocking the flying strike causing a mist between us. A sleepy tone then resumes in my mind, the old man coming from the left. Though there's not much you can do once he leaves the mist. Yawn, you should go now and strike him. Upon hearing the advice my body moves and I do a thrust on the left side of the cloud where I end up grazing Ray, who places the sword on my neck flawlessly making me surrender. The mist then dissipates and I see Ray smiling in front of me and then a voice. I like you, Iris, however, if you wish to learn from me then you'll have to stay here with me for three years maybe a bit more, so that I can pass everything I know to you. Back then it was what I wanted to do with Sylvia. But she married meanwhile, in case you reject becoming stronger then you can leave and not waste my time, without asking mother's opinion or permission as she allows me and Aurora to decide for ourselves I reply instantly, I wish to become strong, stronger than everyone else, a smile of approvement appeared on Ray's face. I then see my mother move closer to him giving him a paper which brings some surprise to his face. A recommendation letter from the crown prince himself? How did you even manage this Rosalind? From the king's two sons and one daughter, that one is the hardest to approach, as Julius is usually surrounded by advisors and influential people who keep him quite busy, Ray rubs the beard while waiting for a reply with great curiosity. He took Iris twin Aurora to be the general of his army, apparently she beat Julius in a game of chess which caused quite a ruckus among the advisors. I believe advisor Mark and Ryu the head of the Blue Rose family was present. How about physical abilities? Does she have potential like this one? A curious and wrinkled expression can be noted on his face as he rubs the white beard in vertical notions. Sister was born very sickly and has a very weak body born without an element. Mark said that perhaps I was the one who got both blessings reason why my mana is so big, Ray keeps on repeating the same gesture some more while thinking on my words. I've never heard of anyone being born without an element. That's quite the strange blessing the goddess must have inflicted her which means the brain. Must be the real thing catching the attention of the crown prince. Sounds like the future may have quite the interesting developments, too bad I might not live long enough to see them. I look at him and realize how old he looks like hoping he'll be able to not die till all the teaching is cleared. How old are you now teacher eh? The eyes look at me while the body approaches, then place a hand on top of my head. I'm 87 so once I'm done with your training I'll have reached 90 depending on how it goes perhaps 91. Ray starts laughing as the world of swordsmanship he wanted to see was not obtained in this life, due to the somewhat low lifespan humans have. I smile expectantly to learn a lot while hearing my mother's voice, I'll be leaving now Iris, you know the way back if you need anything, she comes closer and hugs me very tightly almost hurting me while whispering. I love you so much and I'll miss you tons. So make sure you beat the crap of this old man fast, so I can have my adorable daughter back, she tightens the hug while Ray smiles upon hearing her words. Yes, mother I promise to do my very best. Rosalind then leaves as she has to go to work while we wave at each other and then once out of sight, Ray closes the dojo door and sits on the floor. So Iris what did you do to obtain such an absurd amount of mana at such a young age? He looks at me curiously with a cautious tone finding it suspicious. To be honest, I did a lot of things from farming, fishing, cutting trees, cooked, read books, sold and bought things, gathered herbs, created potions. I also fought a lot of monsters and am currently level 14. And I also spent all my points on wisdom. The church usually doesn't like that people farm titles so barely anyone does it, the reason why there are so many places. The adventurers are an exception which creates some strife between them and the church. Doing so allows us to learn skills and improve ourselves. However, like you, I did that too at some point. As such, I've grown quite strong, also had a very good teacher. The main difference would be, well, I'm a noble, so unlike you, I had all types of help and experiences since young. 
to think you'd be level 14 while being 8 years old, just how many slimes did you kill? I smile and then reply while finding his question interesting, killed a lot of slimes, horned rabbits, kobolds, goblins, I'm an adventurer at the guild basically. Surprise that protective mother of yours even allowed it. But then again I suppose she made you learn what she knew before. How about your father what is he like? Dad's a famous healer who has the unique light element. In the capital has some direct connections to the crown prince who ended up acting as a bridge for Aurora, my twin sister. For a peasant that's pretty good. There's only so much one can raise, but it seems both Rosa daughters will reach somewhat high. Not sure how far though, that'll depend on how much you're able to learn from me before this body reaches the limit. His attitude completely changed quite of a surprise. Making people understand that you're worth something does make them see you with different eyes. I feel relieved as I didn't like the attitude he had before. I shall do my very best to learn everything from the best swordsmanship in the Lumen Kingdom, possibly even in the whole world, he laughed, I'll use your recommendation letter to purchase all kinds of goods, I'll be back later, grab the chance to recover your mana meanwhile Iris, alright teacher A, also please do buy me the 8 very best soul stones you can find, I smile happily as he leaves the dojo after nodding at me, why does she want soul stones? Could it be perhaps that? It would certainly explain a lot of things. This kid really intrigues me. Ray smiles while heading out to the village town. I let myself lay down on the floor while opening status. Notice, 10 mana has been deducted. Status, level, 14, experience 1291,400 fame, 300, disgrace, 17,000 unique class, Babel Witch, rank 3. Experience 3938 thousandths race, human, name, iris, 8 years old health, 750 750, mana, 23160 status points colon 0 strength, 226 plus 11, stamina, 72 plus 5, agility, 85 plus 8, dexterity, 107, intelligence, 174 plus 10, wisdom, 300 plus 14 attack, 0, magic attack colon 0, defense colon 0, magic defense, 0 soul, 7720 titles, reincarnated plus s, manas, mana exhausts, healths, beginner readers, purchases, wisdoms, reader series b, body trainings, animal slayers, intermediate readers, cooked fishes, Preyed upon F, Cheetah, S, Heritages, Amalgams, Ices, Cooked Bird F, Cooking Series, E, Slayer Series F, Sales, Advanced Readers, Soul Bounds, Elements, Contracteds, Peasant, F, Class A, Monster Slayer D, Slime Slayer B, Skill Mastery A, Tree Choppers, Tree Types, Tree Series B, Log Makers, Tree Planters, Book Thief D, Criminal D, Expert read ref, herbs gathered, herbs types is, potion brewers, potion type C, status masteries, beast slayer C, horned rabbit slayer C, potion administer def, goblin slayer E, orc slayer F, assassinations, herbalist series C, skeleton slayer C, noticed, god series D, potion selling F, potion failed D, potion succeeded D, alchemist series F, money makers, Merchant Series C, Tradings, Herbs Solds, Herbs Boughts, Acknowledgeds, Disgraceful, S, Ignoreds, Forgottens, Zombie Slayer F, Creations, Illusion Series A, Deluded's, Curse Slayers, Turtler Slayer F, Corpse Transporters, Completed Series, Fishings, Farmings, Skill Points, 1, Actives, Status Level 60 C, System Library Level 60 C, Mana Coat Level 22E, Mana Wave Level 5F, Ice Spine Level 12F, Ice Sword Level 5F, Icicle Level 17F, Long Slash Level 13F, Ice Expansion Level 4F, Ice Hammer Level 1F, Ice Spear Level 1F, Ice Wave Level 2F, Passives, Bleeding Resistance Level 20E, Swordsmanship Level 23E, 
Sword Mastery Level 14F, Mana Control Level 37E, Ice Control Level 26E, Slight Wisdom Boost Level 14F, Slight Mana Recovery Level 22F, Acid Resistance Level 1F, Axe Art Level 1F, Axe Mastery Level 1F, Corpse Dismantler Level 10F, Brainwash Resistance Level 75C, Night Vision Level 10F, Slight Stamina Boost Level 5F, Slight Agility Boost Level 7F, Slight Strength Boost Level 11F. Class Actives, Dark Alchemy Level 52, Magic Analysis Level 34, Destiny Cards Level 1, Cursing Objects Level 5, Decay Level 5, Mana Shield Level 2. Class Rituals, Snow Falling Level 30, Class Passives, Dark Alchemy Mastery Level 40, Witchcraft Level 60, Curses Mastery Level 30, Rituals Mastery Level 30, Magic Control Level 50, Magic Knowledge Level 60, Ice Mastery Level 20, Babel Mastery Level 20, Grimoire Mastery Level 20, Babel Arts, Grimoire Possession, Grimoire Announcing, Unique, Appraisal Level 53, Sealed Two Thirds, Cursed, Unidentified Skill, Mirror Level 7, Rare Element, Ice, Cursed Soul Bound Grimoire Rank D, 19400. I look forward to seeing the changes in swordsmanship and sword mastery compared to the future while learning with this person. Hopefully, I can one day surpass Sylvia, especially after knowing that she didn't finish her training due to marriage meaning there's a chance to grow as strong as this old man. Perhaps even stronger. Wondering what other active skills I'll get. In the end, didn't get to see much aside of his triple slash which was similar to my mother's one. I look at the ceiling missing my silly sister. I'll make sure to catch up to you Aurora just you wait. I raise my hand in the air and close it almost as if grabbing the air. I wonder what she's doing now. 54 days later on day one of the decaying season inside a room in a private mansion where men of high status remain seated while chatting. Your Highness Marty it seems your brother the Crown Prince Julius has risen a peasant to nobility this time an eight-year-old girl called Aurora. Prince Marty upon hearing those words smacks the table angrily and starts shouting doesn't my brother understand that we can't allow the peasants to become nobles? What gives him the right to change the fate of their birth? Such an idiot. Our informants told us that this time, He's making the little girl become a general of the army which will extend 70% of the total army, and the additional 10% of Ryu's. Apparently the kid beat your brother in a chess match. The head of the Green Rose family said while laughing. What the fuck's wrong with my brother's brain? Just because of a loss in a freaking game? How retarded has he become? Your brother is too much of a humanist your highness. It'll influence the different Rose families if he stays on the throne when your humble further dies, possibly breaking down the noble system as we know it, Charles the head of the Black Rose family declared in a neutral tone. Exactly before the Crown Prince there had been no peasant in history ever attaining the rank of noble, not even that old lady hero, peasants shall forever remain as lowborns, like we nobles remain part of the nobility and few of us are able to ascend to the Rose family, the closest rank to the royal family, Kai the successor of the Red Rose family said in a high tone while feeling superior. We of the anti-peasant into nobility faction composed of me the second royal prince the head of the black and green rose houses, and the soon to be head of the Red Rose family, we may have to wage war for the king's seat, Charles mentioned while gazing at everyone seated around him, talking about that prince. Has your father chosen a method to elect the successor? Many kings in the past all had a unique method other than being born first? Kai questioned curiously in an attempt to find a way to make this prince the ruler. Perhaps on his dying will there'll be one, for now, further hasn't mentioned anything of the sort. Violent knocking on the door disturbs the reunion. Come in. The prince who was interrupted shouted angrily. A man rushes and bows. I bring terrible news your highness, your dad Lark the king has died this morning, he gets instantly up feeling furious and grabs the man by the collar with both hands. What do you mean my father died? The healers say he died peacefully and painlessly during his sleep, possibly due to his age. They couldn't find poison or the like with their skills, 
A few tears fell from the prince's eyes while clenching the teeth and hand gripping strongly, lowering the head feeling sad while loosening up. Despite his personality, it was someone whom he had huge respect for. Furthermore Lark, the now late king has left a will which indicates a quite unique proposal for the next successor, he called it the next ruler trial. The way it has been decided is something never chosen before, a very distinct method that surprised all the advisors who worked for your father. The prince looked into the man's eyes and spoke while holding the emotions inside. Tell me the details. The hands left the man in front. The whole army will be shaped into 100,000 soldiers and 20,000 will be given to each successor, leaving 40,000 for the kingdom defense. The prince gulps as he didn't have much military power before and started seeing this as a chance to increase his influence. The goal will be that in two years the successor of the three that expands the Lumen Kingdom the most, which has been on a stalemate for a very long time towards the south, will be crowned king or queen since there is also your sister the princess Liliana. The messenger regains the breath then resumes it. Every candidate will in a week face the population with a speech where anything can be said, and the last rule is that any sibling that attacks the other is deemed the criminal and sentenced to death. Kai hearing that swallowed his saliva with a loud sound as the thought was crossing the mind at that instant. Candidates may choose whoever for the speech as depending on the circumstance there may be one of you who might be busy, and the army can increase or decrease numbers. It is not a fixed amount as some soldiers are bound to die in the wars to come, so hiring new forces is very welcome. In fact, the last great army we had a hundred years ago had close to 700,000. The late king expected for your armies to grow beyond that, seeing as we have 10 million humans. I understand. Thank you for the clarification. I'll do the speech personally. Very well your highness I will inform the late king advisors who will observe the contest, and we will then wait for you and your siblings on day 14 of the decaying season, and do not forget that day 7 will be the day where the king is cremated. Yes. You may go. I'm sure you're needed elsewhere. Indeed. Your highness I have some more reports to do. Farewell and my deepest condolences I have a great respect for your father, always had. The man bows with a sad expression eventually leaving. The prince slowly sat back on the chair where he was before the man came in. Once seated, those around mentioned while bowing their heads slightly, our condolences prince. Thank you, gentlemen. It seems that we have been blessed by the goddess Arya or even a touch of fate. Nonetheless, we now have a territorial war to win. Leaving the princess on the side as Liliana is clueless, and honestly, I doubt she'll try to become queen since she's always wished for one of the brothers to become king. We'll have to focus our all on defeating my brother in these two years that will come if they don't extend the time. That is right your highness. We mustn't allow the crown prince to win at all costs since even if the princess somehow won, she wouldn't allow the raise of peasants to nobility. In which case, I'd honestly support her with my house but your brother. I definitely wouldn't. Iliane the head of the greenhouse declared as she dislikes the crown prince personality and idealism. There are a few conditions we must be wary of your highness, one of them being the goblin invasion in possibly four years. Perhaps earlier, perhaps later, but that means the moment we start expanding south we might trigger them to act earlier of the time. This could result in small skirmishes, and that includes whatever other races we may find on the way. One way or another we can't expand anywhere else since the west is the sea, east is the mountains where there's a peaceful Gillam territory through the mountains that surround that side, and north is a very dangerous place. We'll have to focus on a part of the south and slowly expand till we clean our enemies, Kai stated the obvious making the rest of the table sigh as they realize that is truly the only way out of this mess. Talking about that, someone will have to lead the army. Personally I wouldn't mind doing it but I'd be happy to have a few military advisors. The prince looked at them expectantly. I know everything of the traditional ways. In fact, I believe most of us from the Rose families do. It is something we must learn in case we're called to lead the army. However, aside from myself in terms of skill, Kai father, and Ryu I'd say the two of them are in equal terms. 
Now that the tides have changed and both princes have equal rights to the military, I'll be sure to talk to my father to see if he's willing to join the second Prince Marty faction. Hopefully, he will, but I cannot promise you that your highness as my father is a very stubborn man who only ever cared about the king. The prince started laughing while looking at him. Yes you're indeed right Kai. Do tell him that when we win, I'm doubling the Red Rose family territory plus part of what he conquers to the south can be added to the prize, which would be beneficial as it would be close to the southern mines your family has. Of course your highness, I'll make sure to refer that to my father, hopefully receiving all that he has to offer. My dad might be old and stubborn but in him without a doubt lies a man of wisdom and talent. Keep training the summoned who come to our families, and do welcome any that shows insight towards army management and warfare gentlemen. Yes, the Rose family heads and Kai confirmed the request. Make sure to send this information to the anti-church faction, and Zylf the head of the Grey Rose family who may be eccentric but can also be a great ally with a good brain on his shoulders. I'll see to it Prince. Charles mentioned as he has some backstory with the man. Appreciated. I'm sure that man will be useful since he is the leader of those dark priests, the cultist criminal group along with the many connections towards the gangs, the slums, the black market, the bandit groups, and even the pirates from the west in the sea. Is that why is your highness? Won't they betray us? Kai asks unsure as he doesn't quite like Xylf. We could use all of them in the eventuality of our plan failing, thus usurping the throne from my brother as the plan B, and possibly even killing him without leaving a trace of it being done by me. That does sound wise, this Prince Marty really knows how to do dark schemes, Kai looked at the prince happily while rubbing the hands into one another. Now then let us prepare thoroughly for the speech and the wars that are to come. The prince started writing some words in a paper as the rest of them discussed ideas. A few hours earlier on day one of the decaying season, at a table with the advisor Mark, the Blue Rose Head Ryu, the Crown Prince, a representant of the White Rose family, Aurora, the Sage Romeo, the hero Sophie and two other advisors were discussing the future. Now that you've ascended as a noble and the official general of any force I may possess Aurora, it is time for you to start training the soldiers so that we can start showing the different factions of our prowess, especially in expanding the territory since I got to get 80% of the total army of this kingdom, he said with a satisfied smile and proud expression. As Aurora was about to reply one of the doors of the reunion room was open, and a messenger with a guard went through. Your Highness I bring terrible news, your father Lark. The king has died a few hours ago through natural causes. The smile he had vanished and a serious expression filled his face while placing the elbows on the table while gripping his hands on top of the head, almost pulling some hairs. As much as it costs me to say this, that is not the worst of it is it? The crown prince Julius said with a trembling voice. Your father has left a will and the process of crowning has been decided. May I elaborate it? He started shaking harder while becoming rather anxious from the question and said coldly, Proceed. The king wrote that the army will be shaped into 100,000 soldiers and 20,000 will be given to each successor, leaving 40,000 for the kingdom defense. The goal will be that in two years the successor of the three that expands the Lumen kingdom the most that have been on a stalemate for a very long time towards the south. Every candidate will in two weeks face the population with a speech where anything can be said and the last rule is that any sibling that attacks the other is deemed the criminal and sentenced to death. On that regard the King Lark cremation will be executed in a week. Candidates may choose whoever for the speech as depending on the circumstance there may be one of you who might be busy and the army can increase or decrease numbers it is not a fixed amount as some soldiers are bound to die in the wars to come so hiring new forces that are not part of the 40,000 is viable. I'll interrupting the crown Prince Aurora said, Prince Julius if you'd allow me. Your most recent addition to performing the speech, as I'll be leading the army in the future clarifying my existence in the Lumen Kingdom would bring me the greatest honor, and of course I believe I'm the most suited for this task at hands, as we've lost 60% of the total army earlier agreed, it now seems we should focus on recruiting instead, and I believe the crown prince face would reflect in a greater aspect towards that. 
through the many connections that your highness may possess. The crown prince looked at Mark who said, I agree with the general. We have a lot of important matters to go through now that it has come to this since, we did not expect it to happen, and it has backfired everything we achieved, and then he looked at Ryu and the representative of the White Rose family. Sixty days have passed since I've met this child that is now the army general, and her prowess during the different trials that we made her do reflect the capabilities over and over again to the point of beating one thousand men with half, and since she'll indeed be the one the soldiers will receive orders from, I must agree that showing everyone her face will possibly end up as a good result, despite being the first time an ex-peasant doing something of the sort, in a way it could give some sort of impact. Your Highness, I believe Lord Alfred the head of the White House would be happy to comply with such a request, Robert bowed lightly as he spoke taking the side of the girl as repayment for Iris's actions. The Crown Prince then turned to the man who was waiting for an answer from him. You've heard them, messenger, appoint it so that it'll be my general to do the speech. The Crown Prince then faced the young girl. I do expect it to be a good one. Aurora smiled at such words while thinking, oh it surely will. Romeo the sage then spoke, your highness, I'd like to know what kind of paper will the summoned ones partake in this king trial to come. They will be given the chance to tag along if they so decide, it would allow them to grow tremendously by killing hundreds or thousands of enemies, which would convert into experience granting them levels. There is also the risk that many of them will die so those who survive will surely reach higher heights, Mark added with a calm and honest tone. I honestly wouldn't want to see any summon die but the same goes towards any human, like me and Romeo. We too are humanists and see every life equally, however. I also know that wars must be won and between us and the monsters. Will surely lend your highness a hand for taking care of us so far. Sophie declared with a serious expression. I appreciate it. However, you're both in the little general hands. Their eyes meet Aurora who smiles kindly at them. We'll do our best to support you Aurora for what's to come. I'll make sure not to push you too too hard, so rest assured, she smiles kindly yet again as her words end. It is fine you can surely make us do more than others, we do have unique classes and skills. We're here for that, Romeo declared with a shout as he didn't want to let her kind words hurt his pride as a man, and as the great sage of a different world. Indeed, as the hero will do the work of one hundred humans as well. Sophie shouted excitedly to put more weight on Romeo's words. I'm sure you will. I'll deliberately place the two of you in the easiest places of the battlefield so that neither of you becomes powerful at all. Have to wait for Iris to awaken? I felt like she was going through a good path, but lately I haven't felt her soul getting stronger by any means. I wonder what sister doing. I've tried to use telepathy a few times but it seems it doesn't reach that far sadly. With the speech out of the way, what will happen to the many factions as they had armies of their own messenger? Every faction army has already been stripped of their ranks, and the whole 100,000 men are currently controlled and kept by the Pink Rose family the only noble family whose side is always the current king, even though by the estimations of the late king advisers the army is a lot bigger than 100,000 as a lot of forces have been investing in its increment. Is that so? The crown prince asks slightly curious. The church alone had 10,000 in the beginning, but ever since the saintess had a vision they got to 30,000, most of them being fanatics and the number was increasing greatly due to their influence. The crown prince takes a glimpse at my way as he hears the first words of the messenger. Seems like I was right to have the saintess join the army, too bad the king had to die and ruin my planning though. Everything has become a lot harder, but nonetheless, the goal stays the same, to show my prowess and get the most territory I can. Twenty thousand is still plenty to scout and build a core. Aurora then smiles innocently at Julius. This little girl's brain truly is something amazing to have predicted this far without ever coming to the capital once. I figured the church wouldn't pose a problem as we're allies, though with those numbers they could have seized the throne and they make this a religious kingdom instead, but is it right to rely on such a young girl? Aurora is bound to make mistakes as everyone does. Well I do have Mark and Ryu to watch over her, 
so I'm sure that she has all the right tools for her brain to expand and progress towards a good future in the art of war, plus she did beat me and I've never lost badly like that in all my life, it seems I'm wavering with the loss of my father, I can't allow myself to back down here and must show the path towards those below me especially this little girl who choose to abandon their family to be here and support me. Julius breathes deeply and then smiles at the girl with eyes of expectation and a new resolve to do what he feels is rightful and necessary, then turns the gaze back to the messenger and asks, Has one of the messengers gone to talk with my sister yet? Not yet your highness, I'll be meeting your brother once I'm dismissed here and then I'll be talking to your sister. In that case, head for my brother and leave my sister up to me and my mother as you wish your highness. The messenger left to deliver a message to Prince Marty. The crown prince got up from his chair and said, In that note, I'll be heading towards my mother and sister, Mark check with the advisors of the late king are part of the army, and have Aurora train it right away. As for the two of you keep studying about our world and train with the soldiers, once you have strong bases we'll start sending you both in missions or even questing in the adventurers guild, so that you may improve yourselves by facing different enemies as you're both still level 1, I believe, Romeo and Sophie said in unison. Yes your highness, then the girl continues. We've acquired some skills from the get go but we're still at that level. Then once Ryu decides you two are good to go, you both shall be dispatched towards one of the towns and start helping out the Lumen Kingdom. Perhaps in the southern border as you'll get an idea on how the goblins fight which will be one of our main concerns. I'll make sure they're ready for it, as well getting them a good equipment. Your Highness, Ryu bowed lightly towards Julius. Those two near Iris could prove to be bothersome, but I can't really influence the crown prince decision here, I can only hope they don't cross paths early on, Aurora felt a little nervous. I'll be taking my leave now, we'll meet later everyone, the crown prince left through the same door the messenger went through. Mark gets up and looks at the blonde girl, let us go Aurora, hopefully, the patch of soldiers we get, are the ones that already know you, it would make things easier. Yes, I hope so too, take care everyone it was nice chatting with you all, Aurora says while smiling happily at them, take care Lady Aurora, I hope we'll meet again soon, Sophie said happily as she in a short time has grown to like her a good chunk, have a good day Aurora if you need anything let us know, Romeo said while smiling and waving softly, see you later. Ryu said seriously as that's the typical tone he uses to talk to those with talent and a cold tone for those that are useless. On the following day two of the decaying season, a little blonde girl stands before an army of 20,000 soldiers as she does a speech, as some of you already know me. My name is Aurora, the Crown Prince Julius General. Without wasting time, I hereby declare that I will reformulate the current military system amongst yourselves. Upon this statement, the men grew curious about what changes could she be creating. You all know that the military ranks used to be soldiers, knights, generals, and royalty. This makes a clear distinguishment of ranks almost based on the social status of every single one of you. In other words, from this day onwards everyone will go back to the initial rank, the one named soldiers. Those who are exceptional and work the hardest will be rewarded with better positions that will allow you to grow even if you're a peasant. The different men in the majority started irradiating with happy expressions. I am the living proof that even a peasant can acquire a rank that used to be only for the noblest and most prestigious members of our kingdom. A rank through history dedicated to the eight rose family heads like this great man at my side Ryu the head of the blue rose family. With a louder tone than before Aurora adds, from this day onwards upon the power bestowed by the great Prince Julius, I hereby declare the extension of the new ranks from a soldier, to an officer who'll command 20 men below him, to a captain who'll command 100 men below him along with 5 officers, and a major who will command up to a thousand men along with 10 captains being the highest possible rank as of now. Gentlemen the rank of majors will be commanded directly by me the general. This further indicates that your social status is unaffected, you keep your gained privileges outside the army, a noble remains a noble. 
As soon as I finish the men start shouting favorably as even nobles were given the right to rank higher, even if they had to start from soldiers once more. This kid really doesn't hold back, to even use my name and rank as a stepping stone to raise the morale this much towards a new group of men. Ryo clicks his tongue as he's forced to approve of her making Mark who's at the side faintly smile upon noticing it. We will hereby from this day onwards commit to expanding the southern lands, as it has been decreed by the late King Lark who'll forever live in our hearts. We shall do as it was asked to bring us, humans, to the very top, and conquer every other race sparing those who wish to submit to us, eventually dominating the entire world. The men shouted in favor while unsheathing and then rising their weapons in the air. The ranks come with more responsibility of more lives, however, the salaries that you learn will also increase. The lands you'll be awarded will be greater, as a peasant you'll be able to own your own territory. Another important thing, do not forget this gentleman. The more lands we conquered the more territory you'll have for yourselves, for your families, for your future children who will be able to explore a bigger part of the world, with everything belonging to us, we'll gain the ability to walk freely without fear of being harmed, by the creatures who live around us, the men sheath the weapons then start clapping, a few whistling, and others raising their voices with shouts filled with happiness, they start believing in the good changes that are to come for them, making the soldiers thirsty to kill, I can't wait to see this little girl in action, Mark's hands tremble from the excitement of the voices that echo around him. Aurora raises her arms and one of them waves downward so that the girl's voice can be heard, very much like a maestro conducting an orchestra, and as soon as the men shouting ceases, we will head towards the southern lands in thirteen days after the speech I'll give, and build what I'd like to call an outpost that shall be the first real line of defense, and I will train every single one of you in the arts of war alongside other activities that you gentlemen will not be expecting. She raises both arms towards them to get their attention, but hear me out. I assure you that it'll make you all stronger and tougher than you are now. Once we're done with the training we will vanquish our opponents and conquer their territories, taking them to ourselves and bringing glory to the future King Julius. The soldiers started screaming King Julius while unsheathing their weapons, raising then lowering them in a repetitive cycle, with a speech like this, I can't help but wonder what kind of words she'll be saying in thirteen days to the whole kingdom. Ryu clenches his thumb inside the fist as he's loving it internally while smiling. Oh, 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 seems like Ryu's been taken in by the fervor too. Mark gazes happily at the man containing a burst of happy laughter. Aurora then turns the back to her army and passed through Ryu and Mark whispering, Prepare me some empty books. We'll be moving the army tomorrow, and do as it'll be noted in them. I lied about the thirteen days so that the information the spies from other factions receive are tricked, move them during the night. She then keeps walking leaving them behind as both of them look at her back with surprised expressions. Church perspective, in a room with the eight archbishops and the saintess, the pope yells madly. Why did we have to lose our army for the likes of the pink rose-haired Isabella? Why did the king have to die? Why? 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 How are we supposed to defend the kingdom without an army against the invasion of the goblin king? Now we'll have to wait for the new king to be crowned and only then, we'll know if we get to keep our old army or not. Ugh this is infuriating. The saintess spoke, not everything's lost. We just have to make sure Julius wins from all of them, he's our ally after all. The archbishops agreed to her statement. Yes you're right, however, we were doing so well almost at 40,000. And now I'm sure they're just going to be used by someone else and eventually get them in guild. I wonder if that girl will be the one commanding some of them. Saintess voiced her thoughts out loud by mistake. Girl? What girl? The Pope asked confused looking at the saintess expression who bore an amused smile. One of the archbishops spoke. You haven't heard Klaus? The crown prince Julius appointed a peasant which was raised to a noble and gave her the military rank of general which was only used by the Rose families in the past. All this because the girl beat him in a chess game, it's one of the most spread rumors going on through the capital. What the fuck? How does a peasant raise in ranks like that for just beating him in a chess game? Apparently the crown prince has never lost in a three-set chess game before, 
a different archbishop added being a fan of the prince. Still that makes no sense, just who is this girl? Her name's Aurora, daughter of Luke the Healer, a friend of the crown prince which is the reason for their meeting, and her mother Rosalind who used to be an adventurer but not a famous one. That's the information we gathered recently with the help of the saintess along with some spies. An archbishop declared resolute of the accuracy of it. Can we use her somehow? The Pope voiced his thoughts making the saintess's eyes open wider for a second while losing the brilliance of her smile. If I were to guess I'd say there's a possibility someone from the other factions might try to, and I wouldn't doubt if she got assassinated in the process. In case the anti-peasant into nobility faction moved, since they don't like the crown prince, it would be a good way to make a move especially since I heard that she was born without an element and almost died during the first years since Aurora was born. Though she's a little kid, so they might not give a care. The archbishop who spoke then gazed from the saintess to the pope. That'd be the first in history. I guess the brain got blessed instead. Possibly to the point of making everything else fragile? That would be more like a curse by the goddess Arya. I must meet this girl and check her with my class skills. If the results are unfavorable, we'll purge her ourselves as our elite force was left untouched since they weren't members of the army, the Pope said in a very cold tone, making one of the archbishops smile. Do what you must, just don't make the crown prince hate us lowering our chances of receiving the army back, the saintess replied coldly as she took a liking to Aurora, making the Pope notice her change in attitude. Worry not I am just following the will of the goddess Aria and keeping the disgraceful sinners away. So where do I go to find this general? To that, an archbishop replies, in thirteen days she was requested by the crown prince to do a speech in his place at the south wall towards the masses, alongside the second prince Marty and the princess Liliana. That's where I'll be then, I must confirm such rarity. I'll take a few of you and some elites just in case. We can easily stay there while I find an opportunity to go towards her and bless them after the speech, or even before if I get the chance. Understood, the archbishops agreed in unison. I'll take care of the church meanwhile, the saintess said indifferently. Please do, the Pope replies promptly as he found something interesting to focus on. Zylf's perspective, a certain day in the past. An eccentric man with red and white hair walks among the slums, owner of many interesting places like the auction house, the black market, and the impoverished communities. With deep connections to the anti-church faction where he has a deal since, in the shadows, the man does quite the lustful and abnormal acts of all kinds. He is known for being strange and wanting to fuck men and women alike as most people pick one of the two. But the true madness is that he does it with those who are underaged too. From torture to even training them to be sex tools. All of this turned possible when he became the head of the Grey Rose House. On a different day shortly after that event, Zylf met a certain priest with whom he later got to know and build a sort of relationship. The man belonged to a cult of dark priests that Zylf soon got to realize was an anti-church faction, which he gladly joined as there was a certain woman that he wished to obtain for himself. The Saintess. Under a certain house in the slums there laid an underground base, where he walked to while keeping the surroundings checked. Once the man got in and reached the deepness of it, Zylf was faced with the naked chained bodies of both humans, beasts, and even monsters gauged. He would play with them from time to time in many ways. He would even attempt breeding towards different female species to no avail, as they would be killed during intercourse or simply for fun by one of the many who roamed that place. Today he had been summoned with the max urgency, as something unexpected was happening in the deepest and the most secured part of the sanctuary of the dark priests. Once he entered the room after passing through some of the guards, the smile he had on his face disappeared completely. Taking some careful steps closer to the statues, he stares at the middle one belonging to the goddess of Ordaluna. What's the meaning of this? While looking awkwardly at it, one of the dark priests who remain kneeled to the statue replies promptly, All the statues of this goddess have been bleeding from their eyes for a few days now, and we have some information that the ones spread through many monsters and beasts' territories, are also doing the same. Is there a meaning to this creepy thing? Zylf takes a gaze at the source of the voice. Yes, 
the Almighty One from the prophecy is now among us, it is said that one who has achieved great amounts of disgrace is capable of obtaining the dark powers. Prophecy Almighty One, dark powers? What kind? Skills based on the darkness element like most demons? He places a finger in the lower lip while finding great interest in the dark priest's words. It is said that the church deems it unworthy of people to get too many titles since some of them can give disgraceful classes which may influence negatively the person. However, there has been someone in this world who not only achieved such a class but a version of it that made the goddess of Lunu insanely angry. The dark priest takes a cold glance at Zalf and continues, to the point of spreading a bad omen through all her statues in the entire world, as such, we must find this being. It'll certainly lead us to the purpose of our lives, as everyone here has a disgraceful class of some sort including yourself Lord Zylf. The man upon hearing those words starts laughing. Yes, that is so, basically, there's someone who's worth commanding this evil group. If that's actually true then I'm looking forward to meeting such a person. We have a unique item that guides us to the one, and the prophecy, in other words, it can locate a specific soul of our desire. That being soul isn't big enough to make our search easy and sometimes it disappears completely, so we must wait patiently for the day. The day where this world will fall into chaos with the being awakening. The dark priest starts laughing insanely, and then adds, but we must be wary of the witch of the south who may try to stop us from obtaining such power. The many dark priests around start voicing out the words witch of the south in a low ominous tone spreading it through the entire room in a creepy cursing way, almost like chanting the most wicked of rituals. The Witch of the South? What can we do to get to that being before anyone else does? Do we know its race? Is it a human even? We believe that woman position marks the path, by coincidence or not. She is a witch and a powerful one enough to be banished by the church. The twin secret sister of Serenity the Saintess. We do not say her name as it is said that doing so can curse the person who has mentioned it, but she is called. The man throws a paper that Zalf picks and reads silently. The Witch of the South Sephira? To think she'd have a twin sister. It seems like these guys don't share every secret they possess with me. How very selfish despite all the help I give them. Perhaps I could grab this one while I don't find a chance to grab the Saintess. He smiles while getting hornier on such thoughts. If she's at the south we should. Wait in there? That's where the saintess had a premonition about the goblin king army invading our kingdom. Could it possibly be related to that? As Zylf mentioned he starts to notice the surroundings, seeing every dark priest looking at him in a creepy way. Gentlemen it seems like the person may be a goblin or perhaps some human that lives in the southern lands, maybe even a peasant. That would be my best guess at least. The dark priests start whispering to each other in a creepy way, then they hide their faces in dark hoods and start walking out. The one who spoke with Zylf earlier voices out close to him. We will search every corner of the south and come in contact with you when we find our fated leader. No matter how long it takes, I don't mind selling even my soul to such a being as long as I can have the Saintess and Ryu. Zylf due to the thoughts of the two beings he sought to obtain, became loyal to his ardent heart, pulling a different man inside the room, facing him towards the goddess statue. A while passed and the nobleman could be seen with a happy smile, satisfied with the way everything was going. He walked to the exit of the underground base setting everything on fire leaving no trace of anything. Day 15 of the decaying season during the morning, in the south center border of the Lumen Kingdom, a wooden outpost has been created through the work of 20,000 men in the south border around 100 kilometers far from Estia village, and in the middle of it, a really tall tower where a few archers who have a skill that allows them to see far away reside changing turns with one another as specified in the general notes. Inside it contains a bell with a large rope that can be used to pull, making it ring alerting everyone of an enemy attack. Geographically speaking one could feel the certainty that the location chosen by Aurora hadn't been random. If a vertical line was drawn on a map from top to bottom, the place they resided would be exactly below the capital. The wood outpost has a wooden wall of 500 meters away from the forest so that they have time to see the enemies even in the dark. 
and behind towards the kingdom it is filled with long fields that are close to a river that curves nearby, allowing them to not run out of resources easily, even though these are still currently growing. The field is planted with crops that will survive through the decaying and the moon seasons, and the resources they brought from the capital will last for a long time thanks to the big quantities of salt bought. The men were instructed to fish, farm, and hunt as those things would give them titles. Another thing was that they had to build everything on their own, so they could cut the wood from the forest in front of them to reduce the camouflage attempts of the monsters, so they spent twelve days doing this making a pretty big outpost with a one hundred long wall that heightened about two meter tall and they did it in turns, as the general notes advised, giving titles to everyone who contributed. By the end of the twelfth day, they realized that doing these activities was truly making their bodies stronger so they did them more effervescently and with more motivation as they seeketh to become powerful so that they could have a better time when the fighting starts. The cooking was made initially by the female soldiers, who then taught the male ones contributing further for their status's improvement, some even made desserts who also received titles from it, mostly dry fruit cakes as sugar is extremely expensive. They learned slowly how to read as Aurora remembered it had helped Iris increase her wisdom eventually adding most of the title's knowledge into the notes she made, making everyone do a lot of useful things that some had never done before, and others didn't complete. They don't have a status skill that shows the rank of their titles thus extra effort was necessary. From practically day one, they would end up fighting monsters and beasts who'd come close by and also when they'd go to cut the woods from the forest extending the range between the natural fortress and the humans camp while also creating everything they needed with it. Some of them were blacksmiths, carpenters, artisans, and other ranked zero classes, who weren't defensive or offensive classes, as such development was made slightly faster. Of course, that the peasants from the villages around would get hired to work if they'd like as well as merchants would drop by and attempt to buy and sell the loot either they or the soldiers had. The days passed by fast while the army awaited their general to come, but every soldier knew a speech had been appointed. That was the first step to be done back in the Lumen capital before she'd have a chance to continue her work, and that day had been today. It would take a bit longer before Aurora would be able to arrive. On the afternoon of the day, Fifteen of the decaying season at the south wall of the capital three individuals could be seen, where two were widely known through the entire kingdom the Prince Marty and the Princess Liliana. It is tradition for the speech order to start by the amount of influence, however, since Aurora was practically unknown to the peasants and known only to the army, nobles, and the royal family, she was placed as the last one, the one to begin ended up being the Prince Marty with the help of a few wind mages. The voice was able to flow without issue and the intensity would increase almost like talking in a megaphone, so everyone, in other words, five out of ten million humans filled the outsides of the southern walls, the gate, and the inside of the capital. All of them be it peasants or nobles waited patiently to hear what they had to say. As the news of the king's death flew extremely fast and the later news of the cremation did too. As most of you know I am Prince Marty and am here today to greet you all. I've come here to tell you that I wish to keep the ways of the past king and bring happiness to all of you the same way he tried to through his ruling. I'll begin by taking the 20,000 soldiers towards the south in a few days, and expand our territory against the evil monsters that await us, eventually conquering even the other territories as you all know, ah. He grasps for some air feeling pressured. As we all know the successor was supposed to be my elder brother the Crown Prince Julius. But since my father wanted to give all the descendants a fair chance, the throne will go to the one who earns more lands, so that's what I'll be doing from now on. Any of you that wish to be part of my army is very welcome to join. I'll be heading southwards in three days. Once he finished some hundreds applauded and shouted but it wasn't a significant sound. Princess Liliana in a long white dress with a layer of blue took her brother's place and started speaking. Her beautiful light-toned porcelain-like skin and young age made the people in front of her do some noise as she is very beautiful while being the youngest of the siblings about twenty years old. With a mixed tone of mature and softness, her gorgeous voice filled everyone's ears. Hello everyone. 
I'm Princess Liliana III in line to the throne, till the most recent event where my father died, and now having to dispute this between my siblings upon the late king dying will, I'll be making my representative the head of the Golden Rose Angelica lead the army in my place in a few days, and put a swift end to this dispute as early as possible becoming the next ruler of this kingdom, by bringing prosperity to it by vanquishing the enemies of humanity. A couple of thousand men applauded and shouted making a significant noise from down the wall as they enjoyed what they saw. The last one took the place of climbing to the very edge of the wall. Unlike the others, one step away from falling worrying the people in front and around her, of a possible fall ending up creating surprise and anxiety in their hearts. The unease you just felt from watching me almost falling, is the emotion that our enemies are currently having. As I've been fighting against the monsters that the two who came before me mentioned for 13 days now, I've set up a base, recruited soldiers from all around the kingdom, gave jobs to peasants like myself and nobles too. As many of you don't know, I am Aurora the General of the Crown Prince Julius, whom he promoted as a noble to lead his army, and the same way he did. I propose to all of you peasants and nobles alike a work offer. After all, I see no difference between either of you since you're all humans in my eyes. She shouts loudly making the intensity of her voice reverberate in everyone's ears. I have made it that those who join my army will be paid with a good amount of money and lands, the ones you all help conquering. Not to forget that their ranks will progress depending on their achievements. In other words, the money and lands you receive will increase as they accumulate through your accomplishments. You will be able to obtain the same ranks as the heads of the Rose families and be rewarded equally. In the name of the Crown Prince Julius I Aurora, she lifts her right hand in the air slowly and then says, I shall finish what I've started, and crush every single enemy that doesn't submit to us, humans. Aurora closes her small hand so that everyone can see almost as if she was smashing whatever the inside had. The moment she did the euphoric sounds of peasants who have always dreamed of becoming nobles or simply being able to raise in a system where the social classes have always been locked, started vibrating the air with their voices and shouts while clapping and hitting the floor with their steps happily. Everything started shaking giving goosebumps to the crown prince Julius, who was watching from afar and almost making the blonde girl fall off. Aurora bows deeply towards the people in front and below of her and then leaves walking past the second prince and princess, who remain dumbfounded by the speech they heard. Both take the chance to memorize Aurora's face as she went through but mainly focus on the blonde color of her hair, which shone beautifully with the sunlight, irradiating them as an aurora boreal does towards the night cold sky. As she came down from the wall, some people awaited her in white robes who blocked the passage. Since most of them were taller, especially the one in the middle, the girl's head raised while her eyes meet the person in front. Hello, who might you gentlemen be? Aurora questions with a small smile while keeping a confused expression. Greetings young lady Aurora, I am the Pope Klaus of the church a friend of the Saintess. I have come to ascertain some doubts as I was told that you were born without an element. Does he have some sort of skill that enables him to check my status? What should I do? As she prepares herself to break through the ones in front, the crown prince alongside Ryu and a few guards who walked with him surround the priests in front of them making them stuck in the middle of Aurora and the prince. What is your remnants doing here? Julius asked curiously with a neutral tone feeling his path to Aurora blocked which displeased him greatly as he wanted to congratulate her right away. I've heard the general of your army. This little kid in front of me was born with an illness of sorts, which made the body unable to produce an element. Something like that made me curious while pitting her. As such I'll use two skills on the girl that will show me the child's true nature. I believe the crown prince wouldn't mind correct? If the prince agrees to it I might be found out please say no Julius. Sure, go for it. She's just a normal kid who had rough health since birth. He declared firmly while believing his friend Luke's words making Aurora bow looking at the floor, making it impossible for the Pope to see her eyes or expression which was showing some despair. I'm officially screwed, I'm sorry Iris, the Pope extended his hand at Aurora and channeled mana while voicing the name of the skill. Demon Detection. 
Upon not receiving any information as she's not a demon he attempted a different one. Very well you're a human, now disgrace detection. His eyes widened then closed allowing a few people to look at the Pope's surprised expression. You have no disgrace whatsoever it seems like you've been behaving properly. I'm truly happy Lady Aurora. Now even though I did say, I'd only use two skills I must confirm one last thing. And in exchange, I won't bother you further. Human lie detection, are you against me? The Saintess, the Goddess Aria, or even the Church? I'm not your eminence, simply a sick girl with some talent towards war. What's up with all these weird detections? Just what kind of class does this man have? It seems it truly is something that was born with you. I'm afraid I cannot help you. My apologies child as my saintess took a liking to you and asked me if I could help you out. Aurora bows to him deeper and voices out. Not at all your eminence, just your presence has already made this one overjoyed. Even if the almighty goddess Aria did not provide me with an element, she did bless me with a good brain and memory for which I am truly eternally grateful for. I'm truly exhilarated, though what class did you acquire Lady Aurora? Strategist is the class I received, I believe it helps me think on plans to help His Highness Prince Julius in the wars to come. After talking for a long time with many people I met, I ended up using the same class as Mark as an escape. If I told this man my true class he'd certainly do everything he could to discover all about it and possibly even force me to use it. Human lie detection. Upon hearing those words Aurora's expression didn't waver and she said, I'm not lying Pope Klaus, she smiled innocently at him. Since none of my skills told me anything that would trouble you, I'll be taking my leave and I shall pray for your success in the wars to come. Young General, he smiled genuinely kindly due to gaining an incredible amount of respect for Aurora, especially for having no disgrace whatsoever which is very unique in a human being as titles end up giving a bit of it at some point. The guards retracted and the men in the white robes left, I'll be praying for your success as our greatest ally Prince Julius. Thank you very much Eminence, send my best regards to the Saintess. But of course, if you'll excuse me. Julius nodded slightly while smiling faintly. The Pope left alongside the rest of the priests leaving Aurora, Ryu and Re Julius who headed together to a more quiet place alongside some guards who escorted them. Inside the usual room where the Crown Prince Julius does the reunions, he sat with Ryu and Aurora while chatting with both. That speech truly surprised me. A tad different than the traditional and simple approach I helped writing, however, thanks to it I feel like our army will eventually grow from those who heard it. Posing with a serious expression the Crown Prince adds. Though the next time do warn me beforehand, if you wish to change anything Aurora. All right your highness. I'll keep that in mind. Good. I'm sure rumors about you and me will surely reach all the parts of the Lumen Kingdom. Certainly useful peasants and nobles will want to join us. Honestly. Your highness, I think the most surprised ones were your siblings as they heard the sound and voices echo all the way to the top of the wall due to this little general of ours. Indeed Ryu. They had some interesting faces to them. And apparently my sister is going to participate, even if indirectly which was unexpected as she's never shown the will to. I believe people change when they have some power in their hands, the girl mentioned knowing it beforehand. Wise words Aurora, also I've handled the resources and secured a path for them that won't be influenced by my siblings, as you've requested little general. The prince mentions with a happy smile. Thank you. Your Highness. Soon I believe our camp will flood with peasants and nobles alike, so we must be ready to handle the masses. With a serious expression gazing at both men she continues. We may get too many mouths to feed therefore the next step shall be to contact the merchants for a lot of them to do commerce there, and we need some people to organize the new applicants and the already soldiers who are part of the army. I'll recruit some personnel for the logistic department. I know some nobles who would be great at it. I appreciate it, Lord Ryu. This will help reduce the spies, and we could even use one of those books the Adventurers Guild have to get their information. End of Block 2